For all those yearnings for truly outstanding entertainment, I have an idea of what might cheer you up. You'll find a trove of Academy Award winning and nominated films on ABC iView. Let's play. Like Imitation Game. It's beautiful. American Sniper, Her, and Spotlight. There's a story here, and I think it's an important story. Brooklyn, Carol, and so many more. Bon appétit. Always free, always outstanding on ABC iView. ABC Sport. We begin this broadcast by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which this match will be played today and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. We extend that to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples listening. One state. And they will come from everywhere. Four days. This will be special. Nine matches. You just cannot take your ears off this game. And all. 18 clubs for a once a year festival of footy. Snaps across the body and the party continues. This is ABC Sports coverage of the 2024 AFL Gather Round. Live from South Australia. Is gather round. The celebrations as they come from everywhere. He gathers in the right forward pocket. He kicks an amazing goal. Roams the pack beautifully. Snaps on goal. He's the magic man. Because here it comes, here it comes. Walks into the open goal and bangs it up into the top tier. 55 out. He's given this 20. That's the magnificent strike of the football. The 2024 AFL gather round. It's superb on the angle. His keg is gone. And there's a bit to play this yet. AFL, AFL. Two steps back. Flushes it from 50. Puts the Jets on and kicks it on the run. 40 is 11. He launches an absolute rocket. Oh, the home fans like that. From 50. He goes whack. He goes whack. One bounce at 40. One bounce at 20. And he goes. Kicks from beyond 50. It's an absolute The 2024 AFL Gather Round, live from South Australia on radio, ABC Sport Digital, and take us with you on the ABC Listener. It's Footy Festival meets Saturday Night Fever as we hit leg two of this Adelaide Oval doubleheader. An intriguing battle between the unbeaten Geelong, fresh off its Easter Monday dismantling of Hawthorne, and the Western Bulldogs, who obligingly uh, did the demolition job on the Wooden Spoon favourites, West Coast. They've had some good recent battles, and the Bulldogs can solidify their place in the eight if they can crack the code against Chris Scott's undefeated Cats. Welcome back to Adelaide Oval. My name is Brett Smith. Brig as we reach the evening session of Gather Round. Uh, great to have your company on ABC Sport. The first bounce is still about 37 minutes away. The presets are doing their thing in the middle of Adelaide Oval as uh, the crowd have stuck around off the back of that previous uh, game against uh, Carlton's win over Fremantle. We're all just sort of getting a feel for the atmosphere here as uh, day becomes night. And Lauren Borden will call the action alongside me. Hey, Loz. Hello, Spriggy. Lovely to be here. How nice is it looking out as the sun sets across Adelaide Oval presets on here. It's just a lovely atmosphere. It's been a glorious day so far. The evening uh, should have uh, plenty more of that in store for us, as well as some exciting footy as well. We'll head inside both camps very shortly. Quickly, team news. No late changes for either side. For the Bulldogs, Ed Richards returns from concussion. Caleb Poulter, last week's sub, uh, is in fact omitted altogether, and Jack McRae will be their sub this week. Uh, while for the Cats, Ray Stanley comes in for his first game of the season, replacing Toby Conway, while one Irishman goes out, O'Sheen Mullen, and another one comes in, Zach Tui. And speaking of Irishman, Mark O'Connor is their sub. Uh, Jack Bowes was last week's sub. He takes his place in the 22. Our experts, Adelaide Premiership player Rod Jamison. G'day, Jamo. Spriggy, good to see you, Lauren. Yes, uh, what a day once again. Just football. West Coast got so close against Sydney. That was a surprise. And then... The finish in which it was here, Fremantle and Carlton, and probably Frio a little stiff in the end. 
presets are singing about my people. It's all about people here. There's plenty of them around town in their footy colours. And as I say, the, uh, the headline event is the Saturday night fixture here with the Western Bulldogs and Geelong coming up very, very shortly. And alongside you in the experts chair is Port Adelaide Premiership player and former giant Dean Brogan. Nice hey, to see you, Brogan. Hey, Spriggy. Hey, Lauren. Um, oh, what a pleasure to be here. And the presets. I mean, this is a... Your fan. Your I, fan. I, I love the presets. Yeah. I, I can't... I, I actually said to you, Spriggy, is that the real presets? That is the um, real presets. Look, really looking forward to this game tonight. Um, uh, two cracking teams. I mean, Geelong are flying under the radar again, aren't they? They're three and zip, and Bulldogs are, are two and one, playing some pretty good footy. So can't wait for for this game tonight. You can text us throughout zero four three seven at seven seven four seven seven four. As always, let's waste no further time. Liz Walsh is boundary side for us tonight. She's in the Bulldogs camp with one of the all time greats, who's also an ABC alumnus and one of your contemporaries, Jamo. Their director of football, Chris Grant, is there alongside you, Liz. Thank you, Brett. That's right. Hello, Chris. Welcome to Adelaide. First things first. How uh, is the team soaking in the atmosphere and the excitement that is Gather Round? No, well, thanks for having me on. Uh, this has been terrific. Uh, we, we came into Adelaide yesterday, um, and as we experienced last year, um, arriving into the city, um, you know, colours of all uh, clubs represented as you're walking through the streets and driving through the streets. So, uh, no, it's been tremendous. Um, and, you know, Adelaide's obviously put on uh, some brilliant weather uh, for, for the uh, weekend as well. So, no, it's, uh, it's been great. And obviously now um, our focus is on uh, the boys, um, you know, playing well on the field. Um, so we'll... Um, wait in anticipation. We've got fireworks currently on the ground. We'll be hoping for fireworks from your team tonight, I'm sure. But you come in off the back of the big win against the Eagles last week. What sort of preparation is that? Yeah, well, it's, um, that was good preparation. I mean, if winning games of football is, is always really important. Um, you know, round one for us, um, you know, the boys are you know, quite disappointed with not being able to finish off that second half. And Melbourne, as it proved, again, um, we're going to be a very uh, tough team to beat this year. So a lot of learnings out of that. Um, and then uh, Gold Coast into uh, uh, West Coast Eagles last week uh, with lots of positives that come out of both of those games. So, um, yeah, I mean, look... Um, you know, at this stage of the year, you're looking to, to see those positive signs of what might stand up over the longer term. Um, and we felt like the last couple of weeks we've seen more of that. Um, Geelong are themselves um, probably trying to find uh, what their season's going to look like too. And, um, you know, interestingly, I think that both teams are, are sprinkled with a, um, a good amount of um, um, experience and, and age um, and, and some really uh, uh, nice young talent coming through as well. So um, we'll see how we go. Great. Let's head up to our experts in Rod Jamison and Dean Brogan. Uh, Chris, uh, welcome again. And, uh, geez, I'm just looking. You spoke about the cohesion. Now, you're 78 games on average. It's, it's building, isn't it, too, with you still got some quality players out. And the notable one is Bailey Smith for the year. But you're starting to get a good group that have played some good football together. No, that's right, Jamo. And I think, um, you know, it's one of those stats that you are reasonably conscious of, um, you know, in the list management sense. Um, you know, not so much, you know, by the time that everyone and the coaches are selecting their team, they're not selecting it on age, they're selecting on uh, what they think they're uh, going to be able to uh, produce on the field um, at any given time. Um, and that's just the way that numbers roll by the time that they're selected. But, you know, we do really like, um, you know, that the youth that's come into the team, you know, obviously Riley Sanders is, is one of those. Um, Harvey Gallagher, who was a draftee from the year before, who had a fair bit of injury, unfortunately, last year, but has got a good run at it. He's come in and played each game. Um, and then we've had other players, you know, like Riley West and uh, Latham Vandermeer, who have been around for a while, uh, but haven't had a lot of uh, long-term uh, consistent experience at, at AFL level. So, uh, and they're uh, themselves playing quite well. So, um, no, it's, the future's bright, um, but uh, ultimately, uh, you know, you, you deal with the, uh, the now, um, and that's what we're excited about. And tonight, um, hopefully, we can see some good stuff. Maybe it's expectation, but Cody Waitman, he's only played the 62 games, but just the quality small forward he is and the six goals in round two but Oscar Baker also in that game kicked three goals so he's only played 35 so for me they're two standout young players still working their way through the comp but they are quality yeah no that's that's a, that's a really good um, uh, insight there for us and you know those types of players have been really handy uh, in the sense of you know Lockie Bramble's another player who's uh, played only a um, you know, 20 odd games of, uh, of football really in the system, um, but uh, been able to acquire a player like that that you hope is going to be able to play consistent AFL football. But um, 
Uh, he's been able to do it straight away for us. He's been able to get his body right, and, and Oscar himself um, is another player like that. So, you know, if, you, if you're starting to get those, you know, um, sort of six players that are selected sort of towards the, the end of your selection process uh, and they're playing consistent football, uh, you know you're in a pretty good space. And that's how we sort of felt this year. Hey, Chris, Stephen Brogan here, mate. I, I just want to talk about Geelong. What, what, have you, what have you seen from Geelong for the first month of the season? Yeah, Dean, I, I look, they're, um, they're, a, they're a quality outfit. Um, you know, they've, they've got a lot of experience. Um, they've got some tremendous players. And, and when I say tremendous players, like all Australian-type players um, across each line. Um, you know, obviously, Stewart down back is an amazing player. Um, you know, Tom Hawkins up forward. He continues to, to play amazing football at 350 games, um, supported by Jeremy Cameron, who's a star. So, um, And then through the midfield, you know, obviously, with uh, Cameron... Um, and uh, Patrick being out of the uh, the team in the midfield, as far as very experienced and you know a, a great quality players, and you know uh, Bruin and, and, and players like that have been able to fill the void. Um, so they'll be like us. I think they'd be uh, really pleased with the, the younger players, um, you know, being able to come and really impact the team um, and really help the team perform well and consistently. So um, yeah, I think um, what I see uh, with Geelong is that their, their back mids and forwards are, are very well balanced um, and. And that'll be a real challenge for us tonight. Chris, it's Brett Sprigg here. You're surrounded by young guys who you've known probably since they were born with a few of those uh, father-sons. What do you see in, in Sam Darcy? Not just as a player, but for some of the stuff he's gone through so early in his career to overcome that and, and show that character. Yeah, yeah, thanks for uh, reminding me of my age uh, to start with. Um, no, it's really exciting. I'm obviously, um, you know, at the other end um, as far as his his age and experience and, and longevity in the game is, is Tom, uh, the father of, uh, sorry, the, the son of uh, Father Tony. Um, you know, seeing players like that come through your system, and I think it's a, a great thing that the AFL do, and I'm really pleased that the competition keep, uh, you know, keep that as, as, as part of what uh, we do as a, as a competition. And now Sam's a, the most recent example of that. Um, I think the thing for Sam is, you know, we know that, um, you know, players are 200 centimetres plus and he's nudging uh, 210, so he's a lot taller than that. They do take uh, time and mainly uh, their body adjusting to the loads um, and just getting their strength um, up and going to, to be able to compete at AFL level. Um, so he's been able to uh, work on that um, off, off field um, as his injuries have occurred over the first couple of years of his, of his career. Um, but this pre-season, he got a really good run at it. He had his, ultimately probably his first um, you know, uh, full pre-season for the best part of four years because you know, the COVID years were before that. Um, and then uh, you know, he came to us with a, uh, with a foot uh, stress fracture that really set him back. Uh, so, so really his first full pre-season at any level um, has only just um, uh, passed him by now. Um, and he's reaping the rewards of that. So, you know, as the years go on, and if he continues to build on that, um, you know, we really uh, feel like we've got a, a fantastic player for the future. We're battling the presets. So, last question. You, you, you've won two in a row. This is the we're a month into the season now. Where do you set the bar for what you can achieve this year? Yeah, well, there's sort of no bar setting at this point, but, um, you know, what we want to be able to see is, you know, particularly against a, a team like Geelong, as we talked about earlier, with their experience, um, you know, they'll be feeling like they're on a similar journey to us this year. Um, so to be able to uh, judge ourselves against them tonight will be really important. Um, you know, I think we've always got to remind ourselves that the first month, the six weeks of the season, you really are trying to sort of settle your team down uh, for them to get uh, into the groove of their season. And then hopefully if... Uh, you know, things like win losses are, are positive for you. Um, you know, the players really build off that too, uh, from the confidence that comes with it. So, you know, there's probably no um, absolute uh, bar setting tonight, uh, but it'll get a good look um, at what we uh, 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 might look at uh, for the rest of the year and, and the things we might need to work on. Chris, we appreciate your time. Best of luck tonight. OK, thanks, guys. Chris Brandt, the Bulldogs Director of Football, joining us on uh, ABC Sport as we hit the nightcap in Gather Round, the uh, second leg of our Adelaide Oval Level header after earlier. Carlton beat Fremantle by 10 points in controversial circumstances where we hear Jamo saw the whole game. Uh, Brogues, you got here as well, saw it at the end. Uh, there's a bit of correspondence coming through on 0437 774 774 about that. Uh, and um, earlier... Uh, the Swans beat West Coast by 26 points. I sort of 
don't want to think this way, Jamo, but we've had two pretty good games so far today. I don't want to think that because we're doing the third one that we we couldn't be so lucky as to maybe have a, a third good game today. Oh, look, I think we're in for a real crack of the night too. Um, the Western Bulldogs, are, they've played some quality and they haven't performed that well, whereas I think Geelong have played real quality. Probably the Hawks game is the one that probably is the anomaly, but... I saw him a couple of weeks ago here against Adelaide. Tom Stewart in his 150th had an absolute cracking game. And just their introduction and the integration of their younger players, not dissimilar to what Chris was just talking about with the Western Bulldogs coming through. Um, look, I, I, I think it'll be a great game. Well, let's just hope there's a bit more scoring than the last game. It was a great finish, but it wasn't the greatest spectacle. I was at home watching it on TV and then listening to the call on the way in. And uh, the call was, the, you know, the... The people calling the game are actually twiddling their thumb, thumbs at, at some points during the game, but it was a close finish, and, and that's what Fremantle do. Um, so, yeah, well done by Carlton to snatch that win. So, 4-0 Carlton, but um, I, I'm with Jammo. I, I think tonight is going to be game of the round. The, these are yeah. two absolute cracking teams. And this, is, if you're looking as as a um, match-ups of the weekend, if you look at this game, this is the game that the, the two teams are very even. I, I think most of the other games have been a little bit lopsided. You know, obviously... Uh, Sydney and West Coast today, even though West Coast are really good. Yep. Obviously, Port and um, Essendon, not four, and Melbourne, Adelaide. I think this is the most evenly matched game of the weekend. So, I, I, there's stars all over the ground. The, be, the best players of both teams are playing really well. They're, they're, they're dominating the first month of the season, and that's what that's what all this 45,000 people here want to see tonight, is the best players playing well, um, and that's what both teams are doing. So, I, I can't wait for this game. You saw your old... Uh Giants mate, Brett Lydia on the way out. Yeah, it was good to see Lindsay. He still looks like he could play, too, doesn't he, Lindsay? He was a very cosmetic, uh, very good-looking player, wasn't he, uh, yeah. Lydia? But uh, he had a, 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 a great great year or two with Lids um, at the Giants. But unfortunately for us, we got him at the back end of his career where he kept pinging his calf every time he got out of a stride. But old great, man. That's great, the old man. That's agree. the old man. But great human and um, great to have him on uh, ABC. We've got Dean Brogan, Rod Jamison with us on ABC tonight uh, alongside myself, Brett Sprigg, and Lauren Borden, who'll call the action alongside me. But Loz, a short time ago, you were in the Geelong camp with their assistant coach, James Kelly. It's nice to be down on the boundary line with Geelong assistant, James Kelly. What's it like in gather round? You're obviously just running onto the field now, Geelong, after straight after another game finishes. Is it a bit unique? It is really unique. I think, um, you know, everyone was a little bit not sure about it last year, how it was going to work out, but South Australia and Adelaide just has delivered another year in a row. So um, I heard people say during the week that it's going to be here for 15 or 20 years and you're not going to hear any arguments from me on that. There you go, lock it in. Geelong's been at the Adelaide Oval twice, I think. Would you like to head out to Mount Barker maybe one year? Uh, I think we're happy here. Nothing against Mount Barker, but... You know, this has turned into a bit of a coliseum down here. You know, the atmosphere and the crowd and, um, hey, you know, Mitch, even just little things like the sound and the lights. And it's just a, a beautiful place for the boys to play footy. You are only here a couple of weeks ago when you beat Adelaide, which was a pretty good contest. Do you feel like it's a bit of a repeat of that, you know, only being here 12 days ago? Yeah, it certainly helps. You know, the, one of the great things about AFL is how unique some of the grounds can be. So to have a look at the grounds um, a little bit sooner than your opposition might be a one percenter, but it, we think it helps. And you add enough of those up, hopefully we uh, we get the result we're after. You've had a few milestones the past few weeks. Tom Stewart, Tom Hawkins. Now it's Mark Blitzarv's 250th. Chris Scott basically said we didn't have much hope when he came into the club. You were there at the time. What did you think when he rolled in? I just thought, I can't believe one person can ask so many questions. <laughs> you know, I was sort of talking to Blitz just five minutes ago, and um, one of the things, he, he came in with just a real appetite to learn and to get better and, um, you know, phenomenal athlete and all that sort of stuff, but just really wanted to be a good player, and he was there with a purpose right from the start. And I remember being, you know, a sort of semi-senior player then and just thinking, gosh, this bloke just, he's asking so many questions. Which, reflecting on now, you wish a lot of players that came in had that attitude. But um, he's been amazing. He's got there really quickly too. No, he's been. He's only missed about 15 games or so throughout his career. What's he like now to coach? Has he stopped with the questions? No, he still asks questions. Yeah, they're a little more, um, a little more pointy than they were. They were very broad when he first started, but. I came and commented to uh, Kingy a little while ago. Blitz come up and asked a sort of a quite a specific stoppage sort of transition question, and um, you know you commented to Kingy how good it is to coach players that understand the game and and still want to ask those questions. And um, you know he's he's a pleasure to coach really, and, and fun to coach because you can use him in so many ways. 
There's all these experienced players out there, but it does seem like you're rejuvenating your list. Just with players like Ollie Henry coming in, Ollie Dempsey, even last week, Conway having a go in the ruck. Is that something that it's really working for Geelong at the moment, having that mix of experience and youth coming through? Yeah, I think so. The, the younger guys always bring a real sense of energy, and, and I always, I'm always i a real believer in um, you have to learn how to win and you've got to play to win and those sorts of things, which I think everyone sort of believes in that. But one of the beautiful things about young kids is they don't know how to lose either and they don't think they will lose. So that energy that comes into the group uh, gives guys like Blitz and Tom Stewart and Zach Tui and Paddy, gives those guys a bit of energy and they don't feel like they have to shoulder the load all the time, which is a, which is a really good, a really good uh, position our list is in at the minute. And just on your opposition tonight, they got over you at Cadinia Park late last year when there were quite a few injuries, but you've had the wood over them for a long time. What is it that suits Geelong when it comes up against Western Bulldogs? Uh, I think around the ball, we've we've always been pretty good. You know, we, we always steal ourselves a bit. Um, traditionally, they've had really good midfielders. Monson Pally's just on the screen right now. He's a fair player around the ball. So, But our midfield really likes to take on that challenge, and we match up pretty well ahead of the ball against them, and it, it always makes for a good contest. Um, the thing I'll say about the Bulldogs is they're never a team where you feel like you've really got them. Every, every week they play a specific game style. They're hard to defend. They can move the ball quick when they want to. So um, we, we love those challenges as a, as a footy club, and, and tonight's the same. Well, thank you for your time, James. Appreciate it. All the best tonight. Thanks, Aaron. Great stuff, Loz. Uh, speaking to James Kelly a little earlier there in the Geelong camp. They're going to run out side by side, these two teams. The, the player races, of course, obviously you've got to accommodate four teams on double header. So you've got... So the team's all sort of spread out, but we've got the, the dogs and the cats in that same pocket uh, of the ground running out uh, almost side by side. Well, it's normally where the Western Bulldogs will come out. That's normally where the away team comes from. Yep. And then where Geelong are coming, that's the Port Adelaide rooms. Okay. And then the one a little bit further to the right-hand goalpost is the Adelaide room. So um, when Carlton left, they went down below us over here, and I think Fremantle down this way. So a couple of rooms around the place. Oh, three are in the Crows rooms too. So there. To step on the cats, so... We had the, the Simon Lloyd departure during the week. Bit of a, a random news that broke. I think it was Wednesday, and he's obviously been a, a key part of their success for the best part of a decade. But mostly in the footy side of things before taking on a new role this year, and he's uh, leaving the club. I know it's probably not, probably a, a few sort of parts removed from the, the goings on inside that team, the 22. But it was a bit of a Geelong uh, bit of news uh, through the week, which I'm sure. Uh, there'll be some news some way around uh, what he does uh, next and where. I want to ask you about the Cats, though, Dean Brogan, and, and Toby Conway. He's not playing tonight. He's being sort of managed out to accommodate Reece Stanley's return. But Chris Scott has said, no, we want to... Well, he's our generational ruckman. He will be our ruckman going forward. And, and sort of how you manage a guy like Toby Conway, um, sharing that role with Reece Stanley and what that looks like in the immediate future, given they haven't really had a ruckman like Toby Conway for a long time. Yeah, and you throw Blitzars. Big calves. Big calves. Big calves. Big calves. Big calves. I'm going to probably yeah. bumble my way through that name all night. But they they generally typically rotate their rucks, don't they? Like, you never really see Geelong, um, you know, even, uh, back in the early 2000s, they had Ottens and King. They were their stable mates, uh, Ruckman. But since Brad Scott's got there, they have rotated. They've had this rotating ruck system, haven't they? Yep. And it's worked for them. So... I think who's ever sort of playing at that level or against opposition, they'll pick that certain ruckman. So he's not afraid to, to flip the rucks around. And um, look, whatever they've done over the last I don't know, 10 years in that space, they've done it really well, haven't they? So they don't invest a lot of time in their rucks, but they've got a couple of beauties sitting there. And, um, you know, uh, talk about Geelong, like... They're the masters of rejuvenating their list, aren't they, every year. Like, they've just flown under the radar again this year. Their A-graders are playing still very well. Their old-timers are playing well. But they just get these players that aren't high draft picks. I don't know where they find them, <laughs> but they find them. And they get into this Geelong system, and they just play good footy and play a role. And they help their, their A-graders get, uh, get to play at the high level that they need to. They, they complement them very well, so... They've done a really good job, and, and I, I think they're going to fly under the radar a bit this year. They, you know, they get tonight, they're 4-0. Like, I wouldn't have picked that at the start of the year. Well, I think the, just the integration that I think James Kelly spoke about too is that, and you touched on Loz, that the younger players that are coming through, we saw them a couple of weeks ago, and like Brandon Parfitt's now played 123. There were so many times where you just felt, go to another club and get a game, but they stay there and they want to learn, and that's what James was saying. They teach them how to learn, and they teach them the way that Geelong does. And to the point, they've got another bloke who got picked up at number 32 last year. He's 206-centimetre Ruckman. 
And his name's Mitchell Edwards, and he's struggling with the back at the moment, but he's just in the background too, yet to make his debut for Geelong. How did it feel down there in the Geelong camp, Loz? Uh, Chris Scott's had a few things to say about Gather Round during the week and the uh, supposed uh, privileges that the local clubs get. He wants a third showdown. How did it feel the Geelong camp? Yeah, I don't think there's many people saying that there should be Gather Round in Melbourne or that the showdown <laughs> should happen uh, during Gather Round. Completely relaxed, exactly what you'd expect from Geelong. You know how everyone mentions that they're just, you know, they're out there, they enjoy being away from the limelight in Melbourne. I kind of asked James afterwards, you know, it's a little bit of an interrupted um, warm-up, I guess. They're coming on straight after another game. He said... Not fuss at all. They yeah. just go with the flow. Only a five-day break, too, out of Easter Monday. So that is a sharp turnaround for a, a game like this against a team that will be out to get them tonight, the Western Bulldogs, who I think we'll see run of the park first. Um, and, of course, they had the Tom Hawkins milestone last week. You mentioned Mark Blitzard. He's 250th game tonight for the Cats. So a two-time best and fairest, all-Australian premiership Superstar. player, of yep. course. And uh, he's uh, a man who was... Uh, I was surrounded by basketball. Of course, mum, dad, sister all played for Australia. He was uh, uh, athletic. He was, he was a, yeah, runner, yeah, yeah. Oh, look, he's been a, a super player and, and hardly ever misses either. Like, he's got to 250. It seems like he's been around forever, but he actually hasn't been. He's just such a durable player that you can flip anywhere on the ground. He can play full back, ruck, midfield, wing, full forward, centre forward. Multi best, multi time yeah. best and fairest winner at through the era. Of, of winning premierships and he's just a superstar player. Congratulations to him. Great, great story. Cat B rookie comes in 2011. It's extraordinary. Well, Rich Stanley plays 199 too yes. tonight. So, like, he's going to come up. So, again, yeah. this is what we're talking about, the quality and the depth that they have. They just don't go and they just keep producing and then bringing younger through. Here come the Western Bulldogs. Having had that win against West Coast last week, they're going for a third straight tonight. Marcus Bontempelli leads them out. And uh, Era. Plenty of Bulldogs colours out there. The red, white and blue, as the song suggests. It's a double header, so, of course, the ticket stands. I should just mention one quick thing before we go any further. Peter Malinowskis, the SA Premier, mentioned this this afternoon, that uh, there are a significant number of tickets still available for this game tonight. Only $10 each. All proceeds from ticket sales go to women's and kids' hospitals. So uh, purchase those tickets at the gates here at Adelaide Oval. If you, and the nature is of this weekend is you're around somewhere... If you are listing locally, that you can come to the 40 at 10 minutes. It's just down the road. Uh, you might be, you know, thinking, do we want to go to the second game? Come back, 10 bucks. Um, or if you've been at the Mount Parker game earlier, and uh, this game should be a beauty as well. So $10 tickets here. And because uh, patrons have left the Carlton Frio game, which uh, the Blues won by 10 points, that frees up some space here tonight. The hill is packed, though, mind you, Jamo. There is all kinds of atmosphere around the place at that part of the ground. But it's, uh, yeah, And that's a good indication, too. You know, look, normally when Adelaide Oval does get full, the, the northern end does get full up there. And there's a bit in the eastern stand and a bit at the city end stand. But to, I'm sort of pitching myself a little bit, too, to be able to see, you know, two non-South Australian teams here. It's very rare, obviously, but just through this, to be able to do it, I just, you can't get enough football. I've already done one. I went and watched the SA Victorian game today, which is the local. I came early and watched the Freo Cup. You, to be able to do it and watch as much football, it's just, it's tremendous. I was standing in one of the function rooms earlier. I couldn't stay. Uh, I was a reluctant departure from the, from the function to come and obviously call this game, which I, I'm very happy about, mind you. But spoke to Amit Baines, the Bulldogs CEO. I uh, said, so what's the key thing for you guys? And he said, pressure. And that's, we say it every game, don't we, Dean? But for a team like the Dogs, they won't be favoured to win this game. I think Geelong uh, had their noses in front there, but the Dogs have to bring the pressure and bring it early, don't they? But when Bulldogs are at their best, we've seen them over the last five, six years, when they're at their best, it, it's pressure, it's that, that they swarm, they run in waves and they swarm the opposition and they turn over and they go by hands and they go quick and they move the ball by hands and, they've, and they get the ball inside 50 really quick. So... I've seen a little bit of that from them in the first month. You know, Trelaw's back back to playing really good footy. Um, Bontempelli always is, plays good footy. But Liberatore, McRae, they've got talent. They just haven't been able to, you know, the last, for whatever reason, the last couple of years, they just haven't been able to produce it week in, week out. But pressure's on the Bulldogs a little bit this year to produce. You know, their window with these really good players in Bontempelli, Trelaw and McRae, like, it's getting a little bit slimmer. So they've openly come out and said, like, this is going to be their year. Like, Beveridge really believes that they're in a, they're up with a chance to, you know, at least make finals and, and do some damage. So, and I agree with him. I, I think they should be playing finals with that 22 out there tonight. Eight years on from that flag. Only a few guys left from that team, mind you. So uh, we'll see if they can produce something here tonight. As the Cats make their way on the Adelaide Oval, 
from the Riverbank stand where the uh, two players' races were side by side. The Cats are three and zip. And of course, uh, Carlton keep their unbeaten record alive as well. And uh, for the Bulldogs, as I say, a win tonight gives them three straight and a chance to solidify their place in the top eight. So just on Geelong, and, and Tanner Bruin's another one, who's uh, they got him from the Giants, Jamo, and he's uh, every bit that sort of midfield ball. In the absence of some of those bigger names who aren't playing at the moment, Tanner Bruin is standing up in the way they wanted him to. Oh, look, yeah, Ken Guthrie's not out. He'd be another five weeks away. Paddy Dangerfield with his hamstring, too. And Gary Rowan's the other one up forward. He's another three or four weeks away. Um, when we saw here, uh, what is it, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Holmes was tremendous off the halfback line too, but Tom Atkins didn't play against Adelaide, so he comes in. And Tanner Bruin, like a lot of people might not have heard of him unless you do genuinely follow, but he's played 50 games. So he's, mm. this is the quality of person we're talking about where they just integrate into this system well and they play away, and you're going to have to in most, but certainly in Geelong's way. Mentioned the 350 for Tom Hawkins last week, and you have that big build-up team to a, a milestone game. Is there a, is there a chance, especially for a five-day break, that the maybe that just takes me out of you a little bit the next week and sort of maybe a bit deflating? Oh, look, he's played in enough uh, five-day break games over his 350 career. I, I, look, he doesn't move so much outside the 50, so. But the team I, in general as well. Oh, look, as far as the, the event, absolutely. And, and let's not forget that game was in the rain, and they had a big. It was a just it was a very unique game, and it was in the wet. And, he's uh, probably they, had a rub they, and a stretch. That's they, all he's done since Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Most of their old boys, I reckon, probably haven't done much this yeah. week. But, look, there, there's, a, there's a chance they might be a little bit flat to start tonight. Um, but, look, these guys, you know, this team's played in, in lots of big games and there's nothing that, that this most of this group that's running out of the Geelong tonight haven't seen. So, I wouldn't expect them to be uh, to be flat. Like, look, just look at the atmosphere and, yeah. you know, if you can't get up for tonight, then there's something wrong. So, um, you know, and they've got a chance to go 4-0. and Like, to, to start the year 4-0 and when they... No one's probably said Geelong would be four and over. We're all honest with ourselves. I, I didn't have them even in the top four. Yeah, and, and all that's of a sudden the they're there. Well, that's the thing. So they've beaten what uh, St Kilda, Adelaide, Hawthorne. You say, well, this might be a bit more of a test for them tonight against the Dogs. C- c- correct. Like this is. And this gets back to what I said in, in earlier. This is the match. This is the the match up of the weekend, if you ask me, because it's a big test for both teams, but it's particularly Geelong with, to see where they're actually at. Uh, we know the Bulldogs have had a, a reasonably good month, um, pretty strong over the last couple of weeks. But, um, yeah, it's a big test for both clubs tonight. And just Jamo, you know, Geelong have got some pretty good players out too, haven't they? Yeah, well, they have. And um, But, again, watching them here a couple of weeks ago against Adelaide, the way they like to get, obviously, their body around the football, they've certainly then got speed. They've got great small forwards. They've still got their big targets up there. And the luxury of Jeremy Cameron to play forward or come up onto the wing and move around. And they move it with absolute speed, too. So, and two weeks ago, Grant Myers, I gave him best on ground, just yeah. the way that... And listening to them talk about him last year and even prior to that, they almost felt he was the most important player in their team because he's just a real connection for them and he, he brings it together. And he's disposal efficiency two weeks ago. He was up like 80% or something like that too, but he was just worked hard around the ground. And they're so unselfish going forward. They always want to help their teammate and and have shots from a better position. So that's one thing I think he's added to his game, Jamo, over the last probably 12 months is, is he was one that would have a little shot from the from an impossible angle and try and be the hero. I reckon um, a year in, he's starting to really like win the goal assist award or whatever they do at Geelong. I know they have some sort of award like that down there. They always have had it. Yeah. Um, and they, they pride themselves on that. So I, I agree with Jamo. He's a much improved player and he's so dangerous. He's very dangerous. You mentioned the rivalry. Just to contextualise, I guess, the, the rivalry and the recent history of these two sides. So uh, the Dogs beat them last time, round 24 last year in your park, which is a rare thing for a lot of teams to go there when they won by 25 points that day. Aaron Norton kicked three. Rory Lobb kicked three. He's not playing for the Dogs, of course. He's, he's back in the VFL. Um, Adam Trelaw had 33 and kicked two as well. But before that, Geelong had won five in a row. But those games hadn't gone beyond 28 points. So they've played some close-ish games across that little, you know, either side of Geelong's grand final appearance, premiership, whatever. Uh, in this era. So we'll see if we get another classic here tonight between the Bulldogs and the Cats. The opening bounce is just six minutes away. Brett Sprigg alongside Lauren Borden, Rod Jamison, Dean Brogan, Liz Walsh on the boundary very, very shortly. Marcus Bontempelli, Jamo, spent more time forward against West Coast. Whether that was a, you know, they, they could afford to probably have him spend more time upfield against that opponent or maybe it's, you know, whether he has some, some ankle niggles still 
How do you think we'll see the bond used tonight? I think you'll find... Uh, look, I, I think Atkins will go with him. I reckon he'll sort of try and outbody him. I, it just feels that it wasn't that long ago that Marcus Bonapelli was coming into the competition and was raving about him, and yep, he started to build. And now he's 220 games into a career, and he's still yeah. probably got a few years ahead of him. He's all class. So, I, you know, ha- having the luxury, his best football is clearly around the middle of the ground. Give as much to him. And, you know, there's a lot more left footers, I think, playing now than what they probably used to be. But they just changed the way of a game because everyone thinks you go to the right, and he has this ability to be able to get around his, you know, on his left. And, and he's skillful, he's got his height in terms of his marking ability if they want to move him up forward. So, uh, look, it's been a pleasure to watch him evolve and get to where he is and be a leader of the club. So we underestimate a guy like Ed Richards. He was third in their BNF last year and he plays into that hard-running style which is sort of their trademark at times, the Bulldogs. So he's, he's back in this week after concussion. Maybe it's a bigger inclusion than most of us would think. Well, he's probably one of those guys that is a bit of the glue around... The, the, yeah. eight, the, the genuine stars, like we call them, the Bontepellis and the Craze, he just flies under the radar. A bit like William Drew from Port Adelaide. Like you've, He just sort of fits the mould of what they're trying to do. And um, internally, they would rate him very highly. And, um, yeah, he, a big in for them. Like He doesn't get spoken about, does he? But he's a super player and, and plays his role week in, week out very well. Subs to Jack McRae and Mark O'Connor for the Bulldogs and the Cats. The opening bounce is just a few moments away. You can keep your texts coming, 0437 774 774. As part of the, the festival flavour of, I guess, the weekend, there's a few references to previous games. Uh, Liv in uh, Marupna says, yes, I'm a blue supporter, but umpires are not going to change their minds when they have made a decision. That's true. Umpires are human too and need support. Uh, another correspondent says, Ree, the Carlton win. Did you see Adelaide give away a free kick for descent after they missed the finals from a poor umpire? decision. No, it all boils down to one thing, player discipline. Freo only have themselves to blame. And, uh, yeah, so you can keep your text coming through. 0437 774 774. You can also find us on the ABC Sports socials. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I think we're on TikTok, maybe. I'm not sure. I did the roof climb earlier, guys. I did the roof climb with Adam Jones, our our great uh, local producer here. And uh, it was scary. I've I've never done it. I think there's a video going up of my roof climb experience. <laughs> so you'll see me, and I, I did drop a few expletives. Did you get scared of heights? Are you scared of heights? I'm not like scared, scared, but it was uh, an experience which which did. I was rattled for a few minutes after that, but it was good to get it out of the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going up there. No. Yeah, this is your final no. couple of thoughts here, Rod Jamison, Dean Brogan, on uh, the dogs and the cats coming up very shortly. Oh, look, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be an enthralling game. I think Geelong just way and the way in which they play. I think their style, they're two very similar styles, so. I think it'll be a lot closer than maybe a lot of people think, but I'm going to lean towards Geelong having seen them and the, uh, only a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you, Jamo. I, I think Geelong just just a little bit, you know, I've, just because I've seen a bit more of them uh, than the Bulldogs. But, uh, look, it wouldn't surprise me if the Bulldogs do get up tonight. But, um, yeah, I think Geelong only just. What's the key thing for the for the Cats then tonight? Well, to stop their... Um, Bulldogs midfield. The Bulldogs midfield is really up and about. Trelaw, Liberatore, Bontempelli, um, McRae when he comes on. I'm so actually surprised he's a sub, to tell the truth. But I, I think it, it's always one and loss in the midfield, isn't it? Like, whoever dominates that area of the ground t- generally tends to win. So um, I think Bulldogs midfield is a little bit better than Geelong's. So Geelong really needs to nullify um, Bulldogs midfield because it's been in the top three, you know, best midfields in the comp this year. Aaron Norton, Hugel Hagen, and then Waitman. I mean, they're the three sort of keys. Tim English there, he goes forward, takes a mark. Like they're, The back line and, and the defence, I think, the way that Tom Stewart plays and the way he was able to play here against Adelaide two weeks ago, they somehow have to, which most teams try and do, but he just keeps popping up and intercepting Mark all the time. There's a key. If they can manoeuvre and work their way through the back line of Geelong, Western Bulldogs will give me a huge chance. Scores that, for and against are pretty much identical. If, if Bulldogs let Tom Stewart do whatever he wants, it's going to be a long night for him. So you would expect them to put some time in it and at least try and nullify him because if he has a day out like he has the last three weeks, it's going to be a long night for him. Mark Blitzhards in his 250th meets Marcus Bontempelli for the coin toss. Uh, so the crowd is certainly building, that's for sure. And uh, those eastern grandstands toss one by Geelong and they'll kick the riverbank stand end here in the first term.
Let's head battery side once again because uh, Liz Walsh is doing the double header here on the battery for us this evening on ABC Sport. What's it like down there now, Liz? Thank you, Brett, and welcome from ground level where, honestly, for the first time in my boundary riding career, I wish I could tell you it was pouring from the skies so that I could actually say it's raining cats and dogs, but I can't because there are simply <laughs> yeah. perfect conditions here tonight. Of course, the clear skies means our temperatures are dropping currently. It's 17 degrees, but almost not a wisp of wind as people are still taking their seats. Still a few left in the top stands here. Quickly looking across to the benches for you. And for the dog standers, Darcy, Jurea and Daniel will start on the bench, while for the cats, Bose, Clark, Atkins and Guthrie will start on the bench. Good on your leads. Get that second win for the second game after having done the uh, Carlton Freo game a little earlier. The Blues winning by 10 points there. And earlier at Mount Barker, the Swans beat West Coast by 26 points. But the lights are flashing at the pyro. We had the presets, all kinds of activation and fan engagement. The Northern Hill is packed with Adelaide Oval. It's the double header on the main stage here in the City of Churches and getting us underway here on ABC Sport. It's Lauren Borden. Saturday night footy in gather round. Geelong and the Western Bulldogs as the crowd gathers for the second game here at Adelaide Oval. The lights flashing. The occasion and the umpire bounces the ball. It's English with the clearance. Straight inside 50 for Western Bulldogs. Over the top of the head of Vandermeer. Gallagher can pick it up. Hand passes it in the Vandermeer direction. He can't collect. Geelong able to gather the ball via Duncan. He's tackled by Waitman. The umpire will come in and toss the ball up 40 metres out from Geelong's goal. That from Western Bulldogs' goal, rather. Kicking towards the cathedral end of Adelaide Oval. Ball tossed up. Pontempelli goes after it. Then English goes in as well. And he's wrapped up in a tackle. The umpire will wait to see if the ball will come out. Stengel fighting for it as well. And finally, with the ball not moving anywhere, the umpire comes in and he'll toss it up, this time 45 metres out from Western Bulldogs goal. Liberatore hands it all back to the umpire. Up in the air it goes. Again, English competes with Stanley. They try to clear off half back here, the Cats. Hand pass from Stengel. Wide to Myers. And now Stewart hurries a kick up the eastern wing. It missed Karmas. Overrun that time by he and... Out the back there for the Cats, Ollie Henry has some space to move. Comes back in field now, where again it's marked by Stengel. Reels and goes from the eastern wing. Loads up deep inside, forward 50 here for the Cats. Cameron! Plunks a simple mark, 25 out in the left forward pocket. Brilliant build up by Geelong. Just the way that, I think it was Myers that, that brought the ball in on just a little dumpy kick, brought it into the corridor, and Jeremy Cameron is the best at doing this. He just runs so, he's such a good runner. He ran so hard back to goal. As soon as he saw Geelong had won the footy, he ran as hard as he could back to goal and found himself pretty unopposed, taking an uncontested mark, probably 30 out. One of your old mates at the Giants, Jeremy Cameron. Absolute superstar. Recently cracked the top 40 all-time goals. He's gone past uh, Tony Modra on the way there. Here he is. A goal 591 of his career, and it's fading to the right-hand side. The first score is a minor one for the Cats in the first couple of minutes here on ABC Sport. Saturday night gather round. Just another example, Grind Mize had two disposals already, 100%, but just his connection bringing other players in. Bailey Dale chips it out to Bramble in the left back pocket. Moved it forward to Ed Richards. Back in the side after a concussion against Gold Coast. A week off and straight back to the half-back line. Kicks across to Dale and gets the hand pass back. Richards dodging around opponents, still in defensive 50 for the Western Bulldogs. Then moves it down the broadcast wing towards Hugo Hagen. Can't mark, gets a hand pass across. Bramble can come in there for the Western Bulldogs. Long hand pass to Dale, who hand passes to Hugo Hagen. Puts the kick in some space, wants his teammate to run onto it in Gallagher. Couldn't pick it up, but Sars was there for Geelong. Hand passes to Bruin, tackled as he gets the kick away. Trelaw was there. Shepherds it for Liberatore to gather it. His hand pass picked off by Blitzarves. Hand pass to Holmes, who flicks it back towards De Koning. He'll kick down the wing. It'll be turned over by Bailey Dale of the Dogs. It's Geelong leading by a point early stages of the he first half. He gets the term. kick away. Hand pass swept wide by Liam Jones. They use the outer wing here, the Dogs. Trelaw back to Johannesson. Pops it inside 50. Tried to wait the kick for Vandermeer. Dropped it now. Waitman goes to ground. Copped a bit of a push there from Colin Jasney in that right forward pocket. We'll throw it back in. Cody Waitman's wearing that, uh, almost that, called a shooter's sleeve, bro. It's like the basketball style thing. He's uh, Alan Iverson. He had the uh, he had the discated elbow against West Coast last week, so a special sleeve he's wearing tonight. The ball tossed in, forward 50 for the Western Bulldogs. Tui tries to gather it. It's Parfit that comes in instead. Can get the ball outside of 50. The umpire's found a free kick going Geelong's way. 
will be handed over to Zach Tui. So Tui, one of the ins for Geelong, coming into this game after being managed out of last week with the footy inside defensive 50. Kicks across to the right back pocket to Jack Henry. Chips forward to Duncan. Geelong going with the slow defensive approach to get it out of the 50. It's back to Tui now. Switch back to the left back pocket. He'll now kick it along the wing where he finds Brian Myers. This time in front of the Jack Odie stand. Myers tries to kick the ball quicker to Stengel. Marks it on the logo in front of a couple of Dogs players. So Stengel wheels around and kicks it to the top of the 50. Inside for Geelong, Tim English sits back there for the Western Bulldogs. Stands tallest and takes the intercept mark. Strong intercept from the big man. Geelong one behind. The Bulldogs yet to score. Four and a half played the opening term here. Geelong just spreading the Western Bulldogs, aren't they? Just trying to go as far and wide as they can where the Bulldogs are short chipping, trying to come through the middle of the ground. English to Richards and now Bontempelli flares it wide to the members' wing where it's marked on the logo. Quick work, it's moved here uh, from Sanders out in front. Vandermeer goes inside 50. Eugel Hagen, good use of the body that time against Collar Jazzy. Follows up here, but waste the kick and it's out of bounds on the full. Perhaps at a bit more time, did Jamara, but it's out of bounds on the full here. So the Cats will have it in the right back pocket. Still no change to our score. Cats are behind. The Bulldogs yet to score. Five gone first term. You can see both teams, uh, you know, they're trying to shift the ball and get through by foot, aren't they? Change angles and go quick once they do switch. Both teams are doing it really well to start this game. Jack Henry comes down the western wing. His brother Ollie got hands on it, but it was fumbled over the boundary line for a throw in. Just a bit sloppy by Jamara, wasn't it? He's had he dropped a couple of marks in this early part of the first quarter. And a right foot, Aaron Norton was in the square, just saying, have a look up. So umpire tosses the ball in. Stanley punches it down to Blitzarves, who hand passes it into some space. Trelaw running after it. Parfit gets there first, still kept in here by Liberatore. He hand passes it in the Bonton Pally direction, who falls over. And again, it'll go over the boundary line. Another throw in. It's still Geelong leading by one behind. Five and a half minutes gone now in the first term. Only score of the game so far. Crowd certainly building this Saturday night main event on ABC Sport. Back in it comes. English plays in front of Stanley. Sliding through here for the Cats. Atkins couldn't work it away. Just a messy hand pass comes out wide here. Away from Brian Myers. And it's going to be deliberate. So... <laughs> He went out from the interchange gates and on the broadcast swing. So the Bulldogs ball with uh, Liberatore. Speaking about low-scoring games earlier, Dean Brogan, we may have one here so far for the first <laughs> seven minutes for an indication. Up towards 50 they go. Fisted away by English. And at the back there for the Cats. Brad Close can clear off half back. In some space. Karmas is there for the Dogs. Again, just didn't uh, read the football correctly. Cameron coming through. Soccer's out in space here for Geelong. On the bounce, it sits up there for Ollie Henry. And you get it back to Jeremy Cameron. He loads up on the run from 50. High ball toward the hot spot. Who's back there? A couple of Bulldogs jumpers. And Taylor Jure just thumps it through for a rush behind. So it's Geelong two behinds. The Dogs yet to score. Seven gone first term here on ABC Sport. Having basketball theme. You t they oh, Geelong, they're like the Harlem Globetrotters, the way they move the footy. <laughs> sometimes. The Jeremy Cameron's fascinating to watch. And he, that little soccer he did, that was intent, that was dead set on purpose. He's such a crafty footballer, isn't he? he do, he's done that a few times, Jeremy Cameron, to get himself an opportunity at goal. It's lucky Bramble takes the kick in, just chips it to Bontempalli. Chips it further forward towards Sanders. Played every game so far since his debut. He goes long down the wing. Norton was there, got two hands to it, couldn't take the mark. Blitzarv gets it, tackled by Waitman, can hand pass it to Ollie Dempsey. Geelong still holding possession here through Collar Jasney. Waitman goes back for another tackle. Collar Jasney's hand pass goes out of bounds, so we'll have a throw in directly in front of our position on the western wing here. Geelong just leaning by those two behinds. Great tackle, Cody Waitman. The intensity is lifting a little bit here. It's the two behinds in the game so far. English from behind on Stanley. Libertore had the arm pinned. Got a hand pass away of some description. Retrieved by English. Handball back in board for Daniel. One of those premiership players that remains. Up towards half forward. Strong intercept grab taken out there by De Koning. And he moves it back down the line here for the Cats. Where it's marked by Myers on the wing. Wheels and goes quickly. Middle distance kick here to Jack Bowes. Who was last week's sub. The 22 this week. Myers running by receives it. 
Hugs his kick down the pocket now. One, two grabs. Trying to reel it in down there. Ollie Henry, but it's uh, helped out of bounds by Richards and co. in defence for the Dogs. A stoppage inside 50 for Geelong at Riverbank stand end. It's they who lead two behinds. The Bulldogs yet to score. And Myers has got the ball on a string, hasn't he? Every chance he gets, he's looking to hit that 15-metre dart through the corridor. So Hawkins, of course, doing the ruck work in the forward line for Geelong. Ball comes up. Stengel chasing after it. will be locked up here again. Dre throwing the ball back to the umpire for a ball up. About 15 metres out from Geelong's goal. Neither side have kicked a goal yet. Trelaw gathers it, just kicks it into some space. Tapped away by Richards. Close can run onto it. He's beaten there uh, to the footy by Bramble. Still Geelong are able to hold onto it. Ollie Henry hand passes it back to Clark. He'll try and go for a kick at goals. It's short. Close was there. Couldn't take the mark. Richards for Western Bulldogs can hand pass to Bolton Pally. Hand passes to Joe Hannison. Western Bulldogs will exit. Up the corridor they go. The kick away on time. Back to Joe Hannison here as he receives the hand pass back. Out in space now for Darcy. Awkward pick up for him. He does soccer inside 50, in fact, towards the junction of the line. The umpire's going to say, deliberate this oh, one. I don't know about that. So we've had one go each way here. It's a Geelong ball uh, right half back at the back of that errant Sam Darcy kick. That's terrible. <laughs> to Koning brings it back in play here for the Cats. Only as far as Waitman who gets up and takes the overhead grab. Sacking side of the wing. Tries to find the target inside 50. It's uh, on the half volley and sliding in again. De Koning sees it out of bounds. About 70 around from goal. Attacking goal at the Cathedral end for the Bulldogs. It's the Geelong side, though, who lead two behinds to none. Aaron both. Norton just keeps presenting himself, too, at the moment. They just can't find him. He hasn't touched the football yet. And both teams' forwards are getting really high. So when they do break, they don't have anyone to kick to inside 50. Look, Sars double-handed a Myers, who moves the ball along. It's Geelong with the ball on the western wing. Dempsey. Short to Hawkins, forced to hand pass back to Myers, who looks to go a bit longer to half forward here for Geelong. It's a good looking kick towards Cameron, two hands on it, doesn't take the mark, goes back and gathers, runs into a couple of Western Bulldogs players. Myers goes after it, and Bonton Pally's there for the dogs. He can kick it to Norton, Norton that front position. Again, he had two hands to it, couldn't hold on to it. Goes back towards Sanders, who can pick it up for the Western Bulldogs. Hand pass it through the middle of the ground to Daniels. We'll hand pass it to Darcy. He'll go long to Hugo Hagen in a one-on-one. -on -one. He does it with out there. It's Cole Jasny who gets the best position and just pushes it over the boundary line. Left forward pocket for the Western Bulldogs where we'll have a throw in. The Doggies still haven't caught, scored so far in this game. It's Geelong by two points, 11 minutes gone, first turn. Five inside 50s to the Bullies, and Tom Stewart's only had the one touch, so they, they're working their way around him. Still waiting for our first goal. Umpire heaves it back in. Darcy playing in front of Blitz Arts. Out in space, it bounced well for Bonton Pelly. Shrugs the tackle, shapes up the kick here. Burst to a second tackle. He centers the ball here, and it's marked by Bramble. 45 out directly in front. Just well, how good is the big man too, isn't he? That was he? unbelievable, wasn't it, Jamo? He is just an absolute superstar. He just shrugged off a couple of tacklers and the vision and the composure. He could have had a ping, but just squared it up and found his teammate who was absolutely naked at the top of 50. But um, Bulldogs first scoring shot. Lucky Bramble wears 29 because of Neil Cordy. He's, he's, uh, Neil Cordy taught his dad at uh, Essendon Grammar, I think it was, in one of those schools as Bramble sends his kick out to the left. It's out of bounds on the full. I don't think Cord's taught at a private school. I think it's Essendon, one of the schools around there. It's no change to our score. Geelong, two behinds. The Bulldogs yet to score. 12 and a half minutes played, Lauren Borden. So, ball to come in here by Stewart. Kicks it down the western wing. It's just punched over the boundary line. We'll have another throw in in that position between wing and half forward for the western Bulldogs. I need to find out now. What, what was the... Not Penley Essendon grammar? No, it wasn't no. that one. Here we go, I'll find out for him. He's rocking a red mullet with a moustache. Essendon <laughs> Tech, Essendon, Essendon Tech. Tech. So there we go. There we go. So Sanders funnels out the hand Oop. pass towards Bose, who then got the hand pass away to Williams. He was tackled and he'll be penalised for it. On a string, Laws, this is disposal number eight for Grian Myers. Now, Grian Myers, as you mentioned in the pregame, number one for goal assists at Geelong. So that's why he's valued so highly in this side. He'll just chip it out to De Koning, holding the footy just in front of the benches here. Looking for his teammates to come ahead of him. Geelong still haven't scored a goal, neither is the Western Bulldogs. It's the Cats leading by two points. As De Koning's kick is close to the boundary line, it's punched over. And we'll have a throw in this time between wing and half forward for the Cats. Just holding on to that two-point lead. 13 minutes gone in the very first quarter. And back in it comes, right half forward for Geelong. 
Blitzarves playing from behind on Darcy. Liberate Sore. Chain of hand passes. Oh, Senna's hand pass picked off by Myers, or was it? Bramble there to, to uh, support him. And now they'll go off half back through Bailey Dale. Kicks out in space. Stewart gets there first ahead of Riley West. And he bucks him off the footy here. And the ball goes uh, loose for a throw in. It's the Bivin Armrest at the moment. Stats are pretty even. Both teams in between the arcs just seem to be going half back. Both teams at half back seem to be winning the footy and then turning it back over. So a bit of an arm wrestle. Back in on the outer centre wing in front of the Max Bashir stand. Cats will go forward from the stoppage. Here's Myers. Has a bounce. Sends it towards 50. Or could pick up for Dempsey. Did well. Burned away from Dale. Dale tackled. Couldn't get him. Dempsey hand pass back here. The kick will come from 35 out. That's a nice finish as well. What about that from Jack Bowes? Sub last week. In the side this week, Jack Bowes kicks the first goal of the game. The Cats are one to eight. The Bulldogs yet to score. 15 going first term on ABC Sport. Your experts are Rod Jamison and Dean Brogan. Well, we talk about Myers. He's absolutely killing Western Bulldogs at the moment. He just burst away from that stoppage. He's got time and space, and he never he went for an inboard kick. It was a scrubby kick, but it was a chaos ball, and Geelong just swooped on it, and they're running in waves at the moment inside their 50. They're just a little bit scrappy, but they look more likely than the Bulldogs at the moment. The Western Bulldogs were going at 84% kicking to efficiency. Now it's dropped down to 69. Geelong's has always maintained a level around that 70%. They just the run, the support, the carry they do. They move it fast. They keep it alive. Great goal. So Jack Bowes, former Gold Coast player, 83 games there now. Or notching up more than 100 AFL games now. He's moved across to Geelong. It's from the middle of the ball, edges towards half forward for the Western Bulldogs. West chasing after it, paddling it forward to himself. Can gather now, get a hand pass out. It'll get to Gallagher. He snaps it towards goals. It's the quick reply from the Western Bulldogs. Their first score of the night is a goal. And it comes from Harley, Harvey Gallagher. So Western Bulldogs now one straight six. Still trailing Geelong one, two, eight after 15 minutes in the first quarter. Well, Harvey Gallagher only his fourth game. It's his fourth goal. If he keeps that up, he's going to have a reasonable career and they'll want to use him as much as they possibly can. But just the smarts, I think it was Aaron Nort really came through and hit the contest really hard, kept it alive, really sharp handball, went past two, three players out wide to Harvey Gallagher. Great response. I think it was West that get the ball up, just paddled it along inside 50. And it was a goal from nothing, really, a centre bounce goal. And they're just huge. And a great response by the Bulldogs because they haven't been that efficient going forward. So great goal to get them. Uh, we've got a high-scoring game. Um, yes. Frigga. <laughs> round, round Tom Megan, Cinder Bonapelli in the middle of the ground. He was the round three rising starting on last week, Harvey Gallagher, for his three goals against West Coast. Um, and they move the footy here inside with two goals, in fact, as uh, Geelong makes... Uh, the entry, but it's marked there inside the fence at 55 Gerard. His kick is a little wasteful as well. A little too low for Liam Jones, and uh, it goes out of bounds for a throw-in. Um, yeah, Gallagher with uh, two goals and 16 touches against uh, the Eagles last week. Uh, some news coming through from the integrity unit, by the way, as well, just on uh, the game last night for Adelaide Essendon. More on that very shortly. Cats lead by two points here. 17 gone in the first oh. quarter. It's bounced off the bonce of uh, Adam Trelaw. Bontempelli goes to track the footy. Works it back by hand to Oscar Baker. Under pressure again was uh, Tim English. Lofty hand pass comes to Bontempelli. The skipper comes up the broadcast wing. In the contest to Koning and Norton at the drop. Darcy is uh, wrapped up. The umpire says, give it to me. The AFL's investigating an alleged homophobic slur made by Jeremy Finlayson towards an Essendon player last night. It was picked up by uh, through the umpire's mark and the league will run it through the integrity unit as well. So some news out of last night's game about an alleged slur made here. As Hawkins has the footy at half forward for Geelong. Goes inside 50, but Puku Kamas gets in front of Jeremy Cameron and intercepts there for the dogs. Well, gender or race is just totally unacceptable. Yeah. The Karmas to Dale and the Western Bulldogs will work it around the outer wing. English with the footy can kick it towards half forward. He's got West sitting there all alone. West is going to wait for some teammates to come ahead of him. Then he can see Waitman pinpoint pass hits Waitman on the chest. Marks the footy 45 metres out from goals and he'll head back as if he's going to kick from here. 
It all started from that back 50 turnover. It's uh, the young fella, you know, I can't think of his name at the moment, was stood in front of Jeremy Cameron, which is a gutsy thing to do. He intercepted the mark, and they went quick, and that's how you're going to get Geelong from turnover, and they were out everywhere. So really good build-up, all, all off the back of a, of a turnover. Karmas. So Karmas in front took the mark. It's led to this opportunity now for Waitman. He'll launch the footy towards goals. Straight through the middle. After a slow start, the Western Bulldogs hit the lead. Two straight 12 leading Geelong. 1-2-8 after 18 minutes in the first quarter. He has to be Cody Waitman. It has to be one of the best small forwards in the game, I would think, right now. Absolutely. And he's just starting to, to really peak. He's 23. That's his 10th goal this season. And his ability to be able to cover the ground, he can take a high mark. He's really quick with his feet and tremendous goal sense. Well done to the young fella, Karmas. Stood in front of Cameron, intercept mark, and out they go. And you're right, Jamo. Uh, Waitman, he's an absolute superstar. And this is what he does the best. He finishes his work. Uh, that's not an easy kick, 40 out on the angle. Um, well done by the Bulldogs. The start, they've really settled the last five minutes. I didn't see many players of his size kick him from that far. That was an extraordinary set shot for goal from Cody Waitman. Bulldogs by four points here. Great to have your company by ABC Sport as Gather Round continues. Gather Round the wireless. Back in the middle, English goes to Gather Trelaw. Sanders back to draw, a little one-two handball. His kick is going straight to Blitzarves. Geelong can go forward of halfway again. Blitzarves has the player bursting by here in uh, Max Holmes. Shows that good speed, going deep inside. 50, Booker Karmas again. I'll know his name by the end of the night, let me tell you. Back there in grab, Karmas at full back, and the dogs can rebound from that part of the ground. Richards has a bounce at the left half back flank. Up to the wing where Norton marks for the Bulldogs. Well, he only played one game last year, Buku Kama, so now he's starting to be on the map. Yeah, the big, big job on Jeremy Cameron too, mind you. And he's standing up down there too. So as the kick comes down to Sanders, and he'll just chip slightly inboard towards Baker. Slow approach from the Western Bulldogs. Baker will put it into the pocket. He's looking for Waitman. Waitman was at the back, and it wasn't the right position. He'll just be tapped over the boundary line for a throw-in. Left forward pocket. Cathedral end of the ground. Sixth game of Gather Round across Adelaide this weekend. You had a good time, Loz? I have. I've enjoyed it. It's my first Gather Round, so I've liked pacing around the streets of Adelaide, looking at all the old buildings. Ball tossed in. English taps it down. Daniel's there, tries to gather. Liberatore can pick it up, shoves it on his boot, gets a kick away to Baker. Hand pass to Trelaw. He'll hand pass out of defensive 50 to Joe Hannison. Pops it up to the hot spot. Easy mark there to be taken by Tom Stewart. Just sits back and collects it for Geelong. Recent 150 game and now a five-time All-Australian Tom Stewart as it's on the bounce for Richards. And he's out of bounds here. Couldn't keep it alive. So a throw in between wing and half forward for the Bulldogs. They're attacking half. Clint surprised me earlier, Spriggy and Loz too. Have you bought a tea towel? <laughs> he said he bought a tea towel from Adelaide. From oh. the cathedral, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was too. I, I yeah. actually don't mind that. Because some of the gather around merchandise... A tea towel? Uh, I don't know. Well, no, it's, it's not an Adelaide, it's an Adelaide tea towel. It's not yeah. a gather around tea towel. Wouldn't mind a gather around tea towel. As uh, it's uh, <laughs> another bit of congestion on the wing as Bally Dale is wrapped up, so it's a ball up. What would you it, suggest is an appropriate souvenir, Rod? No, no, I don't know if it's a tea towel. At least it's a useful thing. Some of those shirts you're going to wear once, if at all, and throw it back in the... In the good Sammy's bin or something. Well, I think we're well surrounded by the Barossa, the Hills and McLaren Vale, so maybe it would come in a bottle. <laughs> yeah. Bulldogs by four points here. Time on the opening turn. Tui reaching for it. Run down from behind was Baker. Umpire lets them play. Extracted down there by Liberatore. Kept it alive here for Harvey Gallagher. He almost lost it under pressure from Holmes. Got it back though from Daniel. Gallagher can close to 40 and straighten up, but not quite enough on the run from booty five. It's a minor score. Bulldogs 2 1 13. Geelong 1 2 8 23 gone in the opening turn. Bulldogs just last five, six minutes, just a little bit better with their hands in the contest and just getting out in the, at the front of stoppage from Geelong. And they looked a little bit dangerous. Duncan and Stewart work it out of defence to Clark who kicks it forward to De Koning, chips towards Cameron, right in the centre of Adelaide Oval. He'll kick to half forward. Here's Holmes, holding the footy in front of Bailey Williams. Hand passes to De Koning, who's kept running. He kicks from 55 towards the goals. And slots it through. Zach Guthrie with a 50-metre bomb, running all the way from half back to half forward. 
And it's Geelong back in front by a point. 2-2-14 to Western Bulldogs, 2-1-13. And it's a real difference again. This is where Geelong get it and they kick forward and they have stretched on occasions, but they get it run. Zach Guthrie, Holmes, they're their halfback flankers, back pockets, Collar Jasney. These types are getting up and getting and dropping it inside 50 and having shot on goal. Whereas the Western Bulldogs are going shorter, shorter, trying to cut the angle and manoeuvre and work their way through into their forward 50. Oh, Jeremy Cameron's lead up mark and, and they hit him but he just lowered his eyes. They all, all, Western Bulldogs expected him to kick to the top of the square but he lowered his eyes and hit the leading forward and that's a great goal from Guthrie isn't it? Good connection through the middle of the ground. Restart back in the middle. English wins it down. Bursting through. Bruin did well. Got the hand pass back from his teammate out there in Bowes and he goes inside 50. So Bruin delivers well here for Tyson Stengel. He's on the angle, 45 metres out. He'll have to be starting his run up from right on the boundary line on the left forward pocket. Hannah Bruin who's also got the four disposals. Bonapelli with the eight. Myers with the nine. Trelaw. Got a monster falcon. Still rubbing his eyes. He's got seven. The former Crow and Tiger, Tyson Stengel. To continue Geelong's lead late the opening quarter. He'll connect from 45, opens up a slight bit of the angle here, it's on its way and it's straight over the goal umpire's hat. And Tyson Stengel has Geelong's third, they're 3-2-20, the dogs who are 2-1-13 here on ABC Sport. Gather round, your experts are Rod Jamison and Dean Brogan. Well, as soon as I said Western Bulldogs look like they're... You know, in control of the game, Geelong has just gone whack. And uh, centre bounce goals really hurt you. Tanner Bruin bar bursting out of the centre bounce. Give, good give and go. Hit Stengel with a lead up. And Stengel's kicked goals from that pocket before when he was playing for the Crows Jammo. He, he likes to kick it from there. So, um, look, Geelong just uh, have the answers at the moment. They look at, Now they look like the dangerous team and they look like they're going to take over the game. 99th career goal for Tyson Stengel. He's gone to Geelong. And uh, he's managed to take care of himself and playing some very good football. So play restarting back in the middle. Stanley puts it out. It goes in front of Bontempalli. Sockers it out towards this western wing. He'll keep chasing it, Bontempalli. Sockers it down towards half forward. Latham Vandermeer running after it. He's beaten to the footy, though, by Guthrie. Hand pass to Stewart. And Guthrie will get the ball back. Take it in a tackle the moment he holds it. Latham Vandermeer wrapping him up. Right next to the benches on this western wing. We'll have a ball up. Three metres, metres inside from the boundary line. It's Geelong leading by seven. Up it goes. Trelaw first hands to it. Away to Baker. Looks to evade Blitzar. He's run and dumped into tackle over the boundary line. So throw it back in. Centre wing broadcast side. Tackling both sides. Good. Ground ball gets 13-15 in favour of the Bulldogs. And uh, contested 20-22 in favour of Geelong. 3-2 plays 2-1. The Cats by seven points. Back in it comes. Darcy and Stanley. And it's going to be a free kick for a hold going the way of the young Bulldog. Another of those father sons saw his old man calling yeah. the games earlier. Goes uh, up the line here where it's marked at half forward by yeah. Riley West. Speaking yeah. of father sons. Another one. Darcy's old man had a bit to say when he played, bro. Goes inside forward 50. Norton reaching from the back, but Holmes kept his feet for Geelong. Got it away here, and it's going to be locked inside defensive 50 as it was uh, Jack Henry who was dumped in the tackle. Very good player, Luke Darcy. Very good player. Lefty, very awkward. All guys that you both would have played against uh, a fair bit. Um, Jamo going back to the earlier part of the 90s with uh, with Chris Grant and those sort of guys. Yeah, I stood him quite a bit, actually, through my time, Chris Grant. He's a very good player. We spoke to him pre-game. Seven points is the Geelong lead. 27 and a half gone at the opening term on ABC Sport. It's back with Lauren Borden. Tossed in, top of the 50 metre arc for the Western Bulldogs. English tries to tap it down, running after his path. It'll pick it up right in front of the boundary line, tries to keep it in. The umpire saw that he went out. And we'll have a ball, a throw in 60 metres around from the Western Bulldogs' goals. And the crowd's really built up now. Now. Yeah. Has been filling up since the earlier game. I think it was my PSA I read out on there before. <laughs> They've swarmed around. Oh. Tom Libertore goes after the footy. And then Blitzarves picks it up, though. He'll kick down the wing. 
Long to half forward. Hawkins is there. Might have pushed Jones out of it. Umpire says play on. Myers with the footy. Can pick out Cameron. Ball goes over his head. Dre there for the Western Bulldogs. Happy to take it out over the line under pressure. Right forward pocket for Geelong. The ball now sitting in where we'll have a throw in. It's Geelong ahead by seven points. It's their slingshot football off the half back line. Geelong just getting it forward. The Western Bulldogs defence under pressure. So much space. Long lead by seven points. Stoppage inside 50 for the Cats. Hawkins contests the ruck against Darcy. Darcy won out, though, as Hawkins was a little too far away. Bailey Dale tumbles his kick up the line here for the Bulldogs. It's met front on by Zach Guthrie. Works the hand pass wide to Cameron. Tried to find Guthrie again, but it's picked up by Eugle Hagen of the Dogs. And now Norton. And it's uh, ricocheted out of bounds for a throw-in off Bonton Pelly. So, again, a stoppage between wing and half forward. In Geelong's attacking half, it's they who lead. 3-2-20 plays, 2-1-13. 28 and a half gone in the opening turn. So ball tossed in right in front of our position here. Stanley tries to palm it away to Bose. Doesn't work. Like a Liberatore can pick it up and kick to half forward. Ball will sit there. Running forward was Vandermeer. He pushed it forward towards English. Couldn't gather cleanly. Stewart picks it up. English tackles him. And he'll be pinged for taking Stewart slightly high. So Stewart will flare the kick now out to right half back towards Bose. Bose will chip it towards Duncan. He'll move the ball forward this time. And there'll be a hand pass there coming from Bose who can move it into the middle of the field. Trelaw with the footy. The umpire will stop him as well. And the free kick going the way of Cameron. You can hear a few of the Western Bulldogs fans not happy with that. Yeah, Vandermeer a bit stiff there too. He anticipated the handball came over the top. And I think he said he claimed him a little bit high. Tui just whacks it deep inside. 50 for the Cats. At the back was Jones. But Hawkins watched it well. Snaps on goal. Are we coming back? No, it's a minor score. So Geelong keep peppering away here. 3-3-21. They lead the Bulldogs to a 2-1-13. We'll just hit the half-hour mark of the opening quarter on ABC Sport. Hawkins normally uh, kicks in with his eyes shut, doesn't he? He'd be very disappointed in that. Would have given him a nice handy buffer going into quarter time. And Bramble with a kick close to the boundary line. Hits up Norton, left half back. And he'll go further right to the logo, the AFL logo. Spots up Latham Vandermeer. Wheels around, puts the kick inside 50 towards West. It was a two-on-one. West doesn't win out. It's Jack Henry that does. Chips towards Holmes. He marks right on the pane of 50. And that's the way they want you to play, Loz, too. They just want you to kick it long to their forwards. Geelong and then the defence. Three of them just drop back. They've mopped it up here to get it all the way. Is there out here? wing. Myers moves it along. He can find Bruin. He'll kick inside 50 now. Geelong trying to make the most of this opportunity from the back line. It's Liam Jones, though, who stands back there and intercepts for the Western Bulldogs. I'll start again from that part of the ground. Picked off though by Ollie Dempsey. His kick though a little while ago is out of bounds on the full. He played that well, didn't he? Didn't want to impact the player. It's going back to him actually. Is it? That's he maybe he was shoved after the fact. No, I think it's gonna be Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's gonna be Ollie Dempsey. He'll take the free kick. He's still beyond scoring range though. 65 or so out. Western Bulldogs had control. Lose control, and now Ollie Dempsey has the free. Geelong by eight. They go inside 50 again, the Cats. Deep ball up there at the back. Stanley was launching. Karmas tries to just thump it clear here for the Bulldogs. Cleverly worked away by West, and now Trelaw mops up. Swings the hand pass wide for Bally Williams. Off right half back they go. Keep looking at 15 to Trelaw play on. Little hand pass again, they combine. It comes back from Vandermeer to Williams. Loads up deep inside forward 50. Eugle Hagen was beaten through the air by Jack Henry, who was... Again, just far more watchful. He marks in the left back pocket in front of the scoreboard. Great, great build up by the doggies. But again, Jamo, it, it, their, their dump kicks inside 50 is letting them down at the moment. So Jack Henry will kick the ball a long way outside of 50, but the siren will sound as he done, does that. His side, Geelong leading 3 3 21 against Western Bulldogs 2 1 13. An eight point lead there after Geelong kick those three goals. Bit of a slow start. Until Bose got things underway. Two consecutive goals then, followed by the Western Bulldogs, and then another two to end from Geelong. So the goal kickers for the Western Bulldogs, it's Harvey Gulliger with one and Cody Waitman with one as well. Guthrie, Stengel and Bose with the goals for Geelong. This is Gather Round on ABC Radio, ABC Sport Digital and the ABC Listen app. 
G'day, this is Becky Cole inviting you to join me each week for Saturday Night Country. For more than 30 years, we've been playing the best in Australian country music, as well as the overseas artists that you know and love. So whether it's the classic tunes that you grew up with, the best new releases, or the interviews of your favourite acts, you'll find it all on Saturday Night Country. Saturday Night Country, here at any time on the ABC Listen app. You're listening to the AFL Gather Round. AFL. On radio. ABC Sport Digital. And take us with you on the ABC Listener. Here's Myers. Has a bounce. Sends it towards 50. Open pick up for Dempsey. Did well. Burned away from Dale. Dale tackled. Couldn't get him. Dempsey hand pass back here. The kick will come from 35 out. That's a nice finish as well. What about that from Jack Bowes? Sub last week. In the side this week, Jack Bowes kicks the first goal of the game. From the middle of the ball, edges towards half forward for the Western Bulldogs. West chasing after it, paddling it forward to himself. Can gather now, get a hand pass out. It'll get to Gallagher. He snaps it towards goals. It's the quick reply from the Western Bulldogs. Their first score of the night is a goal, and it comes from Harvey Gallagher. West is going to wait for some teammates to come ahead of him. Then he can see Waitman pinpoint pass, hits Waitman on the chest. Marks the footy 45 metres out from goals and he'll head back. He'll launch the footy towards goals. Straight through the middle. After a slow start, the Western Bulldogs hit the lead. Here's Holmes. Holding the footy in front of Bailey Williams. Hand passes to DeConing, who's kept running. He kicks from 55 towards the goals and slots it through. Zach Guthrie with a 50 metre bomb running all the way from half back to half forward. And it's Geelong back in front by a point. Bruins did well. Got the hand pass back from his teammate out there in Bowes. And he goes inside 50. So Bruin delivers well here for Tyson Stengel. He's on the angle, 45 metres out. To continue Geelong's lead late in the opening quarter. The connect from 45. Opens up a slight bit of the angle here. It's on its way. And it's straight over the goal on Flyers. Hack. And Tyson Stengel. As Geelong's third. The 2024 AFL Gather Round. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. The sounds of the opening term at Adelaide Oval. This double header, which earlier saw Carlton beat Fremantle by 10 points. 10-13-73 to 9-9-63. Under controversial circumstances, there was uh, an obvious touch ball, which was paid a mark to Carlton. That was Matt Cottrell for the winning goal. And then to make matters worse, with 40 seconds left, uh, a free kick for descent allowed... Uh, it was Matt Kennedy, wasn't it, who kicked that last goal of the game to uh, make it a 10-point ball game. So Freo fans are not happy in Adelaide and beyond after that result. And Carlton remain unbeaten here. While earlier at Mount Barker, the Sydney Swans beat the West Coast Eagles by 26 points, despite three competitive quarters from the Eagles. Here, it's the Cats by eight points. You're with Brett Sprigg alongside Lauren Borden. We'll get to Liz Walsh the boundary very shortly. But our experts are Rod Jamison and Dean Brogan. Look, it's, it was an interesting quarter, wasn't it? Um, both teams are, are like, from a stat perspective, statistical perspective, it's fairly even. I mean, Bulldogs have had a little bit more of the footy, but I think Bulldogs' efficiency going inside 50 was a bit off, Jamo. They, they seem to break the lines pretty well. They come out the front of stoppage okay, and they have some good ball, ball movement between the arcs. But that last kick inside 50, now whether their forwards are getting too high and when the when the when when they run out of the stoppage and they go to look up and there's no forwards there and they just feel like they've got to kick it, it, I think they're going to keep more forwards at home because Bulldogs' just efficiency going inside 50 has been not, not great. Whereas Geelong, on the other hand, when they look like they're going inside 50, it looks like they're going to score. Well, I so, think it's the speed in which Geelong move in the football at the moment too. So when the Western Bulldogs try to rebound as quick, you to your point, they've all pushed down too hard. And So I thought the way that they worked around the boundary on the last part of that quarter, just a couple of handles outside and then they went long. And in the end, I think it was... Was it uh, Jack Henry took the mark here in the in the pocket again? So Geelong then hold him up, and then away they go again. So if I'm Luke Beveridge, I'm saying just slow down. We've had 15 more disposals. We're trying to work our way through. Um, the hit outs is an area that they need to get. Tim English has had seven or eight disposals that quarter, but they're getting beat up in the middle. 17 hit outs to nine, and it's the advantages in the first disposal. But Geelong's pressure is then spilling the ball out and they're able to then go forward. Freeze again, you just say, just think about how you approach. It's two to seven in favour of Geelong as well. So there's a lot of areas that the Western Bulldogs can improve. They've had more of the football, 
So Geelong just want to go fast the other way. Let's get a feel for things. Boundary side, Liz Walsh is there for us. Liz. Thanks, Brett. All's been very quiet on the benches injury-wise so far. So much so that the Cats sub Mark O'Connor had a trainer get him a jumper from the rooms during that <laughs> first quarter. So it's certainly getting chillier down here. Mark O'Connor and Jack McRae, the subs, and no issues there. 0437 774 774. We'll get to a few of your texts at half time. So once we're halfway through... We'll have plenty of time post-game to wrap up the day and the weekend so far as well here. The Cats by eight points. A few more numbers, Loz, if you just uh, walk us through a few of those. So Bont and Pally leading the way for the Western Bulldogs with 11 disposals. Adam Traw with 10 did cop that Falcon too, which probably cost him a little bit of time yeah. out there from the bench. Brian Myers as well with 11 for Geelong. So he's been so important. He's definitely uh, earned those 11 possessions. Jeremy Cameron with eight has been pretty... Uh, well, pretty lively for Geelong getting the ball inside 50. So top disposal getters uh, for both sides at the moment. Okay. Mark O'Connor, the yep. Irishman, is cold. Yeah, it's a weird one. <laughs> and he lives at Geelong? I think after a while, yeah, that's the, probably the kicker. Because I know Ty Keneally, who's spent most of his life now in Australia, he's a bit of a wuss now when it comes yeah, to the, the cold right. weather. Anyway, uh, from the opening clearance of the second term, Trelaw lays the tackle on Jai Clark and will ball up on the outer wing. Do we need to send a blanket down to Liz? This is okay for now. Uh, we'll get down on this shortly as uh, it's worked away here by Tom Atkins. Oh. High ball up the wing and down looking worse for wear in back play. Taylor Jure down there who's Great. just getting up. He copped some... Describe it for us, Jamo. Yeah, I'm look, he was going ball. back with the flight of the football. Ooh. And I think it was Ollie Henry coming the other way with Ed Richards <laughs> just pulled it into him he's just still down on his haunches now just taking a couple of deep breaths umpire blows time back on throws the ball in the air no change to our quarter time score here Daniel works out the hand pass here for the Bulldogs clean pick up from Bontempelli kick a little messy though goes in board breaking the tackle Riley West on the bounce picked up by Johannesson flares it across the middle of the ground here for Bradley Dale he can look at the options balks around close goes down the corridor again where it's marked by Sam Darcy 40 out directly in front well we spoke about doggies inside 50 Johannesson's kick to switch the ball out to this side the grandstand side where we're commentating to Bailey Dale I think it was instead of bombing it long, which is what they were doing in the first quarter, he just cuts back inside and hits Darcy on a dart. He lowered his eyes and hit him on a 20-metre lead. Great play by the Doggies. Holds down the number one ruck spot at the Bulldogs for the time being. Rory Lobb playing in the twos. Sam Darcy lines up from 45 to close the gap. Back to a two-point game. And these teammates come from everywhere. He's having a strong year so far, Sam Darcy. It is a two-point game here. The Geelong the Cats are 3-3-21. The Bulldogs are 3-1-19. We've played now two and a half minutes in the second term on ABC Sport. And it's the way to be able to go forward. If you're just leading up and you can lower your eyes and find it, the defence in most teams now want to give you that space and they won't be as tight unless you're making an impact with two or three goals. But, yeah, well done, Darcy. He was able to do that and... How good is the kick? And, and Jamo, when, when, when you hit the leader on the lead, it forces the Geelong defenders to defend the forwards. You saw then it was an uncontested mark because Geelong was peeling back for the high ball. So you start hitting a few of those lead-ups, lead it, it keeps the defence honest. Umpire bounces it back in the middle. Bonton Pally tucks it away. Gets to Stanley, though. Long kick inside 50 for Geelong. Top of the goal square. Slips through Hawkins' hands. Uh, Richards comes in there for the Western Bulldogs. Clear and kick outside of defensive 50 all the way to half back. It's Guthrie there who can tap it forward towards Tui. Then Myers comes in to help out. Hand pass to Cameron. Flicks it back to Guthrie who just kicks it across to Holmes. He tries to hand pass to Atkins. Can't quite get there. Cameron will kick it forward. Richards is back there again for the Western Bulldogs. Weaving through traffic to hand pass to Trelaw. Hand passes it to Liberatore. And then he'll kick it outside the Western wing. No mark taken. Falls to ground. Ball's there to be grabbed. West picks it up. Hand passes it to Daniel for the Western Bulldogs. Flicked across from Bontempelli. And the ball will stop where it is on the Western wing. Out of sight of the ground here. The umpire will come in and ball it up with Sanders getting up from the bottom of the pack. Geelong leading still by two points early stages of the second. 3-3 three, three plays 3-1. Three, up it goes. Bontempelli down to Trelaw. Through hands, Jeray. Move the footy again through Sanders. Up the outer wing. Little too deep for Norton and it goes out of bounds for a throw-in. Oh, I think he's going to say he's pushed him under the footy. Ah, he's Riggy yes. too, so it's going to go back to Norton. 
so he was just uh, shoved out of it down there by uh, Taconi. So free kick for the dogs. Aaron Norton's all the way back on that eastern wing in front of the Max Bashir stand. Needs a neat entry here. Goes to the pocket looking for Waitman. Bontempelli floats across the back. Strong defensive grab. Not paid to Jack Henry. Kicked off the deck here. And now it's claimed by Tom Stewart. And Stewart will waste no time. Moves it across to Stanley. Plays his 200th game next week. Reece Stanley. Colin Jasny can rebound again here for the Cats. Up to oh. a two on two. Big hanger. Are you paid? No, he wasn't paid wow. to Bailey. Dale. Play continues, going inside 50 here for the Cats. Stengel loose footy, farms the hand pass back out to Brad Close. All by himself inside 50. Oh, no, getting back to well, Liam Jones. It was Myers all by himself in the pocket. Liam Jones got there. Prevent any further advance there. So it's the Cats by two points, five gone second term. He's been good since returning, hasn't he? That's a great mark. Bring him back to the floor of the ball. Yeah, Jones kicks it down the western wing, easily picked off, though, by Cola Jasney of the Cats. So he'll put Geelong back inside 50, top of the goal square. It's Jones that goes back and takes another intercept mark. He'll combine with Richards here and hand passes it to Daniels and they'll work it along to the left back pocket where Daniels has some space to take a bounce and then kick all along the eastern wing. He'll bounce once in front of Norton before bouncing out of bounds right in front of the Max Bashir stand. We'll have a throw in on that outer side wing. It's the depth of the Western Bulldogs. You've got Jack McRae, a 230-game player, who is the sub. Caleb Daniel was that in round one. Yeah, and both have spent time in the twos or on the fringe of selection. Back in it comes. English from behind on Stanley. Sanders bursts through here. Left a couple of his going, going, going the wrong <laughs> way. Wrong way. Riley goes back up the line. Might work out okay here for another Riley and Riley West. The Coning took a while there, got the hand pass away. Bruin works it out wide here. They keep the footy moving. It comes back to Mitch Duncan. And the precision pass to left half forward where Close claims the overhead mark. He's still 60 from goal. Pops it inside 50. A little too wide for Cameron. Out of bounds for a throw in. All right. That would happen probably once a year, wouldn't it? Yeah. Like some player, that's going to be on every highlight reel at about uh, 11 o'clock tonight on all Fox Sports, all the news channels and all the radio stations. But so it almost cost them a goal. They, they should have had a mark inside 50 Geelong. What if he kicks the goal? He goes all the way himself. Rush, rush behind, I suppose. So the ball's tossed in now at that cathedral end. It's Geelong kicking that way, not the dogs. English goes after it. Parfit can grab it. He can kick towards the sticks. It's offline. It's Karmas who sits down there. And holds on to the mark. Here's my boy, Karma. That's three <laughs> great marks, isn't it? A Who long kick, two outside to that eastern wing. It'll bounce. West there. He can't gather it. Duncan will. Hand passes back to Bowes. He wants the free kick. Umpire says, no, you're not being held, but it'll be the Western Bulldogs that steal it here. Norton, long kick towards Yuval Hagen. Left half forward for the Western Bulldogs. He has to battle with Stewart for it, though. And they both touch the footy. It falls out of bounds. We'll have a throw in. Just at half forward for the Western Bulldogs. So seven minutes played in the second term. It's Geelong ahead by two. Plenty of wide expanses out there and plenty of big lots of space where those contests are happening. He's been used out wide as well from the clearance. Bows to Myers. Kicks up the line here towards a one-on-one -on -one where Jones outbodies Tom Hawkins. As well, Tom with a diving mark to his left, Liam Jones. Plays on now. Wheels and goes back towards left half forward, but picks out Reece Stanley. And the lad from Berry rebounds the footy quickly, but Liam Jones was waiting, coming in late with a spoil, Ollie Henry. So kept alive here for Stengel and the Cats. His kicks a turnover as well, straight to Taylor Jure. I think they're just trying to take each other on at the moment in the same style of footy. They're just backwards and forwards across the half-back line. Well, they're not, cha they're not changing angles. They're going back down the line. Both teams are going... It's been... Someone's got to change angles and shift the game. Dre kicked down the wing. Norton tried to rise over to Coney. Couldn't take the mark. And West just sees over the boundary line. And will have a throw in right at centre wing. I gave Riley Sanders lies a benefit of the doubt. I thought, here he is. He's going out the back. And he takes a bounce. <laughs> Turn well, around, son. He hasn't kicked a goal yet in his career. So maybe he was so keen for it. He yeah. just could only see the sticks. Ball tossed in. Pushed down by Stanley. Bose gets a hand pass away in the path of Myers. Bontempelli tries to bump him off it. Does well, Bontempelli here to get the footy off Myers. Hand pass to Johannesson. 
Quickly can hand pass it back to Bont and Pally. Top disposal getter on the ground so far. Oh. Kicks to half forward. It's Tom Stewart running onto it. Collects it. Hand passes it to Duncan. Stewart will keep running here. He gets back to footy. Kicks to 40 metres out from goals. It'll be Dempsey sitting at the back. Doesn't take the mark. Might not need to. Tries to curl it towards goals. It's out of bounds on the full from Ollie Dempsey. So the chain of play just ends in a no score for the Cats. They're leading by two points, nine minutes gone in the second. Three goals in the first game against St Kilda. Eight-point win. Saints pushed them round one down at Geelong. Liam Jones to kick back into play. Goes long beyond the fence 50. English rises above and marks it left half back. And they move it well here. Bontempelli is a big piece of that puzzle. Comes in field now. Shoved by Atkins was Gallagher. Loose footy. Bursting by Johannesson. Goes to find Aaron Norton. 55 from goal. Goes down the pipe again. Jamara Eugle Hagen reaches up. Takes the overhead mark. 30 out directly in front. And that was their best passage of play, the Bulldogs. It, it was. And English, the big ruckman, took the mark long down the line. Then he just turned him board straight away and hit Bontepelli. It was a risky kick and they almost turned it over. But this is what you get. You get an easy shot on goal if you're prepared to take the game on. So both coaches will be wanting their teams to do this. The Bonds had six already in this quarter, 17 from the game. At his 22nd birthday on Thursday, Jamara Eugle Hagen. He lines up the set shot and makes no mistake. The lead swings again. Bulldogs back in front, 4-1-25, plays Geelong, 3-3-21, 11 going second term. On the boundary, it's Liz Walsh. Well, first we had Mark O'Connor needing a jumper. Now we've just had Bulldog sub Jack McRae on the physio mat getting a rub down. So that tells you it is definitely getting chillier down here. So, Jamo, if you could send out a blanket for me, that would be great. It's on its way, Liz. Western Bulldogs have had 40 disposals, Geelong 31. Kicking efficiency at 70%, the Bulldogs, three in inside 50s for two goals. Geelong, six inside 50s and haven't scored. The Bontempelli's uh, really um, making uh, a name for himself in this game, isn't he? He's absolutely uh, dominating the game. Him and Libertora are really, really leading the way for the Bulldogs. So only two scores this quarter so far have been goals, both the way of the Western Bulldogs. Now holding the lead by just four points in this second term. It's Blitzard chasing after the footy from the restart. Hand passes it to Parfit. Will hand pass to Ollie Dempsey inside 50. He'll flick it back out to Holmes. Holmes will set it up this time right to the goal square. It might go through. It'll go all the way. Holmes kicking it to the hot spot. Sneaks it through for one of his own. And Geelong wrestle back the lead. They're ahead now by two points. 4-3-27 playing Western Bulldogs. 4-1-25. Oh, what about Max's kick? That's gone all of 60 metres to the northern end here at Adelaide Oval. Just looking at the flags behind the, the old scoreboard. There is a slight breeze heading in that way, so just off the one step. Another clearance for Geelong out of the middle and a quick response. It's just a, a, a lazy kick on the top of the square and had no intention of kicking a goal. And... Uh, you're right, Jamie. He's kicked that 60 metres off one step. That's a, an amazing kick. What a goal. The lead has changed five times already. We're only early in the second term. A cracker so far. Geelong by two points. Back at the restart. Darcy wins it down. And wrapped up immediately out there is, uh, underneath all of that, is uh, Harvey Gallagher. In some midfield time. That goes. Bruin for Geelong. Burst through congestion, tries to straighten up from 45. He was almost run down by Bramble. Got the kick away to Cameron, who can snap in turn from 40, and it just sails through for a minor score. He's having a chat to the umpire. <laughs> didn't go far enough. I've seen shorter yeah. paid, though. No, he had every right to put his hand didn't up. Didn't go umpires 15. Pay that under the pressure off. as well. I think on principle, the umpire said, no, you're almost tackled anyway, <laughs> so forget it. Two behinds, Jeremy Cameron. Three points is Geelong's lead. 13 gone in the second term. Meanwhile, Dale's, Dale's kick out was towards Ed Richards, a bit too far for him though. And we'll have a throw in right in front of the gang Gavin Wanganine stand, out of sight of the ground. Saw the great man downstairs looking sure. across. He was actually in this side of the ground. Is that because he can look across at his own grandstand? Probably. That, yeah. Probably. I think he's Mount Gambier, isn't he? Maybe. What's that? Five hours from Adelaide, but maybe there can be a gather round game there one day. What do you reckon, Jamo? Yeah, I think um, they're trying to get it out to the Barossa at some point, maybe next year. Get it further down south to Victor Harbour. So, ball tossed in. Blitzarves tries to soccer it away. Can't get boot to ball. Bontempalli will do the tackling. 
Most of the venues was. They're only an hour away, so it's not too far. So ball tossed up, 60 metres out from Geelong's goals. Bruin runs onto it, puts it in the path of close. He'll leave it for Hawkins. Hawkins can tap it. Liberatore there for the Western Bulldogs. Hand passes it to Williams, taps it forward to Sanders. Hand pass back to Williams, and he'll clear defensive 50 for the Western Bulldogs. Kicks to a pack. Norton there can grab it. Kicks it five metres. Zach Tui cuts it off. He'll put it forward towards Parfit. Parfit and St uh, Sanders doing battle right near the boundary line. Ed Richards goes in to help out for the Western Bulldogs. Still, ball kept in. Duncan overruns it. Darcy picks it up for the Western Bulldogs. He harries a kick away, but it's just picked off by Zach Tui, centre of the ground. The veteran Irishman. 200 gamer. Loads up. High inside 50. Cameron! Too easy. It was all on his own. No pressure at all. Takes the overhead mark and he's 45 out. A slight angle left of centre. Yeah, too easy, Spriggy. Too from one side of the ground to the other to have the open fat side and then have no defenders within a number of metres of him and take an easy mark. He'd be disappointed, Luke Beveridge. You don't often see teams kick that, but Geelong are willing to take that risk. A quick across goal, very shallow, and that was a dead set play. Um, great kick by Tui and found his, found his forward. And he's two behind so far tonight, Jeremy Cameron, on his preferred left side, thumps it through. <laughs> Makes absolutely no mistake. Geelong get away again by nine points. 5 4 34 plays 4 1 25. That's the biggest score of the game so far, biggest margin of the game so far. Of course, it's the biggest score of the game so far. You don't go backwards. So it's a nine point break to Long's way. 16 go on second serve. Your experts, the Premiership players, Dean Brogan and Rod Jamison. You talk about Zach Tui, he's just. 273 games and 153 now for Geelong after his time at Carlton. Did sport the, the headband for a little while and Geelong now got about six or seven in there. Every time I look at Aaron yeah. Norton, he reminds me of like Vetus Gerolitis. Remember him, <laughs> the, the left-hander, the tennis player? Oh, it, it does look very tennessee with it does, the, the, the blonde locks and the headband. It's pretty fashionable these days. Yeah, I don't have that problem. <laughs> Low maintenance, Jamie. Yeah, I'm, I'm rolling with that. Brogues, headband. Oh, no, I'm not a massive fan. But if, you, if you can grow the hair and have one, why not? Well, Liberatore's got the tattoos, and he kicks it inside 50. A mark will be taken here. It'll be paid to the Western Bulldogs, and Eugle Hagen will have it. Quick clearance from the centre from the Western Bulldogs. Eugle Hagen holding the footy 50 metres out, 45-degree angle. You're a fan of a, the buns, was, are you? The, the, the man, man bun. bun? They're pretty popular as well. Oh, they are. Almost as popular as headbands. More popular, actually. Would you wear or I'd rock one of those I'd if you could? I'd rock one of those. <laughs> so, Eugle Hagen launches on the left boot. 50 metres out. It's offline. Mark can't be taken on the boundary line. Waitman can hand pass it away. Stewart collects. He gets tackled. The umpire will blow his whistle. Come in. Will it be a free kick rewarding the Western Bulldogs? Yes. So, Waitman with that intent inside 50 doing the tackling, and now he'll get a shot on goals. Yeah, pressure really good from the Western Bulldogs. Incorrect disposal, I think, was what it's been called for. Sam Darcy is the recipient. Going for number two, the big fella. Great tackle. Great tackle. Yeah, He, Tom he looks Stewart. good, doesn't he? Tom Stewart came back inside, off the ground. So Darcy, the recipient of the free kick. 15 metres out, toughish ankle. Angle. Slots it through for his second of the day. And that margin comes back to three points, still in favour of the Cats. It's Geelong 5-4-34, Western Bulldogs 5-1-31. Well, you don't see Tom Stewart make too many mistakes, but Geelong and Tom Stewart's back line made a mistake there. When Hugo Hagen had that shot, they should have punched that ball through for a behind. But they did a soft drop at the front of the goals, and Tom Stewart just gets caught by well, the big fella, great tackle. You love to see your big six foot ten, six foot nine ruckman. If you're gonna play in the forward line, you've got to tackle, no matter how tall or how small you are. And he he looks really lively up there, and I've been super impressed with his game to date. And uh, he's got a big future, this kid. He's kicked two and he looks dangerous. When the footy came to ground, it was like five on one or five on two. The pressure was immense by the Bulldogs. So long by three points. Great to have your company via ABC Sport as Gather Round rolls on this. Main stage level header at Adelaide Oval. Back at the restart. Came down to Liberatore. Hurried hand pass to Trelaw. Turned blind away from Stanley. He was run down, in fact, too high. So, free kick for the Bulldogs. No advantage paid. It comes back to Trelaw, who's averaging 
30 disposals in his past 10 games. 35 against the Eagles last week, Adam Trelaw. Drives it long inside, forward 50 here for the Bulldogs. Up into two on two. Norton at the back, gave a shove. Has the ball in hand. Floats a hand pass at Liberatore. Takes Brad Close head on. Got a hand pass away under pressure. Ewell Hagen can't trap the footy. In there is Bowes for the Cats. Got it away to Atkins. Shrugs a tackle. Shares it away here. Gets it back. They can rebound the football off half back Geelong with a kick now to Dempsey. It was nice work from Holmes to find Dempsey. And from the logo, Dempsey loads up inside 50. Karmas up in front. Can't mark this time. It fell to Stengel. He was tackled. Got a hand pass away. Now it's with Ollie Henry. Straightens up from the pocket. Goes up to the top of the square. Tui is there in the contest. It was spoiled away. At the drop. Daniel there for the Bulldogs. Runs out of room. And we'll throw it back in, will we? Will the umpire was thinking about it. Uh, so a throw in front of the scoreboard in that old pocket in front of the cathedral at the cathedral end of the ground and it's the Cats who lead by three points as we approach Tom on here in the second turn. So that hill packed at the moment as well. A few seats still available but it looks like the hill is the place to be. It's got to be all the 40, 45,000. Toss back in. Hawkins can hand pass it to Clark. He'll have a kick towards the hot spot. Jack Henry can't mark. Hand pass to Dempsey and he gets a boot on it. It's a goal. The umpire will come in now and check and we'll probably have a score review. Dempsey, while he was falling, looked like he was just able to get one of his pink boots onto it. We'll go upstairs to have a check. I can't see why it wouldn't be and why the umpire would consider it not to be a goal. The pressure was good. I think from Bramble, he's been swung around. He's got it onto his boot. What's he saying? Him? Might have hit the post. He's Definitely doesn't look like it's hit the post at all. No. Should be a goal to Ollie Dempsey, it is. So Ollie Dempsey gets one tonight. Geelong's lead now nine points. 6 4 40. Western Bulldogs 5 1 31. 20 minutes gone, second term. Well, they were slow to get going. The ball is kicked two before Geelong had scored, and they've worked their way back into it with three goals in this quarter. Now to Dempsey. Also to Holmes and Jeremy Cameron. He just got goal side of his opponents. Uh, Dempsey, um, you know, in your back 50, you can't let, um, you know, your opponent get goal side of you, especially from, you know, 0 to 20 out, which Dempsey did there. So they'd be really disappointed, the dog. He's just got themselves back in the game, and they give themselves give away a cheap goal there. It's uh, really disappointing. There's a development in that Jeremy Finlayson story as well. The accusations of a homophobic slur used against Essendon last night. The development will bring you the latest on that at half time. Meanwhile, Geelong with that nine point lead, the biggest margin of the game so far. Equal biggest. They start back in the middle. Trelaw judged it well. Hand pass off to Gallia. Tumbles it back up the line here for the Bulldogs towards half. Uh, forward, but Atkins, his kick was smothered that time by Oscar Baker. Dogs on the overlap, they go again. Gallagher off here again to Sanders. Spilled it now, it's mopped up by Blitz Arms. Be careful, Mark. He was almost run down by Baker, as was to Coney. Got the hand pass away out of Parfit. Parfit, they go off half back again. Myers towards half forward, fighting across the back, Duraya. And it's off hands and over for a throw in, attacking the side of the wing on the western side of Adelaide Oval. Geelong leads 6 4 40, plays the Western Bulldogs 5 1 31. 23 gone here in the second term on ABC Sport. Second edition of Gather Round. Both these sides have only played at the Adelaide Oval, though. Never gone out to Mount Parker or Norwood just yet as Bowes kicks off the ground towards half forward for Geelong, but Duray picks it off and marks it for the Western Bulldogs. Ooh. His kick is offline. It gives Baker enough space, though, to pick it up under pressure to get his kick away. Bounces once and Ewell Hagen tries to take it on the volley. Can't. Dempsey's there for Geelong. He'll hand pass to Stanley, who hand passes as he's falling. Dempsey picks it up and flicks it back to Colin Jasney, who kicks down the line. Holmes will have to chase after it now in a foot race with Ed Richards. Richard gets a hand to it and just pushes it over the boundary line. 55 metres out from Geelong's goal is where we'll have a throw in. It's Geelong ahead by nine points. Yeah, Geray's had a couple of sloppy kicks like that, haven't they? Just put his teammate under pressure, and at this level, you've just got to hit that kick. And now the Bulldogs should be going inside 50. Now they're defending in their back 50. Dangerous half forward. Brad Close only had the three disposals. Hasn't scored as yet. Geelong by nine points. Big bump from Bailey Dale on Stingle. Stingle got loose, though, as it's come to Sanders. Back to Trelaw. Just... Uh, Kicks hurriedly up the line here, and it goes out about deliberate. Now, that is a bit stiff. 
Uh, but Duncan brings it back in here for Geelong. Goes inside Ford 50 on as the lead down there, where it is marked by Bose 40 out on the 45 degree angle. I'm not sure what else Shalor could have done. He was in congestion and just put it on the boot. And an there was, bounce. There's a couple of players there that could have made it a contest. So, um, yeah, the way the rule is, they're, they're pretty hot on it, aren't they, this weekend, well, through the first month of the season. You look for certain themes, don't you, in officiating, especially at a weekend such as this, with all the games so close together. Jack Bowes kicked the first goal of the game. He lines up the set shot here for number two. And he drills it home. The Cats extend to a new game high lead of 15 points, 7 4 46. The Bulldogs are 5 1 31 as we approach half time Adelaide Oval. This is Gather Round on ABC Sport. Yeah, well, as good as Harvey Gallagher has been, I think Luke Beveridge would be really disappointed with that. Mitch Duncan got that free after they deemed it to be deliberate. He had his back to Mitch Duncan then. Mitch Duncan was then able to just run off the line and then lace out. Jack Bowes on that occasion. They're the small things and the real critical things, and particularly deep into a second quarter or deep in any quarter, just to allow him to run off and then pinpoint a, a teammate up. It'd be really disappointing. So, yeah, DeLong was just a bit sharper. As soon as they knew it was their free kick, you know, Bulldogs were slow, arguing with their umpire a little bit. Duncan just plays on and hits a 15 minute bullet pass, uncontested mark, and a uh, great finish. Um, Geelong uh, back out to 15 points. Um, over to you, Bulldogs. Normally they kick a goal now. Let's see what they do. It's Stanley who punches away the first bounce, but almost went at right angles, so the ball will come back. The umpire will throw it up again in the centre circles at Adelaide Oval. Chris Stanley's dominated the hit-outs. He's had 20 to Tim English, 11. Hit-outs to advantage, five apiece. And the clearance work, Libertore starting to get into the game. We'll go again. It was Stanley who punches it down towards Bruin. All players on the turf here, right in the centre of the ground until it comes up. It'll be a tackle from Bontempalli that'll stop play. Clark throwing the ball back to the umpire. Ball up just outside the two centre circles, middle of Adelaide Oval. Myers tries to control the footy. He can't. Trelaw can pick it up, kick the Western Bulldogs to half forward. It'll bounce in front of Eugel Hagen. He's only got one hand to work with. Can get a, tick, a kick away. Waitman there, hand passes it in the Trelaw direction. Kicks off uh, the ground, then Parfit picks it up. Long kick forward to try and get Geelong to half forward. It's all in a tangle. Players jumping over the footy. Johannesson on the ground this time. And players will surround the footy. Wait for the umpire to come in and toss the ball up in the centre square. Latter stages of this second half. It's Geelong leading by 15. Up it goes. Slapped to the outside by Geelong. And now Dempsey has the tackle on the Pretoria and the follow-up off half forward. It comes by hand to Parfit from Jai Clark. Clark can just chip it away towards the pocket. Back with a flight, Jeremy Cameron. Now, equally big Jones coming the other way, and Jeremy Cameron takes the chest mark in front of the scoreboard, facing his own attacking goal, and he'll take a kick on the angle here from that right forward pocket. It's just Jai Clark, really good under pressure. Brandon Parfit, too, fought their way through it. How do you leave Jeremy Cameron on his own? We'll open up the angle here on his preferred left side, Jeremy Cameron. Slow start tonight with a couple of behinds. Here he is for his second goal. It's across the face. 7-5-47. The Cats lead the Bulldogs 5-1-31. 28 now on his second turn. One goal three tonight and one goal two in this quarter. Richards brings the ball in. Kicks it to Johannesson. He kicks it outside of 50. Looking for Karmas. Couldn't take the mark. Fell over. Geelong will go back inside 50 here. Via Cameron. Kicks to the goal square. He was looking for Jack Henry. It was punched through though. I think they're going to review it. You know, I don't think he really killed it that much. He may have got his hand to it. And Liam Jones feels comfortable that that's the case. Jack Henry didn't seem to go up either at all to celebrate. It's actually hard to see. We're looking at a replay here in the box. And I don't know that is. This is the terrible part of the game. that is just so grainy and did it hit the scene. Did it hit the post? Oh, what are they reviewing? Close to the matting around the post. You can see a spike on edge as the ball passed the post. Okay. Decision on the scoreboard. So and faintly has nicked the post. Schnicko. Luckily for uh, the Western Bulldogs because they absolutely had a mare there and missed the spoil, so thank God for the post. Uh, they've really just switched off the Bulldogs the last five, six minutes. Missing tackles, turnover kicks. They're not finishing off this quarter very well at all. 
Had Geelong look like they're ready to kick another one or two going into half time. 17 points that margin. Quick kick out. Arrives to Richards. Moves around Brad close. Spears his pass up the outer wing. On the half volley. It's gathered here. And again trying to make it work was Max Holmes. And now a tackle. And holding the ball. Liberatore. And got a hold of Jai Clark. He's been so good, Liver. He's been really good for the Bulldogs. 15 to 5 inside 50s to Geelong this quarter. New contract recently for Liberatore. Baker. Gives a hand pass off, gets it back as well. He's inside the time he gets there. Hands it off here again from the pocket. A snap and all the way home from Riley West. No, he misses. Oh. A minor score. Scrub that one. And the Dogs making something of that kick out though. 5-2-32 the Bulldogs. They trail Geelong to a 7-6-48 as we approach the half hour mark. Stewart just bombs it out of Geelong's defence towards De Koning, But they were close to the boundary line and again they'll see it over. And we'll have a throw in this time in front of the Mark Rusciuto stand. Really important for the Bulldogs just to lock down here. There couldn't be too long to go in the quarter, and you wouldn't want Geelong to go coast to coast and get another goal. And uh, you know, to go in a couple of goals down at half time, they'll probably take that at this point. So ball now tossed in English. Gets a hand over Stanley. Clark holds onto the footy, falls to ground for Geelong. He's wrapped up in a tackle. And we'll have. Another ball up, still the outer side of Adelaide Oval, just outside the centre square, Geelong leading by 16. And on the stoppage, Norton gets to it, hand pass releases, Bramble almost run down by a close, he was pushed off the kick, goes up to a contest, spoiled away, and now the much bigger man blitz arms on Daniel. Bramble trust keep it alive here for the Bulldogs, into the back was Bruin, and the umpire says that's balled up. Well, that's where he was going to go, Spriggy 2, just... Tim English only had the one disposal in this quarter. 14 to 8 hitouts in favour of Geelong. Ball up 45 from goal. Gallagher shrugs one tackle. It's some kind of kick away. It trickles towards full forward. Bontempelli is there, tangled up with Stewart. De Koning in the pocket, tries to just heap it away. And now Waitman and Bontempelli in a two-man tackle wrap up the ball carrier down there in Holmes. Will ball up again. Deep at left, full forward for the Bulldogs. Who trail by 16 points. Can they hit back as we approach halftime? It's tapped out of bounds for a throw-in. Yeah, look, coming into the game, you think, uh, you know, English would, would have Stanley's number, but Stanley's been really good on him tonight. He just seems too strong for him at the moment and dominating the hit-outs, like you said, Jamo, and um, English normally gets a lot more footy than this. Luke Beveridge will be looking for half-time very quickly. Here they are, Stanley and English going at it. Ball comes down, it's Bruin who wins it, so it'll be Geelong winning the clearance as well. Out to the outer side of the ground. Chasing after it is Jack Henry, along with Joe Hannison. It'll be Karmas who can pick it up for the Western Bulldogs. Hand passes it away to Richards. Shoves a kick forward. Path it there for Geelong. Hand passes back towards Clark. He's taken in a tackle by Waitman. Holding the ball. Play on. Trelaw picks it up. Kicks it towards goals for the Western Bulldogs. It's off to the left-hand side. And Marcus Bontempelli says, I was there as well. You could have kicked it across to me. But just the one point... For the Western Bulldogs margin now 15 points in favour of Geelong. Chalor had to kick that to Bontempelli. He was one out and Chalor kicks on his left from 50 metres running into a goal. Yeah, but no wonder why the bomb was spewing. Voice of Premiership player Dean Bogan on ABC Sport alongside Rod Jamison, your experts this evening. On that flank of the outer side, Richard scrapping for it. Umpire hovering, let's board up. I'll read your text at half time 0437 774 774. And news out of last night's game that Jeremy Finlayson was accused of making a homophobic slur to an Essendon opponent. Umpire says play on here. It was a free kick for a holder. But Torre goes high towards the paint of 50. Bontempelli missed it. Worked away from Norton. Back to Bontempelli. Into Riley West, who's goal side by himself. And he slams it home. This time he kicks the goal. And the Bulldogs do close the gap as we approach the major break. They're 6 3 39 Trailing Geelong, who was 7 6 48, with about a minute left in this second term on ABC Sport. Well, just when I thought Western Bulldogs were having a, a bit of a switch off five, six minutes, they must have listened to us here in the, in the box because their last couple of minutes have been sensational. And again, Liberatore just getting his hands on it from a clearance and a, a jump ball forward. And guess who gets it? Bontempelli. The vision, like three Geelong players come at him and he just does a loopy handball to West who, who stayed at home. His man came across the impact, didn't impact. And sometimes that works for him, sometimes it doesn't. But the Bont just, 
is in everything at the moment. And, you know, that's why Chalor had to keep that ball to him before because the man's on fire. So get the ball to Bond, get out of the way. I think Mitch Duncan will be disappointed with that too. He almost, he should have taken the mark or he allowed it to bounce. Enough time left in this quarter for either side to score. Parfit from the middle tries to get a clearing kick for Geelong. Blitzhalves will have to run out across it. Still in the centre square of Adelaide Oval. Blitzhalves is tackled in game 250 and he'll come up from the bottom of the pack. So ball tossed up late in the second term. Liberatore can try and funnel out a hand pass towards Myers. He was pushed in the back and he'll gain the free kick. Said 16 disposals lost. 13 of those are contested. So Liberatore kicks out wide. He finds Jure. Long kick inside 50 for the Western Bulldogs. Jure seems like he knows how much time's left. It's De Koning who's there for Geelong. Gets tackled to ground. It'll be locked in here now. Inside forward 50 for the Western Bulldogs. Trailing by nine. Had a long, couple of long quarters so far this game. It goes English for the outside. Duncan sockers it forward here for the Cats. Miss Stengel and Richards up against the boundary line in front of the Foss Williams stand and it will be thrown back in. The dying seconds of the first half on ABC Sport. Good crowd in. It's been just an electric day both in the Adelaide Hills where the Swans beat West Coast and Carlton beat Fremantle here in the earlier game. Umpire heaves it back in. English playing in front of Stanley. Parfit there for the Cats. Knocked it toward the outer side. Further still before Richards is beaten by the halftime siren here. So again, this seesawing encounter continues. The margin did get to a game high. 17 points Geelong's way. The Bulldogs having kicked uh, the most recent major of the game. It's the Cats by nine points. 7-6-48 plays the Western Bulldogs. 6-3-39. So a nine-point break uh, uh, at the halftime break for Geelong. The goal kickers in the game so far. I'll start with the Cats. Jack Bowes who kicked the first goal of the game. He has two singles to Jeremy Cameron, Max Holmes, Tyson Stengel, Ollie Dempsey and Zach Guthrie. While for the Western Bulldogs, Sam Darcy kicked his second in that second quarter with uh, singles to Jamara Ewell-Hagen, Cody Waitman, Harvey Gallagher and Riley West, the most recent of them. Nine points the margin here. Your experts at halftime are premiership players Rod Jamison and Dean Brogan. Well, it's a it's a really um, a goal for goal. It, like it goes in waves, doesn't it? Oh, I mean, there's been a few times where I've said the Bulldogs look like they've switched off, and then all of a sudden they kick two in a row or they bounce back. Um, it's a real arm wrestle at the moment. I'm looking at the stats here in front of me, Jamo, and there's not a lot separating the teams. I mean, Bulldogs have had the ball a little bit more, and clearances are pretty even, and, you know, the only real discrepancy is the hit-outs. And then, you know, that that doesn't influence the game uh, that too much. So I, I just think that the Bulldogs, when they go inside 50, have been a little bit wasteful compared to Geelong. Geelong look like a they're a little bit more dangerous when they go a little bit forward. But, look... Um, Bulldogs midfield is getting on top. You know, Bontempelli is, at, is the best man on the ground at the moment. Trelaw's had 21. Liberatore's had 17. Eight clearances, 14 contested possessions. If they keep dominating this game like that, you think the Bulldogs would nudge their way in front. But Geelong just seem to find a way, don't they? I think in the second part of that quarter, is the, or the Bulldogs early, and then Geelong worked their way back into it. Tackles inside forward, 58 to the Western Bulldogs and four to Geelong. Again, the, just the ability for Geelong to quickly get from one end of the ground to the other and score. The Western Bulldogs tried to do that in the second quarter. So I think that was a real change from the first to the second. And you've still got a number of players on both sides that do have a significant impact on the game when they get hold of the football, haven't been able to do it. So Brad Close has only had the three. He hasn't scored. You know, talk about Waitman. He's only had the three, two with the one goal. And he looks dangerous, but... You know, some significant players that are still just haven't had enough of it at the moment. But the usual suspects, Trelaw, Bonapelli, Liberatore. Liberatore just doesn't know how to get an easy football, does he? He just keeps getting the hard ones all the time too. And Brian Myers dropped away a little bit. He didn't seem to have that much of an impact in that second, but he's still at 13. And Tanner Brune, for me, he's really played a pretty solid, consistent first half of half of football and whilst uh, Tom Stewart's had the 11 I don't feel he's had the impact like he has had on other games so they're really mindful of, of clearly why and how he should play so no it's the it's the hit outs is the one at the moment if you just again go back to the the clearance work 
Liberatore's had eight. Parfitt's had six. Bonapelli with the five. But the first possession, Liberatore. So he's getting his hand on it now and he's starting to use the football. And maybe that's how Western Baller has got back into the game. 0437 774 774. Your text shortly. Anything to add there, Brogues, just before we break for news? No, look, it's... It, it's it's a really arm wrestle of a game, is it? Which is what yeah. we thought, you know, in our pre-game that it's going to be a it's, it's a heavyweight game. Both teams, it's a lot riding on this game. But um, I, I I just see the Bulldogs midfield starting to get on top, and when they do get on top, like they did in that last five minutes, they start to um, get on a bit of a run. So I think Geelong will be concerned a little bit about um, their midfielders aren't touching the ball enough, um, and over the course of four quarters, that will get you in the end. Um, they, you know, Bontempelli is absolutely destroying this game with Trelaw, and, and as we said, Libertore is, um, you know, really dominating uh, in the contested possession of clearances. Uh, just on that game last night, so Port Adelaide for Jeremy Finlayson. This is Port Adelaide's statement, by the way, in response to what we saw earlier, what we heard earlier about the investigation into an alleged homophobic slur. Uh, Port's statement says that Jeremy Finlayson has admitted to making homophobic slur against Essendon last night during the third quarter. Uh, a contrite Finlayson made the club aware during the three-quarter time break and apologised to the target or the victim on field after the final siren last night. Finlayson, uh, who will be now counselled by club leaders in the coming days, will write a statement tomorrow, and the club will now wait for the AFL to complete that investigation. So there you go, that's being dealt with, um, and we'll, uh, we'll recap all that a little bit later on uh, anyway, as far as that news out of last night's game. 0437 774 774. Hi guys, loving the call. Absolutely loved the Aladoval roof climb when I did it back in December. Fantastic experience. There's Margaret who is age 71 from Melbourne. Uh, Marcus in South Melbourne watching the dogs and cats playing on the home of the mighty South Adelaide Panthers. Uh, Nat Fife touched the ball before it then bounced off Aisha's bicep in reference to the uh, earlier Carlton Freo game. That is why Dockers fans are peeved. He says Geelong to win this game in a canter. That's when the review should happen. That's We've got that technology yeah. to be able to do it and you can just shut the game down for 30 seconds or a minute. At that critical time, it costs Fremantle but a we, game. But we don't have reviews for in play. No. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we should yeah, be yeah, able yeah. to that's do that. They should right. bring in but last the three minutes. You get, get one challenge. Because they have it in the NBA and um, other sports, you get a challenge. Coaches yeah. get a challenge. In NFL, you throw something on the ground, Rugby you get a challenge. Yeah. So maybe that's something they need to look at because uh, you wouldn't want to lose a final like that. Uh, team Freer may well have lost that game. Just tied up on the Freer game. Uh, but it's sad to see such a great arm wrestle recited because the umpires wanted to make it all about them in the final few minutes, says Freer Cookster. Uh, Lachlan from Footscray, uh, got a, I love a tea towel, I love a bottle. While well, the bottle is attractive <laughs> to me, and commentators obviously, not surprised a professional athlete chooses the tea towel. I don't think anyone's ever accused Clint Wilder being a professional athlete. Um, least of all, Clint himself. Uh, but that's on the subject of merchandise. He looked like a lawn bowler when he left here. Lachlan says, go the Roos. Hat. He does, he does wear the hat, yes. Uh, congratulations, crew. You summed up Gather Round, a merchandising event, nothing to do with reconciliation, says Mel and Bundy. Well, it's not wholly that reconciliation in it in a First Nations sense. That's kind of part of bringing people together, of course. That's that's all a very good thing anyway, but no one's pretending it's, it's about that specifically. It's more... I mean, the merchandise is obviously... It's a big commercial event, and it's not a themed round. I think people confuse Gather Round for a themed round. It's more... It's actually a concept. It's an entirely different event. Uh, naturally, merchandise is a big part of it. So, uh, Mal, that's just my view. Um, Marcus in South Melbourne says, I seem to remember uh, Jamo standing Chris Grant of the Bulldogs in a very famous finals match, yes? Mm, yes, 97. Uh, yep, 97 prelim. Is that what he's referring That's to? correct, yes. Uh, sorry, Dogs fans. Uh, I had lunch there like 15 years later, and they still... I didn't get a really nice reception when I was on the board at Adelaide when I walked into our Western Bulldog lunch. Um, that happens. Well, well, yeah. The, and the, the following the, year. The scars take it. How, what year was that? In 97, 98. Yeah, so but what year was the function? 97. Oh, no. It was like 2008 or... Oh, I was going to oh, say, yeah, that, like, I think the flag they've won since might paper over a few of those scars from the late 90s, but yeah, that was a well, couple of bad years. To be there. fair, I actually called that game, and I just, yeah, that was tough. Uh, Jamo, enjoy the gather round while you can. The following year, well, it's actually got two more years after this one, it will be coming home to the true home of footy, WA, uh, says Graham at Up WA, some great grounds within an hour of Perth. Um, well, yeah, two more years here, potentially it could go to Perth. They'll be putting their hat in the ring, I'm sure. 
Uh, one correspondent suggests that Bottas Geraldotis might have fallen a foul of the AFL's IDP. Um, I think that, yeah, that was a sort of a known thing. Uh, Cat's poor four entries uh, really cost them, says Bill. Alfred thinks we're having to go out the umpires in reference to the Carlton game. Well, not so much that. There will be a storyline out of that, which is that Carlton or Frio felt butted by the umpires. I'm not having to go out the umpires myself, but we can clearly see the ball was touched, and that'll be a talking point. Touched and it was given a mark. Went back and had a shot on goal. Um, anyway, Andrew and St Kilda. Actual score, he's asked for, I gave it before, 7 6 48 to 6 3. 39 is the half time score, and uh, your texts remain welcome throughout the rest of the evening. 0437 774 774. It's the Cats by nine points at half time at Adelaide Oval after earlier Carlton beat Freo and the Swans over at West Coast. More on all of that shortly, right now. Time for ABC News. This is ABC News with David Rowlands. There's a nervous wait in Sydney's northwest to see whether the Rinza Bridge spanning the flood affected Hawkesbury River will close. While last night's torrential rain stopped this morning, some communities across northwest Sydney are still affected, with the Hawkesbury and Nepean rivers rising this evening. The Bureau of Meteorology says major flooding is likely tonight at North Richmond, with moderate flooding already occurring at Windsor and Putty Road. The Mayor of Hawkesbury Council, Sarah McMahon, says if Windsor, Windsor Bridge does close, it'll make travel difficult for communities on the western side. So Richmond Bridge is looking at about 12 metres, Windsor 10.5, Sackville 7 and Lower Portland 4.6 metres. So we'll wait to see if they eventuate. We're just sitting right now and waiting to see if Windsor Bridge does close. Foreign Minister Penny Wong is suggesting it's too early to be demanding criminal charges be laid against Israeli Defence Force personnel who are responsible for a deadly airstrike on an aid convoy in Gaza. Seven aid workers were killed in the attack, including Australian woman Zomi Franklin. The IDF has dismissed two officers and reprimanded another three as a result of a preliminary investigation into the incident. The Polish Foreign Ministry, Ministry says criminal liability needs to be considered and Senator Wong was asked if she agrees. I'm not ruling anything in or out. Uh, that would be a, a question as to whether the facts merited that. Uh, and what I would say is appropriate action should be taken. The facts need to be ascertained. And once the facts are ascertained, uh, appropriate action needs to be taken. Police in Taiwan suspect that dash cam footage could help them locate a missing Australian Singaporean couple who haven't been seen since this week's devastating earthquake. North Asia correspondent James Oten has more. Australian Singaporean dual nationals Neo Siu Chu and Sim Hui Kok have been missing since this week's devastating earthquake. Police say the married couple were staying in Hualien City near the epicentre. On the day of the quake, they boarded a bus that went inside a national park. The bus driver is stuck at a recreational area, but the couple reportedly got off the bus earlier in the trip. Police are now trying to get to the bus and access its dash cam footage. James Oton, ABC News. Iranian police say they've arrested a senior operative of the Islamic State group and two other group members. They're accused of planning a suicide attack during next week's celebrations to mark the end of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. The police say the operative, known as Ramesh, and the other two group members were arrested west of the capital, Tehran. IS has claimed responsibility for two explosions that killed nearly 100 people at a memorial event in January in Iran. Back home and authorities are investigating a crash north of Brisbane that's left three people critically injured. Jay Bowman reports. Police were called to Gympie Arterial Road at Bald Hills at about half past 11 last night after reports a car had veered off the road. The vehicle had crashed through a wire fence before hitting a tree. Paramedics treated a man and two women, all aged in their 70s, at the scene. Both women were taken to the Royal Brisbane and Women's Hospital in a critical condition with multiple serious injuries. The man was also taken to hospital in a critical condition with chest pain. Still in Queensland and a teenage boy has been airlifted to hospital after a skimboarding accident on Morton Island this afternoon. A rescue helicopter was called to the island just after three o'clock local time. Paramedics treated him at the scene for a suspected broken leg before airlifting him to hospital. 
Turning to sport and in AFL, Sydney has managed to hold off an inspired West Coast outfit, beating the Eagles by 26 points in the Adelaide Hills this afternoon as gather round continued. The breeze played a major factor in the outcome, with the teams trading the lead before the final break. The Swans eventually overcame the Eagles to prevail 104 to 78. Taylor Adams played his first game for the Swans after being traded from, Carl, uh, from Collingwood rather in the off-season and said his side loved the chance to play in the Adelaide Hills. We love Gather Round. We really embrace coming over here a couple of days early and getting amongst, amongst the community. And It's nice to walk away with, with four points. Obviously, their, their win-loss record isn't great at the moment, but they're, they're a really competitive team with some star players in their, in their lineup. We certainly weren't underestimating what we're going to get. And Carlton came from behind with two late goals to edge out Fremantle, 73-63 to in today's other completed Gather Round game at Adelaide Oval. For all those yearnings for truly outstanding entertainment... I have an idea of what might cheer you up. ..you'll find a trove of Academy Award winning and nominated films on ABC iView. Let's play. Like Imitation Game. It's beautiful. American Sniper, Her and Spotlight. There's a story here and I think it's an important story. Brooklyn, Carol and so many more. Bon appétit. Always free, always outstanding on ABC iView. You're listening to the AFL Gather Round. AFL. On radio. ABC Sport Digital. And take us with you on the ABC Listen app. Joe Hannison flares it across the middle of the ground here for Bradley Dale. He can look at the options. Balks around close. Goes down the corridor again where it's marked by Sam Darcy. 40 out directly in front. Sam Darcy lines up from 45 to close the gap. Back to a two-point game. And his teammates come from everywhere. He's having a strong year so far, Sam Darcy. English from behind on Stanley. Sanders burst through here. That's a couple of... Which way is he going? Going the wrong <laughs> way! Wrong way, Riley. That's going to be on every highlight reel at about uh, 11 o'clock tonight. Johannesson goes to find Aaron Norton, 55 from goal. Goes down the pipe again. Jamara Eugle Hagen reaches up, takes the overhead mark. At his 22nd birthday on Thursday, Jamara Eugle Hagen. He lines up the set shot and makes no mistake. The lead swings again. Bulldogs back in front. Full hand pass to Ollie Dempsey inside 50. To flick it back out to Holmes. Holmes will set it up this time right to the goal square. It might go through it'll go all the way. Holmes kicking it to the hot spot, sneaks it through for one of his own. And Geelong wrestle back the lead. A veteran Irishman, 200 gamer, loads up. High inside 50. Cameron! Too easy. It was all on his own. And he's two behind so far tonight, Jeremy Cameron. On his preferred left side, thumps it through. <laughs> Makes absolutely no mistake. Toss back in. Hawkins can hand pass it to Clark. He'll have a kick towards the hot spot. Jack Henry can't mark. Hand pass to Dempsey. He gets a boot on it. It's a goal. Duncan brings it back in here for Geelong. Goes inside Ford 50. On as the lead down there where it is marked by Bowes. Jack Bowes kicked the first goal of the game. He lines up the set shot here for number two. And he drilled it home. Bonton Pelly missed it. Works away from Norton, back to Bonson Kelly, into Riley West, who's goal side by himself, and he slams it home. The 2024 AFL Gather Round. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Yeah, what about playing? At Adelaide Oval, second half not too far away, where Geelong leads the Western Bulldogs 7-6-48 to 6-3-39. Earlier, the Sydney Swans beat West Coast by 26 points. That was 15 14, 104 to 11, 12, 78. Isaac Heaney had 26 disposals and two goals. Errol Gordon had 25 and two goals. Liam Duggan, that all comes with 50 disposals for West Coast. While then at this ground, Adelaide Oval, Carlton beat Fremantle by 10 points, 10, 13 to 9, 9. Charlie Kernow kicked three goals too. Matt Cottrell kicked two goals, including the winner. In controversial circumstances, Andy Brayshaw had 38 disposals as well. Carlton still unbeaten. It was their first ever win at this ground as well. Can you believe that? The state game, what was that, 40 points? 14. So 14 South Australia, points. yep. So oh. it was 10 5 65. So it was the BFL versus the SANFL yep. and the men's. And it was played down at Glenelg Oval today. So South Australia 10 5 65, defeated Victoria 7 9 51. 14 points. And I think I'm right in saying they've won like eight in a row now. Yes. Well, the, 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 the Vicks can the state game for a while. They said we were having, weren't yep. having state games. It's a nice little thing to have. That was at Glenelg, wasn't it? To sort of yep. add it to the 
the carnival atmosphere of, uh, of this event gather around. But uh, anyway, uh, at Barry's request, I do try and get a few other sports involved. In the NRL today, the Warriors beat South Sydney 34 points to 4. Uh, Manly Warringah beat the Penrith Panthers 32 points to 18. And the Dolphins, uh, a short time ago, were beaten the West Tigers at Lang Park in Brisbane 26 to 16. A-League men full-time. Uh, West United 4 beat MacArthur FC 2. Uh, Central Coast Mariners 2 beat Wellington 1. And Melbourne Victory have beaten Melbourne City in the derby there 2-1. The scoreline there as well. Now, I caught from a distance yesterday, was there someone that debuted in NRL and was like 200 and something centimetres? Yes, he was the tallest player ever. This was... A, this was yeah. I did the game in Newcastle last night. I'm trying to think. It wasn't in my game. But maybe it was in the south of the, uh, the Canterbury and the Sydney Roosters game. Yeah, I just saw something from a distance. 200. 200 and, yes, and they're, they're big they're big lads. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, Brett Sprigg alongside Lauren Borden. That's Rod Jamison alongside Dean Bogan. Both are experts. The Premiership players here on ABC Sport with this uh, second half not too far away. You can keep your text coming. 0437 774 774. Um, someone asked before, what's the key to having back-to-back games? Is it the presets, Brogues? Is that the key to having back-to-back games? Because they do have long gaps between games, unlike other codes where generally they get on, on with things pretty quickly. Um, having the presets do a little sort of 15-minute set was a nice yeah, treat. It was really cool, wasn't it? Well, yeah. well done by the AFL. I mean, I've been trying to catch the presets all around Australia for years. and just Free, come, free come, concert. Come together here and then commentate for ABC and get in for free and watch it for free. But... Um, Look, uh, look, looking forward to this second half. Um, I think both coaches should be pretty happy with patches of what their team's been able to produce. And I think it's a team that's going to be a bit bolder with their ball movement and, and change angles and go a little bit quicker and be a little bit more efficient inside 50. Jamo, what are you expecting from the second half? Well, again, I think the Western Bulldogs are just trying to work. They're working their way into it, but they're working harder to score. So they've somehow got to get the footy in a little quicker than what they're moving and the alternative, they've got to be able to defend Geelong who are moving it quick. So we know Geelong will continue to play their style. Western Bulldogs just need some help around the middle of the ground. Libertore is running all the hard footy. Into the second half we go on ABC Sport. You're with Lauren Borden. Geelong ahead by nine points heading into the second half. Stanley in English back in the ruck. Stanley eyes on the footy. Puts it in the path of Bruin. Quick clearance away for Geelong. Inside 50 they go. Goes through the feet of Hawkins. He can't gather. Karmas is there. Trying to tap it away. Stengel as well for Geelong. Hand passes over the top of his head. Johannesson taps it away. It'll be the Bulldogs trying to get out here. Bontempalli hand passes it into the path of Gallagher. He'll work it along this western wing to Jamara Eugle haken who hand passes to Bontempalli. Keeps moving along the wing. Pinpoints to pass to, to Norton. Marks it left half forward. Norton a bit indecisive as he goes forward. Kicks it to a hot spot for the Western Bulldogs. Hugo Hagen flies. Can't take the mark. Latham Vandermeer pushes it away on the turf. It'll be Sanders with the footy wrapped up by Atkins. Means we'll have a ball up 30 metres out from the Western Bulldogs. Uh, attacking goals, kicking towards the Cathedral end. Geelong by nine points. No change to our halftime score. Norton traps it. Trying to release the hand pass here to Sanders wrapped up by Atkins. Thanks to Mikey and Benigo, who reminds me, it was Ben Takura from the Brisbane Broncos against the Storm on Thursday night. English out of the ruck here, snaps across the face of goal and it bounces into the behind post. So a boundary throw in in front of the old scoreboard at the northern end or Cathedral end of Adelaide Oval. As I say, Geelong 7-6 leads the Western Bulldogs 6-3. It's the Aaron Norton, he just came inside to kick on his right. He had Marcus Bonapelli on the left-hand side just handball and he would have had a shot on goal. So ball tossed in from the pocket. Liberatore running after it. Quick kick at goal. Slots it through. Early goal for the Western Bulldogs to start the second half. Margin quickly back to just three points. To start the third term. It's the Western Bulldogs 7-3-45. Trailing Geelong at 7-6-48. Your experts on ABC Sport, Rod Jamison and Dean Brogan. Well, we talk about the ruck duel in the first half and Stanley had English's number English would have got a little bit of a rocket from Brendan Lay who is the ruck coach that midfield coach and he's responded he's come out and he that's a great little got front spot hit it down to Liberatore 
in the Ford 50 and Liberatore is absolutely on everything that hits the ground around the contest at the moment and uh, that's a great start for the Bulldogs and you know Bontembele, Liberatore and English have really um, started to impose themselves again in the, on the start of this third quarter. I just think Tom Liberatore sort of epitomises everything about the Western Bulldogs doesn't he? He's back, superstar. Back to back goals either side of the half time break for the Bulldogs. English rises above Stanley, but Stanley follows up and wins the clearance. Off to the milestone man, Blitzarves. Two English ends up. There's a run down by Von Tempelli. The footy comes with him. Holding the ball. Advantage paid here for the Dogs. Thud clear by Vandermeer inside 50. A little too wide of a target. Whiteman traps it in the pocket. Shul slips over under pressure from Henry. And it goes uh, deliberate. So they've pinged a few tonight. And it'll be a kick in here with Jack Henry. He gave some pressure on Cody Waitman. It's the Cats who lead by three points. Jack Henry, long kick along the western wing towards the AFL logo. Ed Richards sits under it, drops the mark, can recover and kick, though, to the Western Bulldogs to half forward. Atkins going back, takes an easy chest mark, though, for Geelong. Seen a couple of the players just slip early in this third quarter, so maybe dewy and slippery conditions going to make it harder to be clean. It's Atkins now kicks it long down the wing. Ollie Henry sits at the back. Takes the mark, keeps running, hand pass in the path of Cameron. He hand passes to Grime Myers. He'll get it back now from Myers. Put a kick towards goals. No one gets in the way this time. Cameron with his second. And Geelong quickly get that response to push the margin back out to nine points. The Cats 8 6 54, Western Bulldogs 7 3 45. Four minutes gone in the third quarter. And that's the what the Western Bulldogs have to stop. I just cannot get the football from one end of the ground as quickly as that in which they're able to do. And two or three forward handballs, which the defence of the Western Bulldogs have to come forward to, to negate that. Well, the ball came over the bat. There was a long kick long down the line. That's got to be killed by the Western Bulldogs. It's got to go out of bounds and go for a stoppage. It doesn't. It goes over the back. And that's when, you're right, Jamo, that's when the Bulldogs are in trouble. When the ball gets out the back, Geelong is just too quick and too slick for them. And Cameron gets up the ground, loses his defender. And, you know, good luck stopping, stopping him running into a, into a goal, into an open goal with, with coming in waves, Geelong. Hawkins. 16 disposal. Sorry, Spriggy. Hawkins. With two goal four. Shepherding that goal on the... Uh through for Cameron, which is, uh, yeah, good luck getting past Tom Hawkins from the clearance here. Move it forward here, the Cats. Nice work on the entry from Jack Bowes. Myers snaps on goal himself. It's helped through by Bailey Dale for a minor score. So, Geelong attacking here, 8 7 55. The Bulldogs are 7 3 45. Liz Walsh on the boundary. Yeah, just about Jamo's comment before about a few players slipping over. Just having a look at the grass in front of me, there are definitely a few blades that are a bit sparkly there, so there might be some dew on the grass. Thanks, Liz. Obviously, the second game today as well as Adelaide Oval has been used across gather round since Thursday night. Western Bulldogs move it out to the wing. It'll be coming back now here from Geelong to Coning. Chips it forward to Myers. Left half forward. Stops and steadies himself. Finds Blitzarves. He can stop the footy. He can't pick it up, though. Quick hand pass to Colin Jasny. Hand pass to Close. He'll kick it. Goals now. Slots it through. Two quick goals in a row for Geelong. Brings the margin back out to 16 points. So it was a late goal from the Western Bulldogs late in that second term that brought it back to nine, back to three. And now it's all the way back out. 16 points, the advantage of Geelong. 9-7-61, Western Bulldogs, 7-3-45. Well, I've, I've liked Carlos' game a little bit tonight. He's taken a couple of good marks. I didn't know his name coming into the game tonight, but he's, he's definitely left an impression on me. But he'd be very disappointed in that. It was a missed tackle. In fact, it was a really bad missed tackle. And uh, you cannot miss tackles in your back 50 because that's what happens. Uh, you get goals kicked against you. So the young fellow will learn just to slow down and keep his opponent in front of him because you cannot miss tackles in the back 50. A lad from North Gambia via Glenelg. He right was. Close. Yes, premiership player at Glenelg. Always wore the long sleeve too. It does get a little chilly down at Mount Gambia, by the way. 16 points, Geelong's lead. Back in the middle. English towers over St- um, Blitzarves in the ruck. Work forward here, Stengel. Now comes the Parfit. Back to run of Blitzarves. He's 55. Closing with a finish. The milestone man. It's marked on the behind line. It's through for a minor score for Stengel could claim it. So it's now a 17 point lead. An equal game high margin here for the Cats. Seven going third term. So Ed Richards wanted to go quickly. Might be brought back to the goal square or. 
They're going to chat to the goal umpire again here. They're going to say Stingle may have taken the mark, or is it a behind? Is that, That's, uh, that was what I was wondering. So it looked like they were pretty sure had gone through for a point. They're going to check this and see if it was controlled by Tyson Stingle, or if it's, uh, yeah, if it's a mark or if it's a behind. Uh, I think it's well it's over like it's over. Yeah. Stengel probably poor. Well, Half metre nearly over. Well, why is that ball? being He's reviewed. almost on North Terrace Law. <laughs> I'm quite can see that that is clearly over. Yeah, it's a good time to just back the goal umpire's call. Just Because that seemed like the field umpire well, came in to behind. interrupt. Well, it's held, it's, held, it's held the Bulldogs up, and this, this plays into Geelong's advantage to set up their zone now. You know, it's a real disadvantage. Oh, would they call it a mark? Are they call it a mark. You're wow. kidding. Oh, that is a wow. Point. I think everyone here in this box was pretty sure oh, that, that was over the line. That was over the line. So, Tyson Stengel will resume here with a set shot from right on the behind line where he somehow claimed and was paid that mark. Stengel with a snap and the goal in close. Stengel second and a new game high lead for Geelong. Of 22 points. They're 10 7 67. The Bulldogs are 7 3 45. Nine gone third term. You're somewhat bemused. ABC Sport experts are Dean Brogan and Rod Jamison. Well, I, I feel like the biggest idiot because I was so sure that that ball went over and I was actually complaining that the umpire took too long to make that decision and it's totally gone the other way. So I must be blind because that ball looks way over the line. He looks like both his feet are over the line as well. Yeah. And it's not like the mark was even really taken in front of the behind line on a control. It was... <laughs> that is crazy anyway. But in saying that, Geelong have absolutely put the foot down here. And centre, centre clearances are really starting to hurt the Bulldogs. And it's really danger signs now for, for the Western Bulldogs. Well, it's uh, five inside 50s to th uh, two in this quarter. Three goal one to Geelong. Three goals in a row to Geelong as well. About ten minutes through this third term as the ball makes its way out to the Western wing. Chasing after it is Jeray for the Western Bulldogs. Quick hand pass to Williams. He'll flick it to English. Then Williams will get it back. Hand pass back to Jeray. The three combining the hand pass chain until hand pass comes to Trelaw. His hand pass intercepted. Atkins goes in with a ferocious tackle. And that wreaks dividends for Geelong, who gets it via Holmes. Hand pass to Bose. Puts the ball high inside 50. There was Karmas. He couldn't take the mark either. Ball will still say inside 50 for Geelong. Chasing after it is Jack Henry. He'll be beaten there to the footy by Baker. He'll go after it, get the hand pass back, taps it to his advantage, and he'll go for a run for the Western Bulldogs now, kicking it down the outer wing. Up the outer side, Norton trying to judge it through the air. Ewell Hagen out the back as well. Has called Jasney for company. Picked up here by the Cats. They combine a defence. It comes to Stewart from De Koning. Colin Jasney bursts through as well. Back to De Koning now, Atkins. Sweeps a hand pass wide to Blitzarves. He has space to kick on the left, up towards the flank now, where Karmas takes the intercept mark for the Bulldogs at right half back. July Long leads by 22. Harmus chips it to Jeray. 40 metres out from defensive goal. And pass across to Richard. Streaming down the centre of the Adelaide Oval. Short kick in the end to find Liberatore. Hand pass to Johannesson. Kicks out wide now to Baker. So Baker will put the Western Bulldogs inside 50 here. Players converge around the footy. Darcy takes the mark. Darcy in a pack. Put his hands up. And held on to the grab. And he'll now have a shot for his third this afternoon. Really strong contested mark there too. Two defenders. Tom Stewart was one of them, along with Zach Guthrie. And he had to work really hard. He was on the western side here where the football should have come initially. He's worked deep into the pocket. Darcy, 15 metres out, goes with the snap. He's got three. Three for Darcy. He's kicked three for the season so far. Now he's got six after this evening's efforts. Western Bulldogs, 8 3 51. Geelong, 10 7 67. 11 minutes gone now in this third quarter. Poor old Rory Lobb. There's no VFL game this week for him to kick a bag and get his spot back in the team. Don't worry about Rory Lobb. This kid is something special. And, and great call, Jamo. He, he, he was on this side, our grandstand side, our commentary side, and he should have got kicked the ball. But the Bulldogs went the other side, and he got on his bike and ran all the way inside 50 and made that his ball. That kid is six foot nine, is he? And look, he's super impressive. And and boy, did the Bulldogs need that goal too. So he just wanted that more than anybody else then. 
Um, great goal and uh, well done by the young fella. I really like this kid. I think he's got a massive future. How, how tall are you, Brokes? 200 centimetres. He's 208. Wow. Yeah. He's doubled his season goal tally with his three goals so far, Sam Darcy. Back in the middle. Socket forward here for the Cats. Great pickup. Off half back they come here, the Dogs, but worrisome that time. Puppet tried to get it away. Picked up again for the Bulldogs and Darcy. Now it comes wide to Harvey Gallagher. Now Bontempelli, the skipper's 65 from goal. Pops it in the pocket. White and leads up and marks. Deep in the left forward pocket, no more than 25 out. It makes a difference when you've got quality players that can have a look and assess really quickly, not just blaze away hoping Cody Waitman, he had to come through and probably three or four, not only his own players, but Geelong defence, and he was able to spot him lace out. Margin was 22, the Cats way. This for back-to-back -back Bulldogs goals. Waitman snaps and brings it back beautifully. That's Waitman's second. And the margin is back to just 10 points. Geelong 10, 7, 67. The Bulldogs are 9, 3, 57. This is ABC Sport across ABC Radio, Digital Radio and the ABC Listen app. It's Bonner, oh, Kelly I, and yeah. Pendlebury too. Like just two oh. left footers, the way that they see the game. Gemma, I thought he was going to turn. I thought he was kicking straight to uh, the Geelong defender there, but he knew what he was doing the whole time. He just hit Waitman up on a beautiful lead and the synergy between... Going in the four line between him and Waitman was, was better than what I could see, and that's why they're out there, I suppose, and, and that's why Bontempelli is an absolute superstar. And It's just when you thought the doggies were gone, they go whack, and they're still in the game, and they've turned the game you know, back into their favour again. So, you know, it's a really high-level arm wrestle at the moment between these two teams, and, um, you know, well done by the Bulldogs. So they've come with the response, Western Bulldogs, two goals in two minutes. Stanley in the ruck, he'll get the free kick here. Going against Darcy... And Stanley quickly palms it off to Bruin. Long kick inside 50. Karmas tries to get a hand to it. Puts it down. Jack Henry running away with the footy and he'll get the free for holding. Oh, it'll be Karmas. So Karmas, the benefit of that. Cool, dangerous kick to Oscar Baker. Gets it back now, Karmas. And this time chooses to go a lot longer than his first kick towards Darcy. Punched away by Stanley, though. Blitzarv's running after it. It's Bruin, rather. High hand pass towards... Holmes, hand pass to Cameron. Puts the kick into the pocket for Geelong. Mark can't be taken by Jack Henry. Jones tried to do something for Western Bulldogs. Jack Henry picked it up, kicks it towards the face of the goal. And it's Harvey Gallagher who marks for the Western Bulldogs. And flare it across for Daniel on the junction of 50 here for the Dogs in defence. A real arm wrestle this game so far. Just 10 points Geelong's way. Caleb Daniel. Speaking of South Australians from Edwardstown via South Adelaide. Kicks to the man on the mark. It's with Ollie Dempsey. Dempsey can straighten up here for the Cats. It's across the face for a minor score. Well, he got lucky there. Uh, little lucky. Caleb Daniel, um, he often doesn't make mistakes like that, but uh, he got away with one there, and Geelong should have punished that. He said, well, size threes. So here's Ed Richards. One bounce bringing the ball out of defence. Towards this western wing, Guthrie picks up though. Hand pass to Kolejasny. It's the Geelong Cats away here to Clark. Hand pass goes towards Tui. He's taken in a tackle just inside forward 50 for the Geelong Cats. Let's head down to Liz Walsh on the boundary. Yeah, I've got, I'm keeping a close eye on Tom Stewart from Geelong here. He seems to um, just have a bit of trouble with his left hamstring, so I'm keeping a close eye on him for you. Daniel is Geelong by 11. And again, it's run out of, uh, out of play. More bounce for a throw in. 10-8 plays, 9-3 Geelong's lead. They have to make their back line or manoeuvre their back line if he has to sit out the remainder of this game. Back in it comes. English wins it down. Cleared away from Bailey Williams or by Bailey Williams. It's bouncing again out of bounds for a throw-in on the centre wing broadcast side. Where's Edwardstown, Jamo? Uh, it's only probably about 10 minutes from the CBD south. Okay. So Edwardstown, and he played at South Adelaide, which they had their home ground only about probably 20 metres, 20 minutes out from the CBD. It's further south down at Nolunga now. Yes. God's, God's country. God's country. <laughs> on the top Williams of a hill the, the dogs go four to halfway. 
Gathered here by De Koning, shares it with Zach Guthrie off a step, just thumps it back from whence it came. Floating it from the side, Parfit couldn't pull it down. Dale on hands and knees there for the Bulldogs. They come in from all angles, and the umpire says, give it to me. Should it's be still one by 11, 17 gone third. Sorry, Spring, it should be called Windy Hill. That's where it should be, right. Brogues. Hey? Well, that is the wind. That's the cycling, isn't it? They finish at the top of Wollonga Hill, don't they? Or yeah. Is that or well, Norlunga's not far from there. Okay. Parfit puts Geelong inside 50. Close here can gather. Hand pass away. Baker does well for the Western Bulldogs. Hand pass to Richards and they combine to get the ball out of defensive 50. Hand pass to Daniels. He'll kick now along the wing. Marked by Vandermeer. Can kick the dogs to right half forward. There's Darcy. Another mark is taken. Strong mark. Three goals so far this afternoon. He'll kick the dogs inside 50. 15 metres out. Norton goes for a second attempt. Can't mark. Polajasny comes in there for Geelong, a hand pass to Bose and a hand pass across to Stanley doesn't know what to do next, under pressure can hand pass to Collar Jasny to relieve some of that pressure. Comes beyond defensive 50 oh. up goes a sit, big fly from Dempsey, couldn't pull the grab down on the rebound, Trelaw 65 from goal, thumps it high to the hot spot, Bontempelli in the contest Stanley's hit the deck hard meanwhile loose ball gathered by Darcy who snaps and he sends it right across the face looking for goal number 4 it's out of bounds on the full. Stanley was down for a while. He's back up now showing no real signs. But Dempsey seeing a replay of that massive hang. Everything but the finish from Ollie Dempsey. And it remains an 11-point ball game Geelong's way. Doggies are really pressing here, aren't they? They've, they've just got similar. They've got more legs than Geelong at the moment. Close, long kick out. Finds Myers. Takes it on the chest. He'll kick to the edge of the centre square. Bruin can take the mark and kick inboard. Finds Stanley. Right in the middle of Adelaide Oval, just lets his teammates get ahead of him before putting it out wide. Goes into the path of Duncan, hand passes to Myers, dinky kick forward, hits Jack Henry on the chest. Pretty easily done by Geelong. Jack Henry will now have a shot at goals, difficult angle, 35 metres out. Oh, you're right, I was two. In the last 10 minutes, Brogues, 34% time in possession to 16 over Geelong, so here they are against the grain having a shot on goal. Great ball movement, wasn't it? The change of angles and Myers, who was really important in the first quarter. Um, great kick inside 50. So, Ollie Henry kicked four goals in the corresponding fixture last year. Hasn't kicked one tonight until now. Henry with the major for Geelong. Their 11th of this evening, 11-8-74, leading the Western Bulldogs 9-3-57, nearly 20 minutes gone in the third term. Let's head down to Liz Walsh on the boundary. More good news for Geelong. Tom Stewart would have spent a good five minutes on the physio mat, getting a lot of work from a trainer on his right hamstring, it was. Uh, but he seems good to go and he's back out there. Eight goal scorers to the Cats tonight too, and Tom Hawkins hasn't kicked one. Yeah. Yeah, they've been really um, even spread, haven't they, with their small forwards and their big forwards. But um, that, that's Geelong at their best, isn't it, when they when they shift the ball with their feet and change angles and go really quick. And, and, and my, no surprise, Myers was the was the culprit of kicking the ball inside 50. And um, great great finish by Henry. And great answer by Geelong, because Western Bulldogs were coming hard. 11-6 to 6 inside 50 is this quarter of the Cats. The voices of Dean Brogan and Rod Jamison on, on uh, ABC Sport as we restart in the middle. Socket forward by Trelaw. Out after the football. Winning it away was Vandermeer. Back to Trelaw. Run down by Parfit. The kick will go inside 50, though. Chest mark was spilled by Stewart in defence. Picked up by Daniel for the Bulldogs. Fires somewhere towards goal, but dropping back and marking is Max Holmes on the last line here for the Cats. And they'll start again from full back. Holmes with a couple of defensive marks in the last few minutes. Kicks out in the Bruin direction. Ball getting close to the boundary line that's seen over by Bruin. We'll have a throw in now, just in front of that Jack Odie stand. Eastern wing of the ground. A little bit bare in the third tier, it looks like. Maybe a few Carlton fans heading off to enjoy the win, not sticking around for that second game. Well, Bruins, work rate's good too, Loz. So Holmes kicks down the wing. One on one, not one out by either of the two plays. It's Karmas who comes in afterwards, sockers it forward. Daniel picks it up. Hand pass to Sanders, who hand passes to Liberatore. He'll kick in the west direction. West is at the back here, back of the pack. Can't beat Collar Jasney to the footy. 
And College Jazz New Lex at Geelong out at defensive 50. Back to the western wing they come. Contest out there, Stengel and Jure. Gathered here by Bailey Dale. Sweeps a hand pass wide on the bounce. Put Williams under pressure. Coming through again, Jure was taken high by Blitzhards. The umpire says nothing doing. We'll ball it up. So, there'll be a ball up on the wing. Broadcast side in front of us. At Adelaide Oval. As this Saturday night double header winds down, although it's still approaching three quarter time and it's slapped out of bounds for a throw in, so we're not too far away from the, We're not that close to the finish of the game, is what I'm trying to say. 17 points is Geelong's lead. Liz Walsh has done back to back games here, so I'll check in on Liz again shortly, make sure she's still enjoying things down there. Back in it comes. 23 going third term. Bruin and Liberatore. Vittore famed for high contact. Sanders thumps it back up the line here and a strong second bite. Colour Jazzy reels in the grab for the Cats. You never know, Spricky. There might be a 42-minute delay for Lightning coming up. Oh. oh. Weather looks Great. pretty good here, though. At Adelaide Oval, beautiful skies. Colour Jazzy's kick smothered. He can recover, though. Kick it down towards Bose, who fumbles the footy. And the ball goes out of bounds. Even on a good day. I did a game at the Gabba last year where the lights went out. And that was an you bring it. hour delay. So I don't want to have anything too unusual happen. Dutch wood. Just a good game of footy, please. So ball will be brought in right in front of our broadcast position. Western wing. Stanley in English again go at it. Ball falls to Duncan. Shoves it on his boot. It'll head in the Dempsey direction. He gets around Johannesson. Keeps the ball in play. Hand pass to Stengel. He'll put Geelong inside 50 here. Bose will go up for the mark. Can't take it. Jack Henry close to the boundary line. Hand pass back to Bose. Tries to snap with his right boot. It'll head at the top of the goal square. Jones there for the Western Bulldogs. Takes the mark right on the last line of defence for the Dogs. Back with the fight of the footy. Well done. A former blue. Goes beyond defensive 50. Out to find Williams. Blitzarves comes in late. I think it missed them both. And goes out of bounds for a throw in. On uh, the flank at right half forward for the Cats. Liz Walsh on the boundary. Obviously, both the subs for both teams are still in play. In the last couple of minutes, both of them have got up off the benches and started doing a few runs along the boundary. We might see some tactics coming in soon. Cats by 17 points, 24 going third turn. This ball tossed back in. Stanley picks it up, hand passes it away, but it's Trelaw that can pick it up for the Western Bulldogs. Sends it down the wing. Waitman's there, just kicks it into an absolutely empty inside 50 for the Western Bulldogs. Vandermeer is winning the foot race here. He wins the foot race, but he misses the goal. Kicks it to the right hand side. Just a minor score for the Western Bulldogs. It's 16 points now, the margin in favour of the Cats. 25 minutes played, third term. Well, that was a moment, wasn't it? Vandermeer, and, and a th not sure who the Geelong winger was, but it was a speed race, and just enough to put Vandermeer off. But, geez, that would have been handy for the Bulldogs. Guthrie kicks out to a free kick going Jeremy Cameron's way. He's a long way from home at left half back. Seems to enjoy the, uh, the Geelong lifestyle. There's Jesse Cameron. Been there for a couple of years now. He's got a farm, hasn't he? There was a oh, yeah. pretty stuck his metal around the, the neck of a That's right. cow and yeah. couldn't get it back. Here's the other key forward. Hawkins marks in the outer wing. Thumps it high inside 50. Stengel's down there with Jure. Loose man there, Stanley. Works the hand pass back to Stengel. Closing from the pocket. Snaps and goals. Stengel's got three. And Geelong push back out to a 22-point lead. 12-8-80. The Bulldogs who are 9 4 50, 8 26 gone third term on ABC Sport. Your experts are Premiership players, Rod Jamison and Dean Brogan. Well, that's what we've laboured all night. Just the ability for Geelong to be able to just whip it down really quickly from defence in a hurry and somehow have multiple numbers to their favour when it gets in their forward line. They keep it alive out wide and Stengel whilst being lively, he'd only kicked the one goal in the first quarter, but. Now has three, if you call, Spriggy, and two of those in this third quarter. Well, what happened was, is, is Stanley bolted forward on English. English got caught in between, should he contest that long ball down the line or go with Stanley? He didn't do either. It was in no man's land. Stanley pushed hard forward, backing that, that they would win. That's how they got the numbers inside 50. And Eng English is having a, a real nightmare with Stanley at the moment tonight. Um, Stanley's got his number at the moment. Here they go again. English pushes it down this time. In front of Bonton Pally. He's got to work hard to get the footy. Paddles it forward. Holmes picks it up for Geelong. Hand pass to Bow. Shoves it on his boot. Geelong at half forward. There's Stengel again. He just punches it forward. Could be a smart move here. Dempsey's there. Jack Henry tries to push it away to him. Can't get it too 
uh, to Dempsey. Stengel's there. Weaves around one. Weaves around two. Puts it through. He's got four. So Stengel with four goals for the afternoon. Three in this third term. He's helped Geelong push the margin out to 28 points. A game high. It's Geelong 13-8-86. Western Bulldogs 9-4-58. Oh, smart, isn't he? Quick. They just keep it alive forward again in that particular passage of play. I think it was Hawkins tried to tap it on. Daly Bale just couldn't cope with the pressure for Geelong the players. Numbers, the numbers, Jamo, yeah. you correct. You know, uh, the, 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 the centre bounce has really hurt Bulldogs. You know, that's where that goal came from. The contest in the centre square and Bulldogs all ran forward. Geelong won the contest, handballed it over his head to the to Geelong runners. And like you said, Jamo, the numbers inside forward 50s, Ge- Geelong are just swarming the Bulldogs at the moment. The Dogs had some momentum early in the second half, but that's now three unanswered goals until which have been the boot of Tyson Stengel. Four goals for him. The Cats by 28. Waiting for a clearance. Jai Clark gives a nudge. Waitman extracts the footy here for the Dogs. Sends it down the line where it's marked by Trelaw. Off to Bontempelli running by. The skipper from 55. All the way home for the Bont. That's a captain's goal. And didn't the Dogs need it as well? Well, different look. Waitman comes into the centre bounce because they're obviously having some issues in there. So that you've got to mix it up as a coach. You've got to get some live life in there. So really good move putting Waitman in. He wins the clearance and then, you know, get it in the hands of your best players and who, who bobs up? And that's the bond. And that's that's a super goal. Great mark by Chalor. Good hands. 65 metre bomb. Great goal by the Doggies. Hanging in there. They're just hanging in, Jammo. I think they need to get Jack McRae on now, too. Absolutely. You could probably get Riley West out. A weird, he's kicked the one goal, but he can throw you into the rotations, Liz. Oh, yes, they actually have just been yelling, they have Jamo, they <laughs> have. Jack McRae is in the game. Caleb Daniel subbed out. There you go, on Curie. Thanks, Liz. So Caleb Daniel subbed out for Jack McRae coming on. Caleb Daniel, the sub in round one, and now he's subbed off as the umpire bounces the ball, uh, and it will be recalled after a poor bounce. So McRae to come in, played his first game for the season last week and then started as the sub tonight. We'll now have a quarter to show what he's worth. Ball tossed up in the middle. Players converge on the footy. Clark can paddle it away. It'll be picked up by Liberatore. He's tackled to the ground by Stanley. It'll be in the back of free kick to Liberatore. So Liber's been strong for the Western Bulldogs tonight. Kick towards Norton, left half forward. Try and move the ball quickly here, the Western Bulldogs. Norton will just pop it to a hot spot, though. He'll need players to fly. There's West. Holds on to the mark. Luckily, they didn't stab him off, Jamo. Well, I wouldn't have picked that, Loz, too. Just a great contested mark over the back. One hand, don't you? Thank you. Think, wow. Is it Tim English? It was the, the lead-up that it potentially went to. And... Wally West has kicked one goal one in the second quarter. Wally West kicked a goal late in the second term to bring the margin back to nine points. Looking to kick a goal late in the third as well. He's happy with that one. He celebrates with Aaron Norton. The Dogs now within 16 points heading into the very late stages of the third term. Western Bulldogs 11-4, 70 Geelong 13-8-86. Well, they just won't go away, will they, the Doggies? They get two or three kicked on them and then all of a sudden they come to life. So... It's a dangerous game to play football like that, but they are hanging around, and they're good players just refuse to give up, do they? Liberatore, Bontempelli, when it looks like the doggies are gone, they step up again. So can they get this momentum and kick another one and go into three-quarter time, you know, get it to that ten-point margin, and you'd probably take that in the way they played this third quarter. They're always the better side when they've got their backs to the wall, the bullies. Huh? They just get to work, put their head down, and again, Liberatore in the middle of the ground just... His ability to hunt the football and then win it again, and then off they go. Herding Luke Beveridge pulled the trigger on the sub, so Jack McRae out there for the Dogs. Caleb Daniels subbed out tactically in time one of the third term. English wins the tap there. Bonton Pelly out to McRae. Breaks a tackle. Goes to find his skipper again. Bus past Myers. Wrong foot Dempsey. What about that from Bonton Pelly? Comes back with a flank where Waitman's in the contest. This time Guthrie wins out. Up against the goal line. He's dumped this time by Jack McRae. The fresh pair of legs out there. 
Just to lift the intensity a little bit here for the Bulldogs. And back to back goals. And have it thrown back into play. Taking sight of halfway here for the Bulldogs. Right, Mark O'Connor sitting on the boundary too. He can play midfield, he can play outside and and or defence. Sars gets a hand to this one. Bailey Williams tries to run onto it. English, the Western Bulldogs ruck can get a quick kick away. Bose runs onto it. Does enough to get it to par it for Geelong. Kicks the Cats to half forward. Hawkins tries to get a hand on it. Can't get one there. Dempsey comes off his knee. He'll chase after it. Hands and knees on the turf. Hand passes it to Parfit inside 53. Bulldogs around the ball. One of those is Liam Jones. Steps back, takes the intercept mark for the Dogs. A veteran defender. Looks for an option out of defence. Goes across the goal mouth. It was dicey there for Baker, who hangs on to the mark as Tui was coming in late. And Oscar Baker, former Demon. He's now played more games as a Bulldog. From the junction of 50 out of side. Looks to find Norton. He was shoved out of it by Stewart. And gathered out there again. Guthrie involved. Hand pass comes wide. Close. Guthrie comes back again. Outside. As Myers delivers the kick inside 50 here for the Cats and finds the chest of Jeremy Cameron. It's right in the middle of five Western Bulldog players then. But the, the way Geelong got out of trouble on the far side there, they dogs were coming hard at the pressure, but they elite handballs out of congestion. And then the kick by Myers, that, that's just elite. Um, great play by Geelong and, um, you know, Got it in the hands of probably the, the best goal, you know, the Coleman medalist. No, not Coleman medalist, one of the best goal kickers of all time. He was a Coleman medalist. Was, he was, wasn't he? Yeah. Was a couple of years ago. Probably Jeremy I was coaching. Cameron. Lining up for his third, only a couple of years ago. The Moz is on it. And uh, it doesn't quite, they've paid the mark. No, it's a behind. That's no better than the one that Stengel claimed earlier, but uh, that was a behind uh, for Jeremy Cameron. So it's just one more point to Geelong's margin. Now they lead by 17 points. Western Bulldogs moving it very quickly here to find Cody Waitman. Left half back, but now he's forced to wait as his teammates can move ahead of him. Waitman with a booming 50 metre kick. Norton flies, can't take the mark. West is there, tries to push it to his advantage. Sitting back with Stewart though, hand pass to Cameron who's gone all the way into defence. Stewart with the footy just wants to steady things. So he kicks it backwards towards Zach Tui in the left back pocket for Geelong, just slowing things down uh -oh. here late in the quarter. Terrible kick. Bailey Williams was there for the Western Bulldogs. So is Riley West. Might have copped a knock in the head. Umpire blows his whistle. Free kick, Riley West. And it was the umpire in the middle, Oz, too, that picked it up, not the one that was controlling. West has copped it high. He's got Atkins' hip nearly in his face. West went down. Now is a chance, very, very late stages of this third term, to kick his third and again keep the Western Bulldogs in touch. Looking 35 metres out, few metres in from the boundary line, shanks it off his boot to the near side. Just the minor score. Margin down to 16 points, 35 minutes gone, a pretty long quarter here. 35 and a half minutes and counting. Into the last. Oh, Dempsey minutes. gets up again. Strong grab. Didn't quite have the big uh, the big sit, but he did uh, take the mark this time at least. Right half back for the Cats. Is there time for one more for them? 16 points their lead. Jure gets up. McRae there for the Bulldogs. Off to Trelaw. Bontempelli sweeps a hand pass back to English. Harry kick all its way towards half forward. Again, crashing the pack. Uh, Waitman kept his feet, and that will be it to three-quarter time. Geelong 13, 987, the Bulldogs 11, 571. The Bulldogs hit the first of that third term at one stage, Geelong with three unanswered goals, two of which were kicked by Tyson Stingle. He has four for the match, a couple each for Jeremy Cameron and Jack Bowes, singles to Max Holmes, Ollie Dempsey, Ollie Henry, Zach Guthrie and Brad Close. That rhymes. And three for Sam Darcy, two each for Cody Waitman, Riley West. Singles for the Bulldogs for Eugle Hagen, Bontempelli. It was a stunning effort on the run from the skipper in that third term. Harvey Gallagher, Tom Libertore on the goal kickers list as well. For a week with a time at Adelaide Oval, where it's the Cats by 16 points on ABC Radio, ABC Sport Little and the ABC Listen app. This is Gather Out on ABC Sport. 
So, what makes us Australian? Just be whoever you want to be. And who's the obvious person to ask how that's transforming? Welcome to Broken Hill, Miriam. I'm on a quest to learn what it takes to change and adapt. Occupation. I'm actually an escort. An influencer. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Miriam Margulies, Impossibly Australian. You are changing the world. Starts Tuesday, April 9 on ABC TV and always free, always entertaining on ABC iView. You're listening to the AFL Gather Round. AFL. On radio. ABC Sport Digital. And take us with you on the ABC Listener. The ball tossed in from the pocket. Liberatore running after it. Quick kick at goal. Slots it through. Early goal for the Western Bulldogs to start the second half. In the path of Cameron, he hand passes to Grian Myers. He'll get it back now from Myers. Put a kick towards goal. No one gets in the way this time. Cameron with his second. And Geelong quickly get that response to push the margin back out to nine points. The Koning chips it forward to Myers. Left half forward. Stops and steadies himself. Finds Blitzarves. He can stop the footy. He can't pick it up, though. Quick hand pass to Colin Jasny. Hand pass to Close. He'll kick a goal now. Slots it through. Two quick goals in a row for Geelong. So Baker will put the Western Bulldogs inside 50 here. Players converge around the footy. Darcy takes the mark. Darcy, 15 metres out, goes with the snap. He's got three. Now Bonson play the skipper's 65 from goal. Pops it in the pocket. Waitman leads up and marks. This to back-to-back Bulldogs goals. Waitman snaps and brings it back beautifully. That's Waitman's second. And the margin is back to just 10 points. Bumps it high inside 50. Stengel's down there with Duray. Loose man there, Stanley. Works a hand pass back to Stengel. Closing from the pocket. Snaps and goals. Stengel's got three. Jack Henry tries to push it away to him. Can't get the two. Dempsey, Stengel's there. Weaves around one, weaves around two. Puts it through. He's got four. Mark by Trelaw. Off to Bontempelli running by. The skipper from 55. All the way home for the bot. That's a captain's goal. And didn't the dogs need it as well? Trying to move the ball quickly here, the Western Bulldogs. Norton will just pop it to a hot spot, though. He'll need players to fly. There's West. Holds on to the mark to bring the margin back to nine points. Looking to kick a goal late in the third as well. He's happy with that one. He celebrates with Aaron Norton. The 2024 AFL Gather Round. On your radio. ABC Sport Digital. And on the ABC Listen app. Adelaide Oval, Geelong by 17 points, 13.97 to the Bulldogs, 11.5 at 71. You're with Brett Sprigg alongside Lauren Borden. Your experts are Rod Jamison and Dean Brogan. Liz Walsh on the boundary. Your texts remain welcome, 0437 774 774. Uh, hi, Spriggy and team. We're enjoying the coverage on our bus trip from Delhi to Jagpur. Nearly got cleaned up by an errant truck, but otherwise fine. Go Dogs in the second half. That's from Catherine Barnes. Uh, and David Albany in WA, enjoying your call as always. Uh, he says, my sad bombers have a long way to go. <laughs> Cheers. He's uh, he sips the cats for his flag favourites. And there's a few more texts about uh, Carlton Frio, which I'll get to later on. Um, we'll wash up the day uh, on this Saturday and gather round. And Kylie Williamstown, uh, Williamstown is a Dogs fan, loved the retro AFL logo on the Eagles retro uh, jumper they wore earlier at uh, Mount Barker where they were beaten by the Swans by 26 points and Carlton beat Frio here by 10 points. Jamo, Brogues, where is this game at right now? 16 points at the got a time Geelong's way. Well, just when you think Western Bulldogs are, are out of it and it looks like Geelong are going to run away with it, the, lot, the names pop up. Bontempelli, Liberatore, Trelaw. They just refuse to go away, which, which gives, if you're a Bulldog supporter, it gives you a bit of hope and, and, and confidence that this is they, they're going to hang in there. But Geelong's mo- moments with the footy are just a little bit better than the Western Bulldogs. Bulldogs have had a little bit more jammo, but they just can be a bit wasteful at times. But when they go quick and they get the hands, they get the ball in the hands, they're good players. They, they look they look better than Geelong. They're just not doing enough. Obvi- you know, obviously the scoreboard tells you that, but they're just not doing enough as what Geelong are. I need Tim English to step up here. Aaron Norton's getting a lot of the football up the ground and not in the dangerous areas where he's getting it. But Cody Waitman has to work really hard to get his football. And Jamara has only had eight disposals and needs to have a greater impact. So I think that's the area. When you have a look at Geelong's team, like Brian Myers, if you were a kicking coach, you would say, this is not how you kick a football. Just the way that he just kicks across his body. But he's had 16 and going at 75%. But the run and rebound off the halfback for Geelong is really quality. 
and again the, how quickly they are moving the football just the contested stuff in that quarter Geelong 42 to 35 ground ball gets 28 to 21 they're starting the differential they're starting to build that out the Bulldogs have now got to pull that back and Jack McRae has to have an impact now the boundary Liz Walsh yeah it looks like Mark O'Connor is going to be subbed into the game very soon he's taken off his jumper his training t-shirt and put on his Guernsey Hope he's OK, not too cold. Uh, Jack McRae was subbed in for Caleb Daniel in that third term for the Bulldogs. I think I said it was 17, 16 points the Geelong way at the final change. What does this game have in store for us? We saw five first-half lead changes. Geelong have controlled things for the most part. Big crowd, probably at least uh, three-quarters full. Underway in the final term. English versus Stanley. Bontempelli gets on the end of it, goes inside 50 straight away. And crunch from behind was Henry. Jack Henry was courageous. The ball just uh, bobbles towards goal here, and it's wrapped up by a couple of sets of players or balled up. Better well, start by English at the centre bounce, Shamo. You called it three-quarter time. Great. Get upstairs and hit it straight to Bont for the centre clearance. Here he is contesting the ball up inside 50 here. Bulldogs attacking end. It's cleared by Guthrie, though, for the Cats. Beyond 50. Jure drops a knock he should have taken. Close gets in the back of him. The umpire says, let's ball it up. That left half forward for the Bulldogs. It's along by 16. Umpire tosses it up. English and Blitzars this time in the ruck. Ball comes down. Cray tackled by Bruin. Umpire has to come in and break it up again. So out of side of the field is where the umpire will toss it up. English gets a tap out straight to Liberatore, then gets the footy back from him. Hand pass to McRae, the sub on the field. Quick inside 50, Norton can run onto this. Dempsey beats him there. Hand pass to Guthrie. Hand passes it to Deconi in defensive 50 for Geelong. They'll move the ball outside defensive 50, where the mark will be taken by Bose. Moves it along quickly and finds Jeremy Cameron. The top disposal getter for Geelong on the field so far today. And he holds the footy at right half back for the Cats. Comes inboard now for Geelong. Miss Johannesson. Bounced out for Bailey Dale. Got it back to Johannesson, the Norm Smith medalist. Now Trelaw. Hand pass releases Dale once again. Back to Bontempelli. Dale's still running. For the middle of Adelaide Oval. On the half volley for English. Gets the hand pass away here. Out in front of Sam Darcy. And now looking to clear Jack Henry. Heron hand pass comes to you. Hagen who can snap from 35 out. He's missed a lot. The intent was there from the Dogs, just not the finish. It remains a 16-point ball game, Geelong's way. 13-9, plays 11-5. Well, that, that was his moment, Jamo. Hugo Hague, he's had a quiet night, but he should have done better with that. Uh, he, uh, that was a real opportunity gone. Here comes Stewart after a bit of an issue with his hamstring. Kicks the ball outside of defensive 50. Locked up, though, by Jurey for the Western Bulldogs. Ball back inside, 50 for the Dogs. And it'll be a mark as well. Hugo Hagen clinches the mark. Will take a set shot at goal early in this fourth term. 35 metres out, about a 45 degree angle. It was eight points to the lead Geelong at quarter time. Nine at half time, 16 at three quarter time. They just have to get it under that two goal margin. They get close and then Geelong just boot two or three. But here's Jamara's moment. Jamara on the approach, launches the ball towards goals. It slams into the right goalpost. Still shaking as the umpire signals are behind. Margin 15 points in favour of Geelong. Three minutes played in the fourth term. They have to take every opportunity, don't they? They seem to be working too hard for their goals. Geelong just go the other way and it looks easy. Stewart drives it long beyond defensive 50 from the kick out again Jamara floats across and takes the market left half forward pops it back inside of 50 the two on two Darcy has a couple of beat almost reels it in Guthrie clears here for the Cats unkind bounce for Richards it missed him and also Ollie Henry out there as well and it goes out of bounds for a throw in attacking side of the wing for the Bulldogs who trail by 15 points that's Geelong's lead here the Dogs chasing a third straight win while the Cats look to remain unbeaten. So Geelong finding it difficult to exit defence at the moment, their defensive half of the ground. Bruin gets a hand pass away, picked up though by McRae, hand pass to Trelaw again. The Western Bulldogs will go back in their attacking arc. Norton comes from behind, pushes the ball forward, can't take the mark. Duncan 
Cleans it up for Geelong. Hand pass to Dempsey, who's streaming now through the middle of Adelaide Oval. Can kick it to Bowes. Gets it to Cameron. Kick inside 50 here. Can Geelong quickly get a goal again? Well, it's a mark to Jack Henry. End-to-end -end stuff from Geelong. Ball ends up in the hands of Jack Henry, who'll have a set shot 30 metres out from goal. Yeah, great call, Oz, too. So the Western Bulldogs just played four and a half minutes and probably four of those minutes in their forward half. Six inside 50s. The Geelong then go down once and now having a shot on goal. So it's Ollie Henry hurls the ball towards the sticks. The umpire does not move. Ollie Henry with a steady for Geelong. 21 points the margin. Henry's got two. And it's Geelong 14-9-93. Western Bulldogs 11 6 72. How's the kick by Cameron? Like, his field kicking as a tall forward is just elite. That was just an amazing kick. I really like Dempsey's work rate. He came back to help out the back, the back line then, Dempsey, and he got it on the link of that, and he was part of that chain, and he had the vision to bring it inside. He could have gone long down the line, but he brought the ball back inside, which allowed for that speedy movement. But you're right, Jim, the Bulldogs have been pumping the ball inside 50, and Chalor should have lowered his eyes. He had Bulldogs players in for a shorter kick. Instead, he pumps it long, and they can't win a ground ball inside their forward 50 at the moment, the Bulldogs. You two are having an argument? No, no, no. Just trying to work. Getting a Henry's. It was Ollie, wasn't it? Yes. yes. Ollie, Ollie's second. Yeah. I saw Jack there there before. Uh, here's Stewart for the Cats. Sweep the hand pass wide. It's gathered here by the dogs and work wide. Out to the boundary for a throw in. I'm glad you sorted it out because I can't call again. No, I. I thought you said Jack and then Ollie and then Jack. No. I did. You, no, I you, did. You did say Jack and. <laughs> but then I went to Ollie. It was Ollie. Yeah, okay, we got that. Yeah. I was just, I was confused. 21 points is Geelong's lead. Back and it comes. O'Connor's gone to Bonapelli. Something being made. Trying to quell the influence of the Bulldog skipper. Johannesson run down from behind there by Duncan. He's been quiet tonight, the veteran, Mitch Duncan. And he's a role player, that's for sure. The Mexican wave going around Adelaide Oval. I guess there are neutral fans here. It sort of tends to happen. The Victoria's kicked towards half forward. West off to Vandermeer goes inside 50. Eugle Hagen leads up from full forward and marks 35 out middle of the park. They just keep getting opportunities. The Bulldogs to close the gap. He just has to kick this, doesn't he? he, he he's, he's had a really good start to this quarter. He's had a really good quarter so far. He's just had a couple of opportunities. Massive kick this for the doggies. Crowd's going to go up right behind the goals at the time he's going to kick it. It's just got behind the goals. Eugle Hagen. 40 out directly in front to hit the post before. He makes no mistake this time. The dogs aren't going away yet. Margin 15 points. The Cats are 14 993. Western Bulldogs 12 6 78. On ABC Sport across this Saturday and gather around. We've had two pretty good games so far today, and this is number three. Nine more disposals in this quarter in the early part. Just under seven minutes, eight minutes played. They got 10 to 5 contested in front, 7 to 1 inside 50, 6 to 2 hit out, so they're on top of areas where they haven't been for the entire game. They've had some opportunities, they just haven't been able to nail them, and that was a great kick by Hugo Hagen. Great little, little low the eyes west and just hit Hugo Hagen with a beautiful kick. Instead of bombing it along to the square, lowered his eyes, great finish. Tom Limbatore has gone after Mark O'Connor because he's into the skipper. So ball back in the middle. It's a tap away from Stanley. We'll be locked in here, though, and we'll have another ball up. With O'Connor there, the sub, rising from the bottom of the pack, just outside the two centre circles. Stanley taps it away. Bruin runs onto it, gets himself some space. Quick kick inside 50 here for Geelong. One on one. Karma's going against Stengel. Neither can really gain advantage of the footy. Right close to the boundary line. Karma's just happy to see it over, but it means it'll be a throw in. Just to the left, behind post, Geelong's attacking 50. So players set up now here. Western Bulldogs desperate to defend this one, to give themselves a chance in this game. Ed Richards can get onto the footy for the Western Bulldogs, get the clearing kick away, and the dogs could be on. Baker in space on the wing, looks up, sees options of plenty. Riley West back there, Stewart came late with a spoil. That's what a five-time All-Australian defender does. And that's out of bounds for a throw-in. 
as the numbers try and get back. On the boundary, Liz Walsh. Jai Clark for Geelong is now being subbed out of the game with Mark O'Connor coming in. After Tom's done that, I think it was Zach Guthrie's almost put his hands up. You know, great spoil. <laughs> the job's not done yet, Zach. Geelong by 15. Stengel perhaps taken high. Umpire says play on. They go inside 50. The Bulldogs high ball from for Eugle Hagen. He was shoved out of it. Colin Jasney hand pass. It was fired out towards Holmes. Built the footy though as Stewart was taken somewhat dubiously by Aaron Norton. The umpire says give it to me. They have lifted their work rate here. Eight to two inside 50s again. Deep in their forward line, the Bullies. Ball up, right four pocket here for the Bulldogs. We trail by 15. Ten gone, final turn. English and Stanley compete. Colour Jasney, Stewart can clear here for the Cats. Stewart sends it outside of a t defensive 50. Richards runs onto it, pushes it forward. Back inside 50, he gets the ball back. Hand pass to Sanders, hand pass to Trelaw. He'll kick to the top of the goal square. No mark, desperate stuff from Bogdan Pally, trying to soccer it. Tui, just on the very last line, takes it over the behind line and make sure that goes no further than just a minor score. It's now 14 points the margin in favour of the Cats. This is the biggest punch they've thrown all night at the moment too. Geelong just need to hang on here if they want to stay within it. 14 points, but the Bullies need some reward. They haven't kicked three straight goals in the game yet thus far. They have to kick that to regain the lead at this stage of the game. Still plenty of time left though. Up to the outer side, Jones. It was Holly Henry who hit the deck. And it's uh, going to be out of bounds for a throw-in. They're going for look, the Mexican wave's done about eight laps. <laughs> the footy's good enough. Isn't that usually a sign of boredom, Mexican wave? Good crowd in. This double header at Adelaide Oval. Geelong by 14. Back in it comes on the outer side. Stanley under pressure. Hand pass right to Johansson. He can snap his kick back up the line. Two on two. And uh, out there, Zach Tui is brought to ground by Riley West. And the umpire will ball up. So he had 11 goals in that third term. Went for 35 and a half minutes. One to either side in this fourth quarter so far. Stengel gets the hand pass away. Will be over the boundary line as well. Just further up along the wing now between the Jack Odie stand and the Max Bashir stand. We'll have a throw in. So almost at centre wing. Geelong leading by 14 points. Still plenty of time. This Mexican wave sounds like it's coming back around us here for a six lap. Thrown in. Stanley pushes it down. Half it goes after it. Now it's Cameron. Can find himself in some space. Stops to pick it up. Gets a hand pass away, then goes for the kick in the end to Bruin, to O'Connor. O'Connor's kick is smothered. Latham Vandermeer picks up, hand passes it to Sanders. In congestion, Trelaw is awarded the free kick for a high tackle from Guthrie. They all start to stream back in red, white and blue. Trelaw looks up, goes searching inside 50. Up there first from behind, it was uh, Dempsey. In fact, the Coning, and now it's at ground level where... Uh, Holmes is brought to ground. So the ball up, 30 out, the Bulldogs attacking goal, the crowd lifting. Just with Chalor's kick then, he just needed to find something a bit shorter. He just bombed it in, and that's what Geelong want. Geelong by 14. Williams, his head ripped off by Parfitt. Umpire says play on. Socket away beyond defensive 50 for the Cats. Tracking it forward here, trying to get it away again. Bailey Dale. It's out of bounds for a throw-in. Liam Jones couldn't keep it alive. So a ball in on the commentary side or western wing of Adelaide Oval. It's Geelong who lead 14-9-93 to the Bulldogs 12-7-79. Yeah, just keep an eye on the bond. So he's had four. Mark O'Connor is wearing him like a glove. Liberatore gets it from the clearance, puts it inside 50, going for Eugle Hagen. Great mark coming back there from Jack Henry. Going back with the fly to the footy. Intercept mark for Geelong. Jack Henry chips it forward towards Tui, who takes the mark on the pain of defensive 50. Cats will be looking for a breath here. They've just been under pressure in this first 13, 14 minutes. It's been in the forward half of the bullies. He goes backwards towards Stewart. Just chips it further forward to Deconing. 
That might be what they're doing here, Geelong, just taking a moment to compose themselves. Oh. And then Decoding kicks it into the man in the mark, gets it back. This time he's got to hurry a hand pass to Cameron, who's back in defensive 50, fires a kick long down the wing, and it's Thomas comes in. There mark he is, taken for the boy. Western Bulldogs. There he is. Just he's other than his little blunder with that tackle. He's had a pretty good game, this kid. But in the calm in Karmas from the outer logo. Loads up, back inside 50 here for the Dogs. Bunton Pelly, big fly, couldn't reel it in. At the drop, Cameron fires the hand pass to Tui. They'll clear here, the Cats beyond defensive 50, and it's marked by Holmes at left half back. Geelong by 14 points. Holmes can just settle things down a little bit. His kick to find Brian Myers. The job's not done by any means. 15 going final term. 14 points their lead. Myers up the other side of the wing. Reaching for it, Blitzarves. It falls down to Gallagher for the Bulldogs. He's lost the footy. Hawkins goes to fend. Collected by Liberatore. Atkins through traffic. Works it away here again for Jack Bowes. Goes inside 50, but it's wide and out of bounds on the full. Bulldogs ball in the right back pocket. It's the Cats who lead by 14. There's like five Western Bulldogs players all in a row just here, all bent over. They have given everything in the first part of this last quarter. Still plenty of time to go though in this fourth term as Jeray kicks close to the boundary line. It's Holmes that reads it best and marks half a metre in from the boundary. He'll kick Geelong inside 50, going the way of Henry, rises up, goes through his fingertips, falls it back. Henry tries to get it when he's on his knees on the turf. Jeray sees it over the boundary line for a throw in. He's had a couple of shocking kicks tonight, Jeray, and, and that one it should have been simple long down the line. He's just kicked it all to Geelong players, so they're yeah, really disappointed. He's better than that. So ball will be tossed inside. Geelong's attacking 50, kicking towards the Cathedral end in this final term. Gets out to Sanders. He'll clear a kick away for the Western Bulldogs to the logo. Stewart sits back and takes an intercept mark like he does so well for the Cats. Starting to take a bit more control, aren't they, the Cats? Switch it back to Guthrie, the centre-half back. They'll switch it even further wide to Zach Tui. And that outer point of the square. Devoid of options. There's Zach Tui. And we'll just chip it further afield. And the mark is taken by Mark O'Connor. On the outer wing. The Irishman loads up. Cameron floats up in front of Karmas, and this time he claims the mark. He's 70 from goal, though. Needs a neat entry here. He's got a few back there, but pulls the kick short. Again, it's Myers, 60 from goal. Cameron goes to set up down there himself. Myers pops it into the hot spot where McRae is waiting for it to win a set for the Bulldogs. McRae hand pass to Dale. Long kick into the very centre of Adelaide Oval, right into the two circles. Jack Henry sits back there to take the intercept mark for Geelong. So set up well behind the ball. The Cats at the moment kicks to Atkins, who will go inside attacking 50 for Geelong. Jones can spoil the mark. Richards is there. Bontempalli takes the footy. Hand passes out. Has to do the tackling now. All the effort coming from Bontempalli trying to spur his side on. And Bontempalli, the tackle will be rewarded. He'll get the free kick. And he'll use it to kick out to left half back to Oscar Baker. He's just lifting his team off the mat at the moment, isn't he? What a tackle. Breaks into space on the outer side. Holds it for a moment. Swings back infield now. Goes to Duncan on the bounce. So a turnover again. Geelong bring the footy back towards their own half forward area. But Karnas intercept grab again. So what, what's happening is Bulldogs, uh, Geelong play, defenders are just rolling black and clogging up the defence. So every time the Bulldogs look up, it's just Geelong players. So they're going to have to pierce their way through it and find something shorter. They keep bombing the ball in. Geelong will just keep marking it. Bradley Williams and the Glenelg product, Jamo. Short kick to find Vandermeer. Vandermeer comes wide now, perhaps a little too wide. Now it just took some of the chalk, so it's going to be a throw in between wing and half forward. It's the Cats who lead by 14. It's 93, plays 79. And we've uh, about to hit time on here in the final turn. At the 14 minute mark, it was 11 to 2 inside 50s. It's now 6 to 11, and the Cats just controlling it through the middle of the ground. Half ball for the Western Bulldogs. Ball tossed in. Darcy can just get a tap back to Williams. This time it's the Dogs going inside 50. Norton flew up. Couldn't take the mark. Bowes can get a hand pass away to 
De Koning hand pass to Guthrie, kick along the boundary line just off hand. So another throw in will come between wing and half forward for the Western Bulldogs. I mean, the Bulldogs have got an extra around the stoppage. They're only playing five forward, so it's allowing Stewart to be by himself. Now, Norton almost took Mark of the Year on him, but still, it's still a really high contested entry, which is what Geelong want every time. So, Bailey Williams can hand pass to Liberatore in towards West. No mark taken. Two, he can clean up. It's a tough hand pass. Uh, Colin Jasney fumbles the footy, hand passes back to Tui. All the pressure, the Western Bulldogs trying to lock it in. Inside their attacking 50, they'll do that here with Oscar Baker taking it over the boundary line for a throw in. Trailing by 14 points. The Dogs, nearly 20 minutes played, final quarter. They are pressing. If they kick one here to make it really interesting. You feel Geelong need another one to seal the game, but the Bulldogs, they just keep coming. Toss back in. Darcy and Blitzarves doing the right work. Eagle hanging off to Baker. Hand pass to the loose man, Trelaw, from the pocket. Opens up the angle and snaps Truly on the run. Adam Trelaw brings us back to an eight-point game. We've just hit time on in the final term. And it's the Cats who still lead, though. 14-9-93. The Dogs are coming. 13-7-85. Oh, we know how Geelong play and... What you love about a quality side and an experienced side is they do it within a quarter. They don't need to wait to a break to actually go, hey, we need to do this. They realise it during the game. And whilst it's eight points and you've got six and a half, seven minutes remaining, the Bullies have got to kick two goals and they're almost out on their feet. They're still pressing, Jamo. They've, they, that goal's been coming for the last five or six minutes. It come from a stoppage. They're placing this last 10 minutes of the importance of winning stoppage. They've got an extra round stoppage, and they're happy to go one down in their forward line. So if you're going to do that, you've got to put pressure on in the forward line and get repeat stoppages, which is what they did. So uh, it's game on. The no Mexican wave now. This game's become very interesting. <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing Jamara up on the wing. Like, put him up here and just get that big left foot. So many times Geelong have had a response throughout the game at this time after the Doggies have kicked two goals in a row. Umpire balls it up. There'll be a secondary stoppage. Western Bulldogs wanting to get their third in a row. English just taps it out to Liberatore. He can gather and hand pass to English. Puts it on his left boot. The Dogs will get to half forward here. Stewart coming out. Can't take the mark. Brings the ball to ground, though. Collar Jasny ch chases after it. A chance for Jack Henry to pick it up. Ooh, hand pass up to Atkins. Fumbles. Trelaw here to pick up the footy for the Dogs. Hand pass to West. Oh, his kick is affected by his knock. Blitzar's marks. And it'll be Blitzars who'll try and hold things up here for Geelong. Just too but slow, Lois. Too slow. Path it with the pressure act to put him off the kick. Blitzars from left half back. Winds up. Up on the wing. Cameron almost got in the way of his teammate Stanley. And in, in the end, Cameron has paid the mark. He's had some sort of game. He's had a game, hasn't he? he? You imagine Geelong. if he kicks straight. Geelong by eight points. 22 gone, final term. Up towards the pocket he goes, Bontempelli, in fact Liam Jones, I beg your pardon, strong contested grab against Tom Hawkins, kicks up the wing, back to Riley West, and it's off and over for a throw-in. Jeremy Cameron's had 27 disposals, kicked two goal four, six Riley. inside 50s. It's actually a free kick going Riley West's way for a late shove, so the grab away, 45,970, towering grab on the wing, in fact it was dropped late by uh, Tom Stewart. Worked forward here by Darcy of the Bulldogs. Back with the flight, Guthrie. Strong intercept grab here at fullback for Geelong. Guthrie chips it forward towards Atkins. Just sitting 40 metres out from defensive goal. Again, happy to wait. He's got Guthrie short and chooses to use him. Still in defensive 50 for the Cats. Guthrie will go a bit longer here to Jack Henry. We'll mark at left half back. Jack Henry's got O'Connor short if he wants to use him. He can kick to a pack where Blitzarves is. It'll go over the top of Blitzarves' head. Cameron rises for the mark again. Stengel's at the back. He's got it here. He can take a bounce running along the boundary line. Hawkins sitting in the pocket. Goes for him. Can't take the mark against Jones. Ball will stay in play. Taylor Duray with the footy chips it towards Ed Richards. Holds onto it. Right back pocket. 
Richards wheels and goes now towards the wing. It's Great marked kick. out there. Williams lays off the hand pass, running by Trelaw. You'll Hagen back with the flight. Unkind bounce away from him over for a throw in, not far away from you, Liz Walsh. Yeah, just a bit of a concern over Jake Collajasny at the moment. He's come from the ground in the hands of the team physio and doctor. I'll report back as soon as I know what's going on. 24 gone, final term. The Cats lead by eight points, 14-9 plays, 13-7. Umpire spins the ball back in. Blitzarves brings it to ground. Trelaw goes after it. Sanders there as well. It'll be Geelong that steal the footy back here. Bowes weaves around his opponent. Puts the ball to left half forward. It's close to the boundary line, but it's Bruin who can mark it. Centimetres in from the boundary. It's Stanley rather who marks it. Kicks the ball inside 50. Ollie Henry on the end of it. He's been good Stanley, hasn't he, tonight? And, and this is what Stanley can do. And, you know, he's the flavour of the month at the moment for the for the ruck situation for Geelong. But um, when he has games like this, it's hard to leave him out of the side. And, you know, he's been sensational. So his ruck work and his stuff around the ground, he's, he's been damaging. So Ollie Henry, since coming to Collingwood, slowly growing as a star in that forward line, he kicks from 45 out. But it'll just be one behind. Geelong now out by nine points, 25 minutes gone in the fourth quarter. They've got to go. Just under three and a half minutes remaining. Richards plays on from the kick out, finds English unmarked at left half back. Can they work their way forward here, the Bulldogs? Hand pass was picked off. That was dangerous. Uh, Bonton Pelly to lay the tackle that time on O'Connor. Loose footy, gathered off half back by Richards for the Bulldogs. Sweeps it wide back to English. They survived that last little bit from the, the Cats under pressure. And this kick goes bouncing out of bounds for a throw in. That's probably a good result for, for either side. Get that stoppage going, especially for the Bulldogs. Just to work that footy away and see if they can get the two goals they need. They trail by nine points, 25 and a half played final term. This won't be a long quarter. Unlike the first three. Stanley over the back here to Dempsey in his bright pink boots. Back towards Duray here for the Dogs. Sends it back from whence it came and Holmes takes a chest mark at right half back for Geelong. Bullies have been dominant around the clearance work. 15 to 6 in this quarter. So Holmes with an important mark. Kick along outside the eastern wing. Pack a players form. English tallest gets a fingertip to it. Ball comes out the back. Ollie Henry picks it up, a free kick's been paid, it'll move backward, and it'll go to Stanley. So Stanley will have the free kick, centre oh. wing, and it'll be advanced, 50 metres. What's he done that? Was that Harvey Gallagher maybe coming to the, the area? Yeah, I think it was. So it's the young player now who's given away a 50 metre penalty, which will bring Stanley right about the 50 metre mark. It's good ice the game. And, and cap off a really good night by Stanley. He's been one of Geelong's best tonight. Can he finish? Can he ice the game and uh, finish off a very good game for himself personally? So Stanley will take a shot here. He'll use his full 30 seconds as well. He'll kick from 45 metres out for a goal to cap off his game. Slight angle to the right. Spins the footy around a few times. 44 hitouts. An exceptional game as he comes in on the approach. Good looking kick towards goal off the boot, but then goes right. Just a minor score for Stanley. Cats ahead by 10 points. 27 minutes gone. We've also got two minutes to get two goals. Here's Baker. Off half back, shows some good dash to the outer side. Norton strong towering grab. Move the football quickly here, the Bulldogs. They can't waste any time. Off here, back to Bontempelli. Neat left foot entry, height of a two on two. Bailey Williams, second bite, claims the mark. He can't use the full 30. He has to go back, slot this, and a quick CB. Oh. Bailey Williams, the South Australian, kicks from 30 and makes no mistake. We're back to a four-point ball game. There's just over a minute left. It's next goal wins, Adelaide Oval. Well, you talk about how centre bounce is probably not that important in footy games. I can tell you, this next centre bounce is very important. If English is ever going to have a moment and, and 
get some points back on Stanley tonight, it'll be this next centre bounce. So, look out. Oh, you've got the right men in there for the Western Bulldogs. Trelaw's in there, Liberatore's in there, Bont and Pally. Mark O'Connor wearing him tight. Tanner Bruin, who's been so good for the Cats. Stanley, who's been monumental in the ruck. And then you got Bose. And here we go, Mark Lutzatz is going to the half-back line. Half it up under the wing. There's one minute. The both teams are going to sign up. We can see that with the one, so that would indicate there's one minute to go. What's to come in this final minute? Western Bulldogs with three goals in a row for the first time. Four points away from taking the lead. Ball can move its way to the Western Bulldogs half-forward line. It's socket away forward, straight into the middle of the ground. Bontempelli shoves it on his boot. Stanley gets two hands. Not long enough to take the mark. Chewy holds on to the footy. He'll hold it up here. Calls a stoppage. Half forward for the Western Bulldogs. Umpire will toss the ball up. Stanley and English going at it as they have all day. Comes to Bose. He can't get a clean kick away. O'Connor can hand pass it back to Bose. He puts the kick in some space. Hawkins there. Punched away by Jones. Close will pick it up. He gets taken to ground and he does just get clipped high. It looked like he might have been playing for the free kick. Maybe he was. But Close does get the free centre wing. He'll chip it wide to Zach Tui. Well, take some of the air out of the game now. The Dogs have owned this final quarter. About 20 seconds left. Tui drives it long inside 50. Up they go. Stanley reaching for it. Can't reel it in. Kept alive by Bally Dale. But the umpire says, no, it wasn't. In fact, we'll throw it back in. In the dying seconds. They've been gallant, the bullies. What a day of footy it's been. Two thrillers here at Adelaide Oval. The Eagles competitive at Mount Barker earlier. Geelong leads here by four points. Back in it comes. Hawkins wins it down. The ball's in space. The dogs were coming hard. But the Cats will claw their way to a four and zip start in season 2024. Geelong hangs on to win by four points. to 14-7-91 our full time score for the winners Tyson Stengel kick four there were two to Ollie Henry and Jeremy Cameron two also for Jack Bose winning the first goal of the game singles for Max Holmes Ollie Dempsey Zach Guthrie and Brad Close while for the Bulldogs Sam Darcy kick three a couple each for Cody Waitman and Riley West singles for Hugo Hagen Bontempelli Gallagher Liberatore and Bally Williams we are Geelong we're always on the ball We play the game as it should be played At home or far away Our banners fly high from dawn to dawn Down at Gardenia Park Geelong led by eight points at quarter time By nine points at half time 16 points at the final change They led in fact from... Well, the fifth lead change was early in that second term, but doesn't tell the full story of the game by any means. And in the end, that final margin, four points. So we're hoping for a shootout of sorts, Dean Brogan. We've got 14 goals apiece. It was just the behinds that decided at the end, 14-11 to 14-7, the thoughts of Premiership players, Dean Brogan and Rod Jamison on ABC Sport. It, it actually didn't really feel like a shootout game, but when you look at the score and, and, and the, the scoreline and, and how many goals were kicked, it actually was, and it was a really patchy game. There were moments in the game where nothing would happen, and then for 10 minutes it'd go goal for goal, and Geelong had kicked three, and the Bulldogs had looked like they were gone. And then their A graders just stood up and refused to give up and gave themselves a chance towards the end of the game. But um, look, full, full credit to Geelong. They, they were classy tonight. They, they, their system really held up tonight. Their, their back line was really good. The, the way they move the ball off turnover with speed, uh, we said it all night, their moments were just better than the Bulldogs. And um, they, they were in control of that game most of the night, really, other than the last probably you know, five minutes when the Bulldogs were coming. It never really looked like they were going to lose the game. But um, 
you know, what a great game. And that's that's two teams that I, I think they'll be at the pointy end. Obviously, Geelong are 4-0. and I mean, who would have picked that? Uh, but you can just never count out Geelong, can you? I think most most of us do it every year. We say Geelong, nah, they're finally going to fall off the perch. And they've just rejuvenated that list and, and come over here and have a great win against a, a pretty good Bulldog side. And 4-0. Um, and oh, and um, Bulldogs will be disappointed with that. That's one that they maybe probably would have thought they might have won. And they, they were really patchy tonight, the Dogs. But there was enough there to say that they're, they're going to um, win some footy games this year. I think it just relied too heavily on the Bullies to kick it in long all the time and that's part of the issue again with the defence of the Bulldogs uh, sorry of, of Geelong they're just so quality in the air and then once they take control they then can work it out and get it out we spoke about all night how quickly they go from that end to the other but the Western Bulldogs really turned the tables in that last quarter and they just couldn't get the score on the scoreboard when they needed to and they really have probably punched above their weight after all the hard work. It was 15 to 10, but inside 50s, they smashed them in the in the ground ball gets, but as the quarter went on, Geelong got back into the game too and the contested stuff, 38-33 in that last quarter. They just couldn't get that final kick and how many just missed it, you know, like that Adam Trelaw when it got down to, was it, 10 points at that particular point. But what about a game from Marcus Bonapelli? Just the skipper was outstanding tonight and Tom Liberatore as well, so yeah, they'll, they'll look back on that and rue that they missed multiple chances to actually win this game. Geelong moves into the top four, by the way, so uh, with that win, as I say, four and zero, but it is quite tight up there. In fact, the Giants, who began the round in first, have slipped to fifth by virtue of not playing a game. So because Melbourne, Sydney, Carlton all won, um, the Giants who play against the Suns tomorrow at Mount Barker <laughs> been relegated to fifth for the time being. Uh, Port 6, Frio 7 off the back of that uh, controversial loss earlier. We'll uh, uh, see a bit of a guard of honour here for, for Mark Plitzarves, which is, um, I assume anyway, but the dogs are lining up um, just given the proximity to their race as well. As a mark of respect here for Mark Blitzarves. He's going to be chaired off by um, Mark O'Connor and Jack Henry to signal his 250th game. It's a hell of a milestone for a, a Cat B rookie that was uh, an elite level runner who was going for the London Olympics um, to, to make it in the AFL. He had a big, as I say, big basketball family. His mum, dad, sister all playing for Australia. And the big man is chaired off by his uh, Geelong teammates as the Bulldogs all stand and applaud. And he goes and uh, embraces with Marcus Bontempelli as well. So nice respect shown there for Mark Blitzar, the two-time Kaji Greaves medalist, best and first at the Cats, Premiership player, All-Australian. And he's 250th tonight, the Cats, the second week in a row. Salute in a big milestone game from one of their uh, veteran players. Well, they've got another one next week too, haven't they? Race they take the Kangaroos, Brisbane, Carlton, Melbourne and Port. So the next five weeks are going to be pretty solid for them. Uh, so, yeah, the Cats are at home at, against North. That's the one o'clock game on Sunday at Kenya Park. So back at home, the Cats next week. While well, for the Bulldogs, they'll uh, have Essendon at Docklands in the Friday night game. So that's the situation there. The Dogs make their way off. We'll get some reaction from the Geelong Rooms. Of course, winners here by four points tonight. Uh, Liz Walsh is uh, standing by down there for us. We'll get to her very shortly. And uh, we'll also recap uh, today. We saw three incredible games of footy after a, a slow start by way of spectacle for the actual you know, margins and close games of footy across the first three games of Gather Around. We've seen some absolute beauties today, uh, which we'll, we'll pick apart before we finish off here in just under a half an hour's time. Your texts are welcome throughout. 0437 774 774 here on ABC Sports. 0437 774 774. I mean, you look at... Uh Geelong's, well, obviously though, you would think they will beat North Melbourne next week. Yep. Uh, f- 5-0. and oh. and, and, and they've got some key players out as well. You know, they get Dangerfield back. Uh, who, who else are they? The Guthrie. Cam Guthrie. Cam yeah, he's Guthrie, still five like, weeks away. They're, Gary they're, Rowan. Gary Rowan. They're in their one. best 22. Um, you know, Gary Rowan, you could say, um, might struggle maybe coming into the side straight away, but I, we know Scott loves to play him. He's got speed and he, he, he tackles pretty hard in that. Are they, are they a sneaky chance to finish, like, you know, in the top four and go for it again? Because um, I, I've completely 
I haven't what? even spent any time thinking about Geelong coming in this season, and I feel bad. I should have. So what makes it so hard to believe, bro? I mean, this team won the flag a couple of years ago. It's yeah. just because of where they're at, probably in their, their list development. Uh, uh, yeah. You just think eventually Dangerfield's going to... The, if you think eventually their older players are going to fall off a cliff. And we talk about their older players in, in Dangerfield, Hawkins. You know, Cameron's 30 now. But, you know, he's still going, obviously, pretty well. But, Sars, like, when are they going to slow down? Like, obviously, Dangerfield's injured tonight. but And they haven't got any very high draft picks that anybody talks about. But they've just got super players that do the right thing at the right time. And, and you know, you look at My- Myers tonight. Like, his ball... Ball in hand to foot, it, it, that's got to be some of the best in the, in the competition. Well, no one talks about him outside of Geelong. I don't talk, no one else talks about him. Well, I think they, last year and this year, probably more so than ever before, they have. But their list management has been incredible and the ability to maintain. So even Sean Manor, like he's only played two, but saw him a couple of weeks ago and he's quality coming through. Osin Mullen, he, you know, the Irishman as well, like I saw him play and he's quality. So they find a way. And then we spoke about others that aren't in the team that we know are coming through once these guys move aside. So there'll be an integration process, but they've been doing it now for for quite some time. And I think what they like at Geelong is everyone does write them off, but they continue to come back and do find a way. And it's not about age. Like, when you go, like, Mark Blitzer, he's 33. He doesn't even look like finishing in the next... 12 months, I would have thought. He'll go around again. So. Zach Tui, who's uh, yeah, they that, still going to play next year, maybe beyond that. Yep. That's what I mean. And, and just, just players like that. And, but their game style is good to watch too. Like They play the game really well. They defend. We know all about their defence. Like you, They're probably one of the best defences in the comp in terms of their back 50 and their struck. They've got the best um, defender in the comp, Tom Stewart. But when they when they get the footy and they go, geez, they really cut you up, don't they? And, and they let Cameron get right up the ground and use his running ability. And they're a re- they're a real dangerous team. Without having real a look at team. the other sides, I mean, their average games played is ninety, so the cohesion of the group is 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 high. Again, the bullies seventy eight. Again, we go to Port Adelaide seventy three. If we talk local flavour in Adelaide sixty two, so it's getting that exposure and experience in the team. Give us your long players spread out to go and see fans in different parts of the ground and get the little footies away and take the odd selfie as well. They make their way down the race here behind the goals, Riverbank stand end at Adelaide Oval. They celebrate a four point win and four straight wins to start season twenty twenty four. Let's get down to you, Liz Walsh, in the winner's rooms. Hello, thank you, Brett. And here they come into the rooms. We actually, uh, Blitzarves, of course, has led the team off the field. We saw Geelong win here at Adelaide Oval over the Crows a couple of weeks ago. It was quite a quiet room. It all seemed really businesslike when they got together to sing the song. Today, the change rooms, we're in the Port Adelaide change rooms down here. They're far more uh, family and friends. Uh, but you know what? They still seem pretty businesslike down here. Oh, there's Tom Hawkins <laughs> giving a clap and getting everyone going. And here we go. They're getting together to sing the song. Here we are. Oh no, oh, here we go. Two, we are Geelong, the greatest team of all. Hey, we are Geelong, we're always on the ball. We play the game as it should be played. Hey, at home or far away.